Technical Welding Services Hamilton are specialists in the transit concrete mixer industry. From chassis drop-off to a full working concrete mixing, the team will take care of the job from start to finish. Full engineering services and general sheet metal work can also be undertaken. Need a quote? Call 07 847 2031. Or visit our website www.techweld.nz Technical Welding Services Hamilton, we are the experts. Well, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, race fans. Welcome to Technical Welding Services Paradise Valley Speedway here in Rotorua for night two of the 2023 TWS World Invitation Super Stock Championships. Last night was the opportunity to whet the op appetite with uh, maybe the entree. Tonight is the real deal. We will find a new world champion because, as we talked about last night, our defending champion, Jason Long, not in competition here this weekend, but he is uh, out and about. And uh, we did have a go catch up with him last night, which was great to hear how his health is nowadays. My name is Paul Hickey. My pleasure to be your head commentator and anchor across the course of this evening to all of those who are here at the stadium at Paradise Valley. Good afternoon and welcome. And to those those who are watching through our live stream with the Pits TV across Aotearoa and the globe. Good afternoon, good evening and good morning especially to those who are watching across uh, the UK and Europe watching your brisker stars competing against the best that we have to offer here in New Zealand as well. I'm excited about tonight joining me in the commentary across the course of tonight Bianca Mudge. Uh, you got the right hat on Bianca because the sun is out. This is, summer has finally arrived just in time for the 240s. Listen I'm, I'm from Wellington and I'm, I'm not built for this heat or this <laughs> Sun. I had to get the biggest hat I could find to try and cut it all away. Um, we are so excited mm. to be here tonight. Like I said, last night was a little bit of an appetite. Tonight's going to be the full course dessert, after everything. drinks, after party, everything. But what I actually want to do is um, congratulate Stu, who is the newly appointed man manager of the Pumas. Oh. And we have a bit of teams raising going on tonight, so yep. tell us about it, Stu. We do. Uh, well, uh, uh, Stu, yes, that's it. You're, you're the manager of the Palmerston North Pumas. Um, um, and you're battling my Rotorua rascals tonight <laughs> as, as part of the support program. Uh, let's, let's quickly talk about that then. How excited are you for uh, this tonight? I'm definitely excited. It hasn't been the greatest of uh, start for me in my manager career. 0-2, oh as all the uh, Wellington boys remind me as well. 0-4 oh by the end of tonight, mate. Nah, 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 we're going 2-2. Two two. <laughs> nah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Um, I think Bianca's going to have a talk to me and Sammy when they have the parade, so I won't spill too many secrets until then, eh? <laughs> all right, okay, let's talk about the World 240s. You've been following this game. Uh, like us for a long, long time. What did you make of last night? Awesome. And uh, very excited as well. More for the fact, too, that we've got some completely different names in the mix. And uh, myself and uh, Bruce Ward up there in the crowd, you know, we sat there yesterday. We picked, I think, about 10 of each group. Then we had to go through and highlight the top four. We'd done a dark horse as well, and I'm very proud to say that we picked 18 qualifiers out of out of 20, so it wasn't too bad. Well, not too bad. That is, wow, that is uh, bloody awesome. That's, that's it. There were a lot of surprises coming through last night, and, and some of the big names did struggle out there, which was a, a little bit of a surprise. Mind you, it was tough. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, the the... Even Tier 2, if we mm. talk about the Tier 2, whoever has made it through the Tier 2, they're still outstanding drivers. Mm. We don't want to take anything away from them because qualifying was really tough last night. My um, dark horse, and I was really surprised, I actually went and talked to him, was Brody James from, mm. from uh, Gisborne. G Gizzy. Mm. Yeah, I said, mate, I, it's totally different from what you were doing last year, and it's really good to see. You can race. You've got a name for yourself. You've put yourself right out there. Well, look, we are seeing this more and more now, Stu, and, you know, you've been there, done that with the, the mini stock racing as well and, and we see these kids coming through from the mini stocks and year after year they are putting their hands up across all of the classes, not just super stocks, but yep. the stock cars, saloons, uh, TQs, and these mini stock drivers are getting into the adult classes with so much experience and so much skill. It may just take them half a season or maybe a season to get a hang of the, the bigger, more powerful machine, but man, they are on the pace pretty quickly. They certainly are, and before I go into my pick of uh, the mini stock drivers, a shout out to Terence Durrell, the 3 nz TQ, who is, like you said, mentioned, came out of youth mini stocks only a couple of seasons back, and and uh, has picked up three ends in the TQs. So uh, local boy, 
as well. My, nep my nephew. Exactly, your nephew. You know, Sonia's very proud as well. Grandma 3NZ. Uh, but hey, of this 240s event, you know, um, Jacob Buckrell, and he was one that I picked as a dark horse last night, and he done the job, you know, and he had a great mentor under him last season while he was sort of sharing the car with Quinn Ryan, who of course qualified through Tier 2 last year, winning the Super Stocks in Paradise. And here's Jacob Buckrell. Last night made it through to the finals by qualifying. I feel like... Um, he was hesitant at times, you know, and that's to be to be fair. I can't talk, I'm not out there, but mm. I feel like he's still got a whole lot more to deliver, and tonight, whether he gets a result or not at the end of it, is going to do him a world of confidence. When we talk about these younger drivers that are coming through, there's a good mix of uh, youth and experience in there. What I'm also like seeing now is the mixture of tracks that are represented. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I go back five or six years, and you'd get a field of 26, and 13 or 14 of them would have a bloody P on the side. Yeah. You know, yeah. you probably made him happy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you're from Wellington. Yeah. I, think, I think there's four or five from Wellington in the finals field tonight, so that's great. Yeah, I think there's four from the Welly, five from Gizzy, and we've only got two from Palmy. I mean, Stu, yeah. walk away, walk away, do your walk of shame. But it is good to see that mix as well, and it really mm. does go to show how year-on-year -year tracks is uh, evolving and changing and the experience is coming through. And just to touch on the um, the mini-stock drivers coming through as well, I spoke to the very great Dave Evans, um, and I said to him, well, I asked him, is it, how hard is it not to go and hit out there? Because you're a hitter, right? Mm, yes. Um, and he said to me, Bianca, it actually takes more skill, and it's harder to do a lap around here and not hit anybody and still come out in front and of course these mini stock drivers are in a non-contact sport so they're learning right from the grassroots. And like, look, while hitting is encouraged and, and we <laughs> love to see it from a spectator's <laughs> point of view, we love the big crashes, the big hits mm. uh, there is this this rule that came in a couple of seasons ago now Stu with regards to the tyres on the your right hand tyres so there may be people who, who d didn't know about this who may be new to Speedway and still kind of figuring things out but it's one of the new rules that has come in for safety, for your guys' safety mainly in the, in the crowd, if you get a puncture on the right-hand side of your car, front or back, you have to retire from the race. We did see one race stoppage last night where a car was still circulating uh, with that damage. The lights went red and the referees sent that car to the infield. We've seen cars over the years still continuing to try and circulate at pace, especially in big championship events, and the dirt's just getting, the track's getting ripped up and that dirt's getting thrown into the crowd. So from the, you talk about the, the driving ability that some of these mini-stock drivers have, that gives them the, the nous to be able to just that little tap at the end of the straight to try and force their way up the inside as opposed to doing lots of rubbing on the side. So there's a skill to it. Oh, there certainly is. And uh, you throw in that tyre rule and it just opens a new can of worms, doesn't it, with the outside flats. And, uh, yeah, that's where probably the mini-stock guys have got a bit of uh, a bit of skill in that aspect because they don't want to, uh, well, they've been so used to not rubbing side to side and all that sort of stuff. So, um, And we saw it a bit last night. The Joblins, I think, a couple of them with outside flats. Uh, horse, there was just oh, heaps of names, to be fair, and it just shows that... Um, yeah, it's it's a rule. That, yeah. <laughs> and it, it's yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of it because yeah. it, it does diminish a little bit of the uh, potential action that can happen in uh, heat three when you're having to take these drivers out of the competition when potentially they're now out of the running, so they're going to start using their bumpers. Right, we've talked uh, a lot about some of our Kiwi names and uh, qualifiers, but. It is the World 240s, and for the last two years, because of various restrictions, let's not get political about it, <laughs> but we haven't been able to have anybody in uh, the country from elsewhere around the world. It was 2020, just before that major COVID lockdown that uh, we last had the overseas drivers here, so it is amazing to have them back here in 2023, uh, and uh, we've welcomed five of them, three out of the UK, two uh, from Holland, and uh, what were your thoughts on seeing them out there last night in the practice, Bianca? Look, we'd love to welcome them back. It's great to have them here again. Stu did a lot of um, toing and froing with them, and of course, I did go over there to talk to them. I couldn't understand a word they were saying, so I left Stu to it. So maybe you should ask him. What I will say, though, is it's so great to see Charlie coming around here, and I believe he was the quickest of the night last night. Yeah, he was. Uh, consistently right across yeah. the night in all of our qualifying groups and uh, the practice sessions with those overseas drivers, or the pre-qualified, because Quinn Ryan was in there as well. Mm. The drivers consistently in that 17-second uh, area. Mm. Lap record here at Rotorua is a 16.2, and yeah, Charlie Sorter, the current Brisker World Champion, he was the only driver to get down into the 16s. Um, so yeah, he looked pretty impressive. In fact, they all did last night. They were all trucking in the, around that uh, pace. 
Yeah, Charlie with a 16.997. The next best uh, was Todd Hemingway, the 99, a 17.075 from off the top of my head. But uh, beautiful. I mean, uh, Charlie was just getting the hang of that car all night long. It was great to see him just breaking deep into the corners, getting it thrown in. Um, talking to Mitch Vickery, obviously the car owner, he said, man, I don't even know where to start to set this <laughs> car up. And it's funny to say that because, you know, it's his own car. But with mm. that big fin on the, on the top, uh, I said to Charlie, do you think this is actually making a difference to the car? He says, well, I've never driven it any other way, so I'm used to it. Whereas Mitch is going, well, how do I set this car up? Um, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a top-notch New Zealand championship capable winning car mm. um, so they've, they've finally got under control uh, Frankie had a, a few issues with that car obviously it's sort of it's a chassis and an engine and they've put the well that's what you do but it's a, it's a chassis from you know one guy and an engine from another guy and they've had to alter things and make it all work out and uh, he was battling away there but he got it under control obviously Ted which is Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. Um, that car he was dialed in quite nicely in that and the two uh, the two cloggies obviously uh, Yelly and Niels were Doing bloody well. I think it was the uh, throw-up bearing in Yelly's car. They had to replace that overnight, um, replace the clutch as well, just because they could. And uh, Niels was just getting the hang, obviously, again. HSP6 is a new car, which William ran last weekend. He's six foot something. He's having to squeeze in the car. They've had to make alterations to the dash. And as we saw, I guess, at the end of the day, progressively, they were getting quicker and quicker and comfortable mm. and comfortable. Yeah, which, which they certainly need to do because, man, it's, uh, we might need to let you go, Stu. You know, remember you're the manager of the Pumas? Yeah. Like you too. Okay. Yeah, uh, do, uh, can you tell us your team tactics? No? Oh, okay. <laughs> As we mentioned, uh, Stu is uh, doing double duties tonight uh, on the commentary team as well as managing the Palmerston North Pumas. So they're about to go into uh, a race briefing uh, for all of the teams uh, involved tonight, the Rotorua Rascals and the Palmerston North Pumas. Look, just about those overseas drivers, and again, hello to all of those who are watching. It's so great to have you tuning in and uh, the ability to be able to do so through the Pits TV. Uh, great to have you with us. A baptism of fire for uh, them tonight, like the, the two Waymans, uh, Frankie Wayman Jr. and uh, Ted Jr. Jr. They've been here before for the other three. It is their first time, so hopping into cars that they've never dr driven before in a completely different format as well because they're not used to what we do here. They, like, they can hit over there, but it's not the be-all and end-all like we do. Absolutely, and I, I mean, I, it makes me wonder how they actually get their, um, their adrenaline flowing mm. because they did almost what we would call practice laps last night as well as Chris and Ryan, and now that you know they're going to be in a full field, who with guys that mean and Bex, sorry, that mean absolute business. So, uh, I mean, it'd be really interesting to see how they actually fear with a a full track and these guys are fierce they're not gonna they're, they're not gonna hold back no just kind of looking at uh, the grid draws for tonight uh, the three final seats of those overseas drivers uh charlie schwarter the one gb car starting on grid nine then 23 and 10. uh for frankie wayman jr he knows the ins and outs obviously he's won this world 240s event three times over the years grids 10 24 and 8. frankie jj 21 8 13 and for the teslas uh yali starting right at the back in the first one, good 27s. He can just kind of let all that turn one and let turn three happen. action, let yeah. it all happen first. Uh, but then, of course, he's going to be mid pack in the second heat, and then he will start on pole position for the third heat. And for Niles, uh, 15, 2, and 25, so right in the thick of the action. So it's going to be a really interesting one for them. It's going to be a big old night. We start with the on track festivities. We're not counted as far as that goes. Uh, but 6.15 with the Grand Parade, where we're just going to see the teams come out, and uh, Bianca will have a chat to uh, Sammy Ashton, the manager of the Rotorua Rascals, and obviously Stu back on board. Make sure you keep Stu under control when it comes to the interview. Uh, uh, I, I should be being, being paid double to keep him in, in control. Uh, so that's at 6.15, <laughs> 6.30. That is when the first green flag drops. That is the repercharge. charge. It is a 27-car field. One of them will go through to join the World 240s tonight. The winner only. The pressure is on for that ripper charge. So that is at 6.30, that one race. Then then we'll have a bit of a break. We'll have the chance to have a catch-up with uh, the winner of that race, uh, although they're going to be pretty hectic, I'm sure, getting set. And then 7 o'clock, we'll be into race two. A few special bits and pieces for you as well on the uh, super screen as we head towards that 7 o'clock start. Uh, Paul Vasey 
who is one of our superstock racers here in Rotorua driving the 351, courtesy of uh, his business, Vasey Engineering. We've got a little welder to give away, so I'm going to head up into the crowd very shortly and give that welder away, courtesy of Paul Vasey at Vasey Engineering. So good luck to everybody here. I could be giving that to you. Right, you're going to do a pit walk. We're going to maybe have a quick break, catch our breath, and be back real soon. Yeah, I am going to go do a pit walk. Before I do that, I want to wish our director, Michaela, a very happy birthday. Oh. Hello, Michaela. Dr. Ray. Everybody, happy birthday on the count of three. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Woohoo. Here we go. Hey, and we're back. I'm here with Jack Myers. Jack Myers, everything's looking pretty relaxed down here. You've probably got the best sunshade. How's everything uh, panning out for tonight for you? Yeah, yeah, no, it's all pretty relaxed at the moment. I suppose the calm before the storm. Um, but yeah, we had a reasonably um, low. Uh, Low intensity day, I suppose. Uh, yeah, not a lot to do on the car, just a bit of a wash and check over, and it was going pretty good last night, so we didn't really want to muck around with too much, just carry on from where we left off, really. Yeah. And of course, it's probably low intensity too, because you guys would suffer quite immensely while you're driving around in this heat. Yeah, well, it's been a while since we've had some heat like this, actually. <laughs> it's been quite wet and cold, so yeah, it's a bit of a shock to the system, but yeah, there's a bit of a breeze around now, so um, we're racing a bit later on in the night, obviously. Um, thankfully, we don't have to contend on that ripper charge, that's going to be pretty cutthroat, so we'll get the grid up on the bank and watch that and um, see what unfolds there and yeah, start to get ahead in the game for the first race. Yeah, yeah. So of course you've won this uh, World 240s just what, two years ago. Um, tell us, we've got all of our qualifiers here, what's going on, like what's going on in your head? Do you have a strategy, do you have a plan or you just get out there and go hard? Oh, you can have all the greatest plans in the world but they go out the window in the first corner so yeah, you just, ah, oh, yeah, I suppose you just need to keep yourself relaxed and keep letting water in, because, um, yeah. yeah, you do tend to sweat a bit of it out when you're um, in those big, you know, top qualifier yeah. groups, because it's pretty hard, hard, fast racing, so, yeah, just, I suppose, just not to hype yourself up too much, just, yeah, take it as it comes, pretty much, we're pretty used to it now. Do you have any advice for the guys down here who have qualified for the very first time? Uh... Be patient, I suppose, is the biggest thing. Yeah, you're not one. You don't win it in the first corner. So, yeah, yeah you win it after the third heat in uh, three consistent races, yeah, yeah. and uh, a few friends on your side always helps as well. So, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the name of the game. A lot of luck, a lot of friends, eh? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jack, listen, we've got a lot of people to get through, so we'll let you go and chill out. Good luck for the rest of the night. Yeah. We'll probably come and see you or your dad at some stage during the night. We'll make our way down the line. Cheers, Jack. Um, we're going to just really walk down the length of the pits and speak to as many qualifiers as we can. Um, we've actually got Brody James. Yeah, he's just chilling out in the back of his... Um, here he is, eating his chap, chips. He can see me coming, thinking, oh, God, here we go again. Um, I don't know if the camera can actually get in this truck, but it's immaculate in here. And if these guys actually maintain their cars, like the way they keep their truck, I can tell you this is pretty spick and span. Put it there, Brody. You did so well last night. You were like my dark horse to get through, but wow, you were impressed. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I just tried to keep it clean and just race my own race, and it ended up working out pretty good in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a lot of gizzy cars coming through. I think there's five of you all together. Interesting, too. They're all Rees chassis. Yeah, no, nah, Pete's building some good chassis at the moment, and, you know, he's proven they're fast and they can do the job. But, no, nah, it's pretty cool to see the other gizzy boys in here. Hopefully we can all work together and get someone up there. Yeah. Any strategies going in? You probably don't want to give too much away. Um, I'm starting off 13 in the first one, so I'll just see how, how that first corner turns out. But just try to pass as many cars as you can, I guess, is what you can start with, and then yeah. go from there. How's the nerves? Um, uh, not too bad. Uh, last year I was a bit worse, but yeah, yeah. I've done the hard stuff now. It's yeah. just kind of go out there and have fun. Do you know what? This is your first um, actual qualification you've made for the World 240s, isn't it? Last year you were in Tier 2? Yeah, last year I was in Tier 2. This is kind of my first big qualifying for an actual big event. So, no, nah, it's pretty cool to be a part of, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. just wrapped, yeah. Brody, I've got some advice for you, and this comes from the heart. Enjoy it, because you're never going to have a first again, OK? go hard, come and see you at the end of the night. That was Brody James, very impressed with this young, I don't want to call him a kid, he's a young man, but golly me, he's doing very well. Who's next on the rank? Oh yeah, we've got the 29G machine, our driver's trying to do a dodge dodge. Hey mate, how you doing? Put it there. 
getting as much water in as you possibly can. Yeah, no, it's pretty hot out here today, so um, yeah, just trying to keep hydrated, yeah, it's good. James, is this the first time that you've actually qualified for the World 240s? Yeah, it is, yeah. Well, we only, oh, a couple of years ago, before COVID, yeah, that was the last time we were here, so yeah, this is our second time, so yeah. Isn't it funny, we thought that COVID was going to uh, be much of a hindrance on our um, stock car season, however, it's actually been the rain. You've been pretty lucky, though. How much racing have you done in this machine? Um, we've done about oh, seven or eight meetings in this one, yeah, but we've done about oh, 17 or something in total with the stock car, yeah, so we've been pretty lucky to get out there and, um, yeah, yeah, get a few meetings under our belt, which has helped, so, yeah, keeps the rust off, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're a long way from home, though. You're from Waikanae. You'll be used to this heat. How are you faring up in it? Yeah, no, it's not too bad. Just, uh, yeah, it's a bit different up here. The sun, <laughs> sun's quite brutal, so uh, just got to stay in the shade and, yeah, drink as much water as you can, yeah. Is this all your crew behind you? Yeah, yeah, a few stragglers around, so yeah, yeah but uh, they're looking forward to a big night, so um, yeah, see what we can do. Look, it's a testament to how hard you worked for uh, your position here tonight, so good luck. We've got a lot to get through, so we're going to keep on going. We'll come and see you later on though, yeah? Awesome. So that was um, James Clark. Of course, this is um, another race chassis. I can't, I mean, I can't imagine what Peter's thinking right now, seeing all these uh, race chassis making through to the final. It's a testament to him. And I mean, this is going to be his legacy at the end of the day, really, isn't it? Um, who have we got here? Oh, look, we're pointing, pointing. He's running. Oh. <laughs> How are you doing? Hey, this is Mark Dunn. Put it there, mate. You worked really hard last night to qualify. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, pretty good. Just uh, relax, ready to wait to see what we can do. How many have come through from um, your track? I think there's one, two, two of you. Yeah, just me and Todd at the moment, so hopefully yeah. we get another one or two, for, yeah. well, one from the repo, so, yeah. Now, it's just you and me. No one can hear us in the pits, obviously, because we're not going through, but if there was another track that you're going to help out, who would it be? Ah, oh, probably help out the local Bay Boys, you know. Yeah. They'll be there. Yeah, our clubs are pretty close together, so yeah, help them out. Um, I think the only one come through from the Bay is Quinn, yeah. No, I mean like Rotorua Bay, plenty. Oh, Bay. So of course, sorry, wrong Bay. Sorry, yeah. my bad. So help out the Bay Park and Rotorua Boys. So yeah. well, there's only three of us at the moment. Yeah. There's uh, myself, Todd, and uh, Mick Romney. Yeah. But listen, three against what? The, the rest of the track, you never know what's going to happen. Anything could happen. Um, how's your crew feeling? They're all relaxed, ready to go. No work's happening here. Everyone's relaxed, actually. Yeah, no, just got to <laughs> take a nice chill approach and yeah, sneak yeah, under yeah. the radar, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. And that's the name of the game. It's exactly what Jason Long did last year. He was the only Bay, Hawks Bay boy out there, and uh, no one paid him any attention. It was like a prelude to a team's race out there, and he just snuck through them all. Yeah, I think that's the way to do it, eh, really. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep it clean, go hard. Keep it clean, go hard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, listen, we'll keep on going, but good luck to you and, and the crew. Yeah. Travel home safely. Cool. Cheers, guys. Um, so that was the 93 from um, Tauranga, I think we call it the Mount. Um, Mark Dunn, got to wish him all luck. I mean, these drivers worked so hard last night to get through. Um, qualifying was so, so tough. Who have we got here? Joe Farham. Oh, look, two of them were. I know you're not Joe Farham. No. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good, good. Joe Farham, I think I spoke to you a couple of years ago, actually, and I was a bit starstruck. How are you doing tonight? Who are you? Oh, I'm you're just, here. I'm just here. I'm just here observing and watching, yeah, so it has been. Don't you say that. You're a legend in your own making. Um, listen, you watched these boys qualifying last night. Qualifying was extremely tough. So these guys, I mean, they've done themselves, their families, their crews, their tracks proud. I think yeah, most definitely and I think what last night was all about was consistency yeah. and making moves without being stupid about it yeah. um, and a bit of luck and tonight it'll be again consistency yeah. looking ahead you know when that track goes slick you've got to be looking ahead making sure guys aren't spinning in front of you and knowing when to touch a guy in the corner so you don't go around so it'll be a good night tonight that's for sure. Listen, what I should do is just hand over the mic to you and you can go and do the chats. This guy knows what's going on. It's funny because Jack Myers said exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter, like, horsepower, the car, it's just that consistency, trying to keep it clean. Everybody likes to see, you know, someone upside down and flying down the back straight, but that's not what it's about. That's not how we win races. Well, that's not how you're going to win the championship, and unfortunately some yeah. people will do that because they'll come off too hot and they'll ride the wall. Yeah. Others will lean on them. Some will be intentional. Um, tonight... You know, when you get a big classy field like this where anyone could win it, it's all about finding that little bit of drive in the track, 
um, and being being smooth, carrying your speed and keeping the car straight. Yep. And it's just a little one percenters that make a huge difference. Most definitely. If you can keep a car straight, you're pretty hard to beat. Sorry, I'm just going to yell out, Quinn, Quinn, can you not run away from me? <laughs> can we have you? Can we have you? Just one second. Um, listen, we really love speaking to you. Thank you. Appreciate no your time. Cheers. But Quinn looks like he's on a mission, so I better talk to him. Sorry, Quinn. Mate, we were just talking about you on the infield. Um, how Now, I don't want to take away anything that you did last night, but of course, what you were doing were almost like practice laps. So how do you get that adrenaline going to, uh, to go out there with the rest of the pack tonight? Um, I don't know. I've been doing it for a little while now, so you just got to... Um yeah, get in the zone really, stay yeah. calm and just go out there and do your job. So yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just another race meeting, but um, obviously you got, um, you're with 26, yeah. 27 actually tonight, so yeah. fast cars. So yeah, yeah you just got to have your head screwed on and keep your car straight. Yeah. And I was just, I mean, the more we walk up and down here, you guys obviously haven't gone and hit anybody and no one's upside down. So all the crews and the drivers are relaxed because they can trust their cars. They know their cars are quick to go. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, no, obviously we had a pretty... Um, pretty chill night last night, just just um, cutting laps with the palms, which was great. So, car was pretty good, made a few little adjustments. So, yep, now we'll be ready to go. Awesome, Quinn. I know that you're on a mission, so I'll let you go. I really appreciate that you came back. So, good on you. We might grab you for the uh, the Grand Parade. So, that was, of course, Quinn Ryan, who um, won tier two last year. So, he automatically qualified for this year. Who have we got? We're looking. We're missing a driver. They're looking at me like no, Bianca. No, no. Is, is he here? No, Jack? Hey, we've lost him. Okay, so uh, this is Jack um, from 95N from Nelson, the only car to make it through from Nelson. He's actually spent a lot of time in the North Island. Uh, sorry, Alex Hill, yes. Sorry, sponsored by Jack's Tires. Sorry, Jason's talking to me in my ear. I better get it right. That's, a, that's the sponsor, not the name. Um, Jacob Buckrell. <laughs> He's looking at me like I don't know who he is. Come on down. He's just chilling in his truck as well. Hey, mate, how you doing? You look pretty chilled out. Oh, uh, yeah, no nerves at the moment yeah. until uh, the driver start our engines, I guess. Do you think the nerves start here on the dummy grid or once you're out on the track? Uh, I don't really get nervous for meetings, so um, well, this is my biggest meeting by far, so we'll see how it goes. I guess you just let everybody else uh, get nervous for you and they can control their emotions, yeah? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, I think Dad's pretty nervous. I think he smoked a pack every race <laughs> last night. So, uh, yeah. So, when they're nervous, like, they have a different ner set of nerves than what you guys do. How do they manage it as opposed to what you do? You say Dad goes out and has a smoke. What does everyone else do? Just disappear? Um, yeah, I suppose so. They're all up there watching. Yeah. And then um, I'd imagine Fraser would um, probably arc up a little bit. Nah. <laughs> No, nah, I don't really know. I'm, we come in and we're all happy, so it's all good, yeah. And that's really great to hear that they're not actually putting their nerves on to you because, you, like I say, you've got a job to do. You've got to con concentrate on something else and you've got your own set of nerves, haven't you? So, yeah, yeah it's, all a, it's all a try and keep and hide it from each other. Yeah, yeah. well, we came here with no expectations this weekend, like maybe hopefully get the um, to the ripper charge and then that last race last night... I started 19th, I was going like 6 on points or something, so whatever happens, happens, and I slipped out to 2nd. Got relegated to 4th, ended up 2nd in my group, so yeah, pretty pumped. So what did you do to get relegated? Was it a pass on the pole? Yeah, yeah, yeah pass on the pole. Just a cheeky one. <laughs> Not intentional, of course? Uh, nah, nah. Hey, listen, um, we'll let you go and chill out. You've yep. got a lot to concentrate on. Well done for qualifying. We'll see you out there in the um, Grand Parade. We'll so, make our way down. Well you, done. Um, who's next? Who is next? Dale Stewart. Doesn't look like he's in there as well. I know that the drivers have recently just been up for a driver's meeting, so they could be doing things like going to get water or dinner or something like that. Michael Rumney, where is he? Michael Rumney. No, I can't see him. Oh, here he is. I didn't see you. How are you doing, mate? Come down here. Come down here. How are you doing? Congratulations on qualifying. You did really well last night, eh? Yes, yeah. It was a, uh, yeah, definitely one of those nights that went to plan. So, yeah, can't complain. And, of course, being the local boy, you've probably got half the crowd on the on your side as well. Yeah, well, hopefully. Uh, we don't hear them over the V8s, but um, <laughs> definitely feel the support. Yeah, yeah. It's good to have the uh, home, home ground advantage, yeah. Now, you know this track through and through. This is, like you say, your home ground. Is there anything... Uh, 
I mean, you don't want to give too much weight to the other drivers, but there's, is there anything that could potentially catch anybody out here tonight? Because last night we did see the story of two races. It was really, really wet and then quite slick. Do you think they'll be the same tonight? Yeah, I guess that we generally tend to get a bit of that here in uh, Rotorua and... Um but uh, just the, the track can change completely from night to night. You know, it was really smooth and nice last night, and who knows, it could be rough tonight. It's just um, the nature of any dirt track, really. So we'll just go out and see, see how we go, really. Well, we were looking at the weather forecast, and it's, someone said it was going to shower, but I doubt very much that's going to happen. So the track's going to stay quite dry, eh? Yeah, that's it. No, Stan's got a bit of water in there, so hopefully it um, yeah, keeps a bit of moisture in, and we'll have a yeah, nice race service. I'm, I'm sure we will, yeah. How's the car fearing up? Do you think there's anything you can do or anything you can get from the car that is going to help you win tonight? Yeah, I guess we, we just gave it a good check over today and, um, yeah, we don't really, didn't really have much to do, so it was just to go through everything and check the setup and, yeah, look, you, we just got to go out there like we did last night and race hard and race smart and that's all we can really do, yep. yeah, yeah. Well, look, I wish you all the best. You go and uh, get some water in your Good grief, make sure there's electrolytes in there. This is hideous. I don't know how you guys live up here. <laughs> Good luck. Um, guys, that was Michael Rubney, of course, the local boy. Who else do we have down here? Um, we might head over to the Christchurch group. We've got um, Jared Wade. No, what am I? Uh, one of our Christchurch, Jaden Ward coming through. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you. Too many names. Uh, let's see if we can, look it's very relaxed down here, of course Malcolm Nato really really unfortunate, didn't make it through um, to the final, oh here he is didn't make it to the finals last night um, and that's very unlike Malcolm as well, so he's come a very very long way but I tell you what, he still loves the racing we lost him at one stage, he was up in the crowd um, enjoying some chips and what have you up there, um, Jaden can we pinch you for a minute mate? I must have been your good luck charm because after I spoke to you last night, you went out and blitzed everybody. Yeah, had a good run there, didn't we? So hopefully that carries on for tonight. Absolutely. You were playing a game of catch me if you can. Nobody could. <laughs> Just take the mirrors up, eh? Just focus on what's in front of me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there was a lot happening behind you, but yeah, in front of you, there wasn't much going on. So you literally just dropped it and off you went. Yeah, I knew I had to keep my cl uh, nose clean because I was sitting around six on point. So pretty much just gun it forward and... Very for you. Yeah, had to lead that race and take the win. How's the car looking? I mean, everyone's so relaxed, I can't believe it. I think I'm more nervous for you guys. You're all just all chilled out. Cars are all good. Yeah, well, you got to be relaxed going into these things, eh? But um, the car's fine. We washed it this morning. Just gave it a good nut and bolt check. Yeah. New tyres all around. Give us that little bit of fucking edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> it's all right. It's all good. It was a slip. It's okay. Hey. I'll swap sides. I'm deep in this here. Yeah. Sorry, say that again, Rick, Jason. Um, we've got, Jason says we've got a PG rating now, you're sweet oh, sorry, as, mate. but that'll be the one that we'll, we'll let you away with. Yeah, <laughs> just slip the tongue there Jay, sorry about that. Hey, um, how's the nerves holding up? You don't get nervous, you're, you're old school, you know how to win. Nah, well I'm 30 years old now, I've been doing this for my whole life, you know, so I don't get nervous. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm chill as, I'm ready to go out there and do the bizzo. Yeah. Yeah. How's Malcolm? I can't even see him, but everything's chilled out over here. He's just, is he having ratings tonight? Is he in third tier? No, he's not racing tonight. He's just sitting back and chilling. We've got Scott Tennant driving it tonight. Um, so he's getting laps in. He's driving Malcolm's car for Teams Champs. So he's getting some most valuable laps, laps in this year. That'll be a really great experience for him too, eh? I mean, within all of the... Uh, uh, within this um, lap, uh, sorry, this field that we've got, he'll be he'll be buzzing to get out there. Oh yeah, I think he's in the third tier, so there's going to be 26 cars, so no better way to learn than go out there with all of them, eh? Is he nervous? Nah, he's a seasoned vet, he'll be right. <laughs> he just wants to get out there, he wants to strip and get in there. Yeah, he's a, he's a man behind the wheel, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Put it there, welcome to New Zealand, welcome to Rotorua, it's such a pleasure to meet you. How, I mean, we've got to talk about the heat, how are you faring? You're from England, you don't get this kind of heat. No, 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 I was minus four when we left, so this is a little bit different, but yeah, I'm used to it, it's, uh, yeah, it's nice. Good. Nice. Yes, very. Yeah, <laughs> you try your minus four, see if you like that. It's uh, we get out here and get uh, some racing during the warm, yeah. Listen, I tell you what. How about we try and meet in the middle? <laughs> hey, now you've been in the country for how long? Two days. Two days, and you've jumped into this car. We are for a Bay Park car. Yeah, Thomas Lotus. Yeah, the Pollock Crane car. Absolutely superb thing. Yeah, so I've got some laps in it last night, and I'll sort of bit of the setup today and gone through a few things and. I'll give it a blast for that. Tell me, I mean, coming over, this is a totally different kettle of fish than to what you're used to driving, or even the, the track service to what you're driving back home. 
I mean, there's no two ways about it. You just came in here and it was bang, just like that, just like a, a fish to water. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God. Um, tell us how you do that. It's because our cars are more powerful, and but obviously we have poorer suspension, if that makes sense. So obviously these cars are a bit more refined on the suspension, slightly less power, so they are kind of easier to drive than what ours are. Yeah. So, you know, for me, it, it was like, it was easier to, to, to do that. Obviously the track surface is different, but I mean, our tracks slick off way more than these. Yeah. So you get used to driving the slick and obviously, you know, we've done, we've done some quick laps over here. So tell, tell us, you said that these cars are a little bit slower. Is that a horsepower? How, how much horsepower is less do they have? Um, obviously when I first started coming over it's quite a lot less. Now they're getting up there, you know, they're up over 500 now. Ours are like 650, 700 horsepower. So obviously, you know, and we're on harder tyres. Like I say, the shockers, our shockers aren't as good as these. You know, they spend more money on suspension over here, which they're allowed to do. We're not allowed to do that. So obviously the cars are dialed in a little bit better, you know, so they are a bit more driver friendly. Yeah. And so uh, we don't really know much what's happened in your season. Can you tell us how your season went? Yeah, I uh, Top five in all the major championships. I won the European Championship. You know, I was a main player in the World Championship again. Um, I was leading it, you know, halfway through. A guy in front of his own tar seal. Um, a guy blew up in front of me and we ended up going in the wall. Got going again and ended up fifth. But it was an absolutely superb race. So a really good season. The kids are coming on well. You know, we have uh, both my son and the daughter race and obviously my son-in-law. So there's, there's plenty of cars about and plenty of stuff to do and keeps it busy. So, yeah. How do you think you're going to fare tonight? Do you think you can take this home? And I mean no disrespect, that's an honest, honest question. Yeah, you know, we can. I've done it before three times, you know. Obviously, they're going to try and stop me. Yep. All the lads are here, you know. Whoever's up on points, we'll look after them in the last race and see what we can do. You know, we don't come over over here to play at this. You know, we come over to win. You know, we're not, we're not just taking part. Obviously, you know, as we know, I've won it three times so far. So I know what it is to be targeted and, and, and picked on and uh, you know for the championship and that's exactly how it should be so yeah I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And I know it's not your focus tonight but we're what two three years out of your last team's race yeah. are you prepared to go jump in and uh, take it away for the teams down in Palming in uh, what two weeks? Yeah definitely that's you know these are the five drivers that, that have come forward for it you know obviously the two Tesla boys from Holland yeah. real good driver you know I've built them two new cars last year worked with them quite a lot my young and he's real keen for it and obviously Charlie won the world final so I think we've got a good team if we can get some laps in next week at Hawke's Bay yeah. get together and gel a little bit yeah. you know you've got to remember that obviously for the team GB to come over we never race together yeah. as a team it never happens it doesn't happen at home in New Zealand that's what they do every meeting you know the clubs help each other drivers help each other and that's part of their race and we don't have that so to these guys, it's all alien, and I've done it, obviously Frankie's done it once, so we, we, we do know a little bit of it, but, you know, we, hopefully we'll, we'll pick it up next week at Hawke's Bay and, uh, and, and do well. And so do you think that you might use this tonight? I mean, if, I mean, we have to talk about it. If you don't think you can, um, any of the five boys can take away the title tonight, do you think you might have a little bit of team's practice? Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. You know, that's why we're here. You know, every, every club does the same. It's, it's, it's exactly why we're here, we've all said. First two races, see if anybody's up on points and, and, and look after them as best we can. Yeah. You know, start learning. It's the mindset. We don't have that. At home, we race individual. Every meeting we do is individual racing. You never do anything else. So, so it's quite a big, um, you know, mindset, isn't it, to, to be individual and then teams? That is the biggest part about it. The driving side of it, the cars, the knocks, that's no issue at all. It's the mindset of of the team aspect, which we've never had that, but it's, it's installed in drivers over here from when they start racing. And that's a massive difference, it really is. And I guess for a lot of our drivers here in New Zealand too, making a team is like the pinnacle of their yes, career. What they go for so it's, you know, it's what a lot of them do. You know, a lot of them don't ever win major championships. They don't want to. They, they want to be part of a team and win a team yeah. championship. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, like I say, it's a different mindset. And as we speak about teams racing, we've got a couple of teams lining up behind us. You're going to go watch it? I'll let you go and watch it. I really appreciate your time you. that you've taken. All of New Zealand wishes you, you the best of luck. I mean, we have our local lads here, but we can't, we can't uh, thank you enough for coming, being here again, and, and just doing what you love doing. I mean, you know, and I, I love coming here. I've got a lot of fans here. I like entertaining, and whether I get taken out or whether I win, that's just part of, part of racing. You know, everything stops on the track, and that's why I've been coming back for as many years as I have. Uh, we absolutely love it, so thank you. And we absolutely love having you here. Good luck. Cheers. Thank you. Right, we're going to cross over back upstairs, and then we'll come back and uh, hopefully do some uh, chit-chatting with the managers of these teams. Yeah, looking forward to uh, catching up with the two team managers who are uh, running these two teams. They're going head-to-head -head twice.
on tonight's program. So as you can see, they are about to come out the uh, pit gate. Let's take this opportunity just very quickly to bring in uh, another member of our commentary team tonight alongside me in the commentary box, Barry Brown. How excited are you? Well, I've got no part of this team, Joyce, have I? It's you versus <laughs> Stu. It's, uh, it's all about you guys. Bianca and I will just sit back and uh, watch and fight it out. Uh, great to see these teams races that have become part of the World 240s mm. weekend as well. So, um, And, hey, I always love to see Palmerston North lose. We get a chance to see them lose twice tonight. I guess that just means I'll put my allegiance with uh, your Rotorua Rascals. All right, let's take a look at that lineup as they do make their way up. We, uh, we'll introduce them to you a couple of times tonight. The Rotorua Rascals are the first side out in the silver and it is 26R Bryce Carter in the tank who is the first one out there. Johnny Morley uh, racing out of Rotorua nowadays uh, in the 98 car. Stephen Pattle is there in 144. Riley McDonald in 733 and Ke uh, uh, Keegan Orr, uh, no sorry, it's Jaden Jarvis I've got here uh, running in the Rotorua Rascals in the 735. Right, Palmerston North Pumas out there in the black as uh, the Palmy teams do, the Panthers and the Pumas tonight. It's about the Pumas and 79p is Kyle Rowe. 135 is Jaden Hall. Daniel Burmester running double duties this weekend in his uh, super stock and the stock car in 172. Hamish McLeod in 667 and Taylor Lamp uh, in 992. So looking forward to seeing these two teams going head to head. As you mentioned, Barry, the uh, teams racing over the over the years has become a, a nice little part of this finals night of the World 240s. Just adds a, a little bit of extra flavour, well, a lot of extra flavour to the night, doesn't it? Well, it does. Um, I mean, the Superstocks are out there doing it for their championship. We've got the second tier, obviously, where the winner pre-qualifies for the next year's World 240s. Always a big target. Then, uh, you know, we've got third tier consolations and that. But yeah, the stock cars, there's only 10 of them, but out, out there, teams racing, it just brings something totally different to the event. And um, no, there's no such thing as a bad teams race, I don't think, is there? No, there isn't. So uh, let, let's explain teams racing to those people who are here at Paradise Valley who aren't regulars at Speedway and to those uh, across the world who are watching, uh, maybe unfamiliar with what our teams racing is all about. Barry, give us a quick rundown about how this works. Well, basically, I don't know whether they're running four cars in each race tonight or five. I would say it will be four. So we'll, we'll, we'll see if Bianca can find out. Um, I'd say it'll be four so that there's a reserve for the second race just in case. Yeah, so basically they're going to start with, uh, yeah, they'll toss. No, one team will uh, win the toss, normally take pole, not always. So uh, if Rotorua will win the pole, there'll be a Palmston North car parked alongside. They alternate down the grid. And uh, basically, you've just got to get one of your number home first after the uh, 10 laps or 12 laps or whatever the distance have set. And uh, yeah, there's a, a certain amount of rules in that, but basically, you you do what you need to do to get the other the other cars out of the the way and uh, one of your number to the the win. It doesn't matter which car, and uh, pretty much doesn't matter how you do it as long as you keep it on the racetrack and keep in with the. The flow of the direction of the racing you can't turn around and hit anybody in the opposite direction but you can sit there and wait for them um yeah none, none of this rules about sort of lap down cars having to leave them alone or anything like that some guys will go straight into a blocking role they might only do three or four laps but if they uh, you know eliminate the two run cars for the opposition team you've done your job but it's not not about how many laps you do and, that, and that's it. In, in kind of basic terms you'd, you'd think that at the start of each race if you've got four cars on your team two of them are going to try and race and, and what we call be the runners and the other two are going to be the blockers to try and stop the other two teams runners that's that's how it works basically but you they do mix it up every now and then and uh put all their eggs in one basket basically with one runner and have three blockers trying to protect that one runner it does mean of course if the opposition does get to that uh front running car you've uh, you, your goose is probably cooked and uh you have to wait for the second race because you've got two races tonight so they'll be up uh race three and race 15 tonight if you uh, have got that in your race program uh, for the rotorua rascals against the Palmerston North Pumas. Of course, as far as the national championship goes, both of these two teams have been New Zealand team's champions over the years. That total currently held by the uh, Stratford Stormers side. And uh, the uniqueness of that New Zealand championship is that whichever team is the... Oh, no, sorry, it's Huntley, isn't it? Sorry, geez, yes. boy, what am, what am I saying? 
I'm a couple of years. I'm a couple of years behind myself there. That, that's called COVID brain. <laughs> well, let's hope you sort that out because you actually booked a commentator at that <laughs> exactly. meeting, so and you, uh, you don't even know which track uh, it's being the held. Raiders, uh, <laughs> the Waikato Raiders are the the champions, um, and uh, yeah, so that event is coming up in pro- about a month's time now. I think it is about four weeks away. Uh, so last bit of practice for. Uh, these two sides, the Rotorua Rascals and the Palmerston North Pumas. So wishing the guys all the best. We'll see if we can ever catch up with uh, the managers. We'll let you know uh, as that gets closer. So speaking of getting closer, the Reaper Charge race uh, at 6.30 to find that final uh, spot in the finals field. Uh, so we've got a bit of time to fill it. Barry, let's, uh, let's, let's maybe take a look at some of those uh, groups from last night. And just kind of have a bit of thought on, or a bit of thought on on how things uh, panned out in uh, those groups. Of course, we had five qualifying groups here last night, and uh, it's been a couple of minutes uh, on each of these groups. Blue group uh, were out there, and it was uh, Jack Myers who just kind of quietly went about his business and topped the group uh, with 74 points, two second placings, and a third. Yeah, and that's right. Uh, I mean, the car's very bright. You can't miss it, but he went about the business without uh, carrying the chequered flag. And you do see some of these top guys, they uh, they don't mind not winning a race as long as they've got the points to make that top four for the second night. He mau ngā rongo ki te matoa te whenua He whakaaro pai ki ngā tānga te katoa Tihe mauri ora E ngā mana, e ngā reo, rauranga tirama Ngā tāngato ngā mā tā waka tēnā koutou katoa. Ka mihi ngā maunga o Aotearoa ki o maunga. Ka mihi ngā awa o Aotearoa ki o awa. Ka mihi ngā iwi o Aotearoa ki o iwi. No mai haere mai ki Aotearoa. Ko ngā hihi o te rā hau, Ko au te kānohi o Aotearoa e mihi ana ki o koutou katoa. Nō reira, ngā mihi hoki ki a rātou te honga mate, te honga mate o koutou o mātou, haere, haere, haere atu rā. Ko rātou te honga mate ki a rātou, ko tātou te honga re ki a tātou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. My name is Ngā Hihi o Te Rā, which means the rays of the sun, unlike today. I am also known as the face of New Zealand, and it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you to Aotearoa, New Zealand. As is traditional in my Māori culture, I acknowledge our Creator, the beginning and end of all things. And may there be good will and peace amongst all mankind. The mountains of Aotearoa, New Zealand, welcome your mountains. The rivers of Aotearoa, New Zealand, welcome your rivers. And the tribes of Aotearoa, New Zealand, welcome your tribes. No mai haramai, we welcome you to New Zealand. I also acknowledge your ancestors and our ancestors, those who have passed, and we wish them a fond farewell and a safe journey to their resting place. As is traditional in my Māori culture, I welcome you once tēnā koutou, I welcome you twice tēnā koutou, I welcome you three times tēnā koutou katoa. Well, nā mihi, nā hi, uh, you see him there as the face of New Zealand and internationally renowned speaker, uh, and he is also our cultural ambassador here for the Rotorua Stock Car Club, so we thank him for that and his welcome uh, to us all here at Paradise Valley Speedway tonight. My name is Paul Hickey, my pleasure to be your race commentator tonight alongside Barry Brown in the commentary box, Bianca Mudge on the pit reports uh, and the interviews tonight, Stu Russell will also be providing us plenty of updates across the course of this evening. We are set for a mega night of Speedway action thanks to Technical Welding Services. This is night two of the World 240s. How good is it after three years 
to have overseas drivers back for the last two years. They haven't been part of this meeting. The meeting has still gone ahead, but not quite the same. Taking nothing away from Jack Myers and Jason Long, our two champions for the last two years. Deserved winners and holders of the World 240s title. But without those overseas drivers, it does miss a very small edge. Tonight, though, that changes once again. This event that began back in 1987, when Chris Alwell from England won the first ever World 240s, that set it up to become a major event here in the Superstock scene. It would be 10 years before it would be won again by another overseas driver. A young star by the name of Frankie Wayman Jr. blew the field away at Palmerston North, winning in 1997. He would then back that up again three years later, winning in the year 2000. In the early 2000s, the event moved to Rotorua after being based in Palmerston North for 16 years. In 2005, the Rotorua Stock Car Club took over the hosting rights of the World 240s. And what a great night it was when local star, the great, late Darcy Hunter, won his second World 240s title. After doing it in Palmerston North in 02, in 05, he won in front of his Fano and his home crowd. Then, as the event grew from strength to strength here in Rotorua, Frankie Wayman Jr. would do it again and become the first person to win the World 240s three times, winning in 2009. Tonight, he returns to Paradise Valley Speedway, his Kiwi home. He brings with him his son, Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr., a.k.a. Frankie JJ, a.k.a. Ted, along with the new Brisker Formula One world champion, the one they call the wild child, Charlie Sorter, for his first taste of racing here in New Zealand. And two Dutch drivers also join this field here at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway as part of the World 240s. It's been a while since the Dutch have been represented. But tonight, it is Yali and Niles Tesla who will represent the Netherlands and do their bit for this World 240s title. Those five overseas drivers joined this year as pre-qualifiers by Quinn Ryan out of Hawke's Bay, who last year missed out on the World 240s final, but by racing in the second tier championship, what we call Super Stocks in Paradise, he won that event which gave him automatic entry into this year's finals field. So that makes six. Last night, qualifying here at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway, five groups of 24 or 25 cars did battle over their three heats each. We've talked about the 20 drivers who have made it through to the finals tonight. That makes it 26, which is our normal finals field for the World 240s, but what would a World 240s weekend be without night two starting with a winner-take-all repercharge. charge. 26 drivers are about to take to the track. The winner of this race will be part of the big dance tonight. Thanks to the Rotorua Stock Car Club and Technical Welding Services, this is the 2023 World Invitation Super Stock Championships. Barry Brown, the repercharge. charge, what a way to start the night. It certainly is, Paul, and uh, yeah, it's just something that gets everybody going earlier on, isn't it? Sometimes we have a couple of uh, cars come through from the river charge, so you've got people leading the race, people on the bubble, but tonight, yeah, winner only, and uh, the, la the first half dozen rows are just full of guys that almost qualified last night. Some of them did within a lap or two of being home, and then finished up, got taken out, and... Uh, yeah, that could go to anybody from those first half dozen rows, I think. And how often do we see a driver from the Ripper Charge end up at least on the podium? Because they've already been out there, their nerves are settled. Anything after this tonight now is a bonus. It, they've it they've got a feel for the track. Um, they're in the zone already and they come out already pumped up for race one. Or maybe a little bit more relaxed than the other drivers who are taking part in the final. It, it certainly is something we've seen, not, not just in this World 240s, but at other major championships around the country where ripper charges are run. But certainly this one where the ripper charges run not long before the first heat. All right, let's take a look at the grid. Sorry, Barry, to interrupt. We've got Hayden Hart and Seth McConchie 
who are lined up on the front row. Row two, Tyler James out of Wanganui, and a former World 240s champion, Bryce Steiner, sits there on grid number four. Tim Ross, can he add to the Gisbernites in the finals field? And outside him, Brett Nichols in 48N. The top female in our field this weekend, Rebecca Barr starts seventh in this ripper charge with Mark Costello, 198R sitting on grid number eight. Former winner of the World 240s, former New Zealand champion. In fact, he's a Grand Slam champion. He's won it all in New Zealand. Wayne Hemi, alongside another former New Zealand champion, Randall Tarrant on row five. And the two Aucklanders, Cody McKee and Aidan Eustace, sit on grids 11 and 12. Dylan Marshall on the inside. Unlucky 13, I'd rather be there than 14 with Paul Gaskin on uh, 6W. Uh, we then go to Lance Mitchell in 141S on grid 15. And Thomas Stanaway, so good normally around here at Paradise. Valley struggled a bit last night. Ryan Hunt, 29M, starts on grid 17. Uh, inside um, Blair Ashton in 21. Uh, Brendan. Oh, sorry, Brendan Ashton. Yep. Uh, so many of them. Yes. <laughs> Jerry Linklater uh, and Zane Dykstra, uh, the Wanganui pair, uh, there on 19 and 20. Then we go to Brett Loveridge and Daniel Burmester. We saw him out there. He's in the Palmerston or Pumas stock car team as well. Uh, Damien Orr is there along with Ben Milne on 23 and 24. Look, this is 28 cars. I did forget that late change. Max Holloway and Maddie Wise on grids 25 and 26. And on the back row, uh, it is the 66 nine of Brendan Ty and Jonty Short 115A. Just uh, one other change up there early on yeah. Um the T James on oh, grid it's three, Trent. Trent James Not in Tyler. the 56V, yeah. yes. So, Again, a um, couple of those T Jameses in there. There right. is. So this is it, 28 cars lined up for this Reaper Charge race. It is 12 laps. The winner only will go through. So will there be any team tactics going on here? Will drivers have maybe three or four laps going hard if they drop to the back? Uh, they have a spin, they're not going to win the race. Will they then go into block mode? Will they then decide to help out one of their club mates or one of their mates? We are about to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, race fans, wherever you are, we are set. Winner take all. Well, one spot in the finals. Here we go. It is Reaper Charge time and we are racing. So into the first turn, Seth McConchie, oh, just gets a little bit crossed up, so Hayden Hart gets to the front from the one, the 166. Randall Tarrant's gone around, there's a few caught up down the back there. Burmester, James, Linklater, uh, sorry, Dykstra's down there and Ryan Hunt, but out front it is uh, Hayden Hart and Trent James. Wayne Hemi's gone up there into third place. Brett Nichols drops into fourth. Seth McConchie in 282, then Tim Ross in the 144. So confirming it is a 12 lap race, two gone. There is a lot of pushing and shoving mid-pack. Bryce Steiner, former champion, pulls to the infield. Thomas Stanaway is onto the infield as well. And look at this down, and here comes some action. We got Max Holloway, he's on the block. Who's he gonna go after here? He's gonna pull out in front of Wayne Hemi. So that's given his club mate a little bit of breathing space, but Brett Nichols jumped up into third place. Nichols runs it wide. So at the moment it is still uh, Hayden Hart in 166, who is your race leader. Trent James sits in second place. They've got a little bit of buff a buffer at the moment. McConchie's up into fourth. So at the moment, nobody on the blocks. Nobody's looking to mix things up just yet. It is again though, the 81 of Max Holloway. He's slowed down. He's just uh, cruising the pole line around through turn four at the moment. No point slowing these cars down at the back. The race leaders are gonna start catching up to back markers in a moment. So we've got our eyes on the 166 from 56, 48 and 272. The race leader just goes up the inside of the 21 car. Here we go. Now keep an eye on the 81 because Hayden Hart's going to come up on him now. Max Holloway knows what the deal is. Oh, he's just going to let Hayden Hart go past. Let's James go past. Now he pulls out again. If he's trying to help James, I'm wondering why he's not attacking uh, Hayden Hart and trying to slow him down. Here's Dylan Marshall now. He's around the outside of Marshall. Makes that pass. Here we go. Max Holloway's just fired up again down on the main straight. So 
So it's still Hayden Hart. We are eight laps gone. Four to go in this reaper charge for the final spot in the 2022 World 240s. Hayden Hart, they call him Lofty, out of Auckland. Oh, just gets a bit of a push on there. That's the first time I've seen him do that down into turn two. He's got a sizable margin at the moment. He's got a couple of uh, Waganui cars sitting up in front of him at the moment. He puts the bumper into Dykstra, pushes Dykstra to the infield. That's opened things up here a little bit for Trent James. And there goes the hit, takes Lofty to the wall. So now it's Trent James versus Brent Nichols. And in comes Lofty again. <laughs> Makes the big pass up the inside and back to the front. What will Max Holloway do? It's white flag, one to go. Here comes Brent Nichols in for the shot, misses. Then Holloway wraps him up and turns him around. Hayden Hart, what a drive. Cars all over the place. Hayden Hart will take the final spot in the World 240s final for 2023. So let's take a look at it. There's your top 10 on the super screen and in front of you, Hayden Hart taking the win. It doesn't matter after that because everybody else is close, but no cigar. A 1.126 second win from Hayden Hart. Well, it took a while, but we knew that something would happen and it all just really started happening in those last couple of laps, Barry. It did, and they uh, managed to slow enough to drop him a couple of places and immediately um, we saw the... Uh, Trent James get to the lead, but the attack on him immediately from behind by Brett Nichols, and that just slowed them up enough to allow Hayden Hart to come back through, charge up the inside of uh, the whole the whole three of them went out towards the wall, and Hayden Hart got the lead back again. So that, that, that move by Hayden Hart to just get quickly keep on the pace and make that move back up the inside to come around for the white flag, gutsy move. He just he just went for it and it paid off for him. Well, that was that. It was all or nothing by then, wasn't it? He'd lost the lead. He had one chance to possibly get it back. Two cars that he had to battle to get it back. Lucky they were tangled up with each other and uh, he just launched into the two of them. Suck it up and get it done with suckitup.co.nz. 
Are you finding your computer, laptop or gaming machine is getting slow or not working at all? And can you not afford to buy a new one? We Reuse IT is one of New Zealand's leading refurbished computer sales and service specialists that allows you to get new or refurbished machines without hurting the pocket. Shop online or visit our expert team today that will help guide you to the technology that best suits you. Afterpay is available. Visit us at 135 Cuba Street, Palmerston North or head to our website at www.wereuseit.co.nz. I'm down here with Lofty Hayden Hart, the 166 mate. You started off on pole position and now you've made it through the finals of the World 240s, but she was a bit of a toughie out there. Yeah, I don't know. It was a, I thought I was away and then I think Dykstra of a couple of laps ago sitting on the pole line and this gas around the outside, he put me up and I got passed by a few cars, so I just thought I had to go on as hard as I could and hope for the best and I managed to come out in front, so yeah, pretty happy. <laughs> mate, you were in a box seat to qualify last night and then for some reason it just sort of fell apart in that last heat, but uh, you made it hard to get through here. You had... Trent James riding behind you, 56V, and you had a couple of Wanganui boys on the pole line as well. Uh, they're your mates though, did you sort of think, oh, which way could this go? Yeah, well, I knew um, I was pretty safe with Max and Dylan, well I'd hope so, and then I seen um, Zane there with a couple laps to go and I thought, oh, I knew he'd have a poke, so that's why I just tubed him coming into one and then he came out on the inside of me and then, yeah, stuck me in out of two and then lucky I got going again and then, yeah, fucking bogus. Threw it in big into three. Sweet, cheers bro. Sweet, all right mate, we'll let you get back to it. Hey, quickly, what's going on? Oh, I lost the clutch when I hit the wall, and it bent a few other things, but yeah, we'll fix it and we'll be good to go. Mean, there you go. Lofty's got a bit of work to do uh, down there on the 166. I'm here with one of the crowd's favourites, Wayne Hemi. I mean, that was a hard, hard race, Wayne. Unfortunately, you didn't make it through, but still proud enough to make it to the second, second tier. Yeah, yeah, it's very hard racing this weekend, and uh, you know we uh, we knew it was going to be tough in the ripper charge. There's a lot of fast cars in there, and Lofty led it from start to finish, and well, well deserved to be honest. You know, he's driving really good, and got a bit of help along the way with a couple of Wanganui cars. Not they weren't out there to be intentionally, you know, team race blocking, but just to take that pace away from us and certainly work for them and they got away. But um, it was what it was. The track went a lot um, slicker and blacker a lot earlier than what I thought it was going to. So we didn't quite have the right set up. But uh, hey, we're, we're happy to be here and uh, it's racing. Like you said, it was, I mean, the pedigree of racers that are in the, the finals and the second tier, I mean, the, you guys are all quality racers. It's hard. That was a huge ass, one person going through. Well, we are, even even the tiers below that, even the third tier, you look at some drivers that have got the calibre that would, should be or could be in the uh, in the finals and they're not there and it's just because it's so competitive and, you know, you see some luck last night. We just didn't get the set up right and yeah. I struggled with the track from, you know, from lap one and um, we just, yeah, just didn't dial in properly, but um, hopefully tonight we can you know, learn a little bit from the car. It's a new car, so we're still learning the car, but it is what it is, and uh, uh, it'll be a really good finals. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching the finals, and jo we've got Jordan out there, and all good. I mean, we've got to watch Jordan luck, but like you say, I mean, it's those little critical things that you have to get right in this kind of meeting, and I mean, you're a big man to stand up and say we didn't get that right, because normally you're right at the front of the game. Oh yeah, we, we 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 knew we didn't get it right, and we were struggled, and um, it wasn't you know it was a co combination of things. I wasn't on the form, and the car wasn't doing what I needed it to do. And end of the day, you you can blame a lot of things, but you just got to blame yourself. And you know we we take, put a hand up and go, hey, we, we missed it, we missed the ball, and it is what it is. But uh, yeah, yeah. no damage, and um, yeah, we'll race on and have fun fun tonight. Well, look at that as a bonus, no damage. Now, Wayne, I know that um, you've got a lot of concentrate on, but all. All of the pit crew wanted to congratulate you on your appointment and being the um, team manager of the uh, of the Mustangs over here. I did speak to one of your would-be crew members. There's no team selection yet, so we don't need to give it away. But they said that you're doing an amazing job and that you're really well suited to this. So congratulations. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm actually uh, honoured and uh, uh, you know to to do 20 years of team racing um, at the highest level and yeah. and then uh, you know. To be selected by your peers to be the, to be their managers it means a lot to me and and I take it very serious and you know uh, you know it's I've got to come up with a plan I want them to drive uh, out the gate have fun do the best they can do and and, and do it as a team and you know uh, being a driver I can really probably focus on on what right. I think I would like to be in that position so at the end of the day it's my first season being a 
being the manager and um, I'm looking forward to it and uh, the team selection will be done on you know, around Monday yeah. so hopefully uh, we can get, get our line up and, uh, and be competitive. Yeah, absolutely and it's almost like you've gone full circle now I mean you started how, how long ago have you were we together in the first race Hawks Bay I think it was it was on my 13th birthday I believe I'm now 47 that's how long you've been racing you've done full circle what an honour to be uh, like say selected by your peers Oh yeah, like I, you know, I'm an old fella now, you know, and um, I, I can I can just put put back to the sport to the young guys, and I raced all these young guys in the race today, and I and I, and I like them, I like racing with them, you know, I, you know, I don't, I've won the World 240s, you know, I've done been there and done it, so I don't get upset, I don't I don't have a desire to go, I need need to do something, I've done it, yeah. so you know, I'm just enjoying myself, and and I like the younger guys and watching them come through, and you know, I think Lofty done a really good job, I'll shake his hand and yeah. good job, and wish him the best of the luck in the in the finals, you know, and and that's why. I sports about you know us old guys that have been in the sport a long time we've just got to hand down and and respect the young guys coming through because you know, they're hard and they're fast and they're tough you know and we and I respect them yep. and I tell you what respect goes both ways because when we were over here um, we went and did a interview with Lofty and there was just a line of drivers ready to shake his hand they understood what it meant to get through and how hard that race was so yeah I mean respect goes both ways in this game oh ab absolutely um, it, it does it all tears even the you know the top 26 that they went through last night they all drove awesome yeah. a couple of young guys in there that haven't been in the finals before and yeah. Awesome for them to go. You know, I'm really proud to see them. You know, get some new blood in there, and and that's our future, and and that's what the sports are. You know, going to grow on. Yeah. And of course, Jamie as well. He's come up from the mini socks, and he had a little bit of arge barge last night. That was really good to see. Um, and of course, he's learning as well, learning from a master. Oh yeah, he's learning. You know, but you know, I told him, you know, like if you're going to give that out, you're going to get it back too. So yeah, just be, be prepared. You know, um, you know, you know, I'm, I might be your dad, but you know, if he's going to go out there and do that, he's got to face the consequences. I'm not going to go and protect him for that. You know, he calls the shot. That's his, his deal. You know, and if he, he ends up in the hot dog stand, that's where he's going to. That's where he ends up. You know, and that's kind of where it is. And you know, you got to you got to earn your earn your respect. And um, but then you know, if you look at the top drivers, Asheries, uh, Jaden Ward. You know, those guys didn't get anywhere by not pushing and attacking when they were young and, yeah. and you watch them grow and mature into these amazing drivers, our best superstar drivers in the country. Yeah. And um, they've done it by using their front bumpers. Yeah. Listen, Wayne, we've got the girls coming out on the track now, so we're going to wrap it up and head up to the boys up the top. But, hey, it's lovely to talk to you all, as always, all righty. Um, thanks for your interview. Good luck for the rest of the night, Wayne. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah, there we go. One of only a handful of Grand Slam winners in New Zealand. Uh, that's classified as a driver who has won the New Zealand Stock, uh, Super Stock Championship. They've won the World 240s. They've won the New Zealand Grand Prix. They've won an Ireland title, a North Island or a South Island title. Uh, they've won all four of them. There's only five drivers in the history of the sport who have done that. Wayne Hemi is one of them. And, of course, a number of uh, teams' championship titles as well. Uh, so yeah, he'll be in that second tier competition tonight with that chance to uh, win that and be an automatic qualifier for next year's World 240s. Well, welcome along. The terraces are chocker. There are plenty of people watching our live stream across the world. Welcome on in as we continue night number two of the TWS Paradise, uh, uh, TWS World 240s at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway and out on track. It is race number four of the Sharkies Engineering Limited Aotearoa Ladies Crown. This is These ladies essentially treat this as their New Zealand Championship. It's the only time of the year they all get together on the track at uh, the one time uh, without uh, the boys getting mixed up in the uh, stuff as well. They battle it out amongst themselves. Three races last night, three races tonight, combined points to find the winner of the Aotearoa Ladies Crown. And uh, great to have Sharky's Engineering uh, on board as our sponsor. I was having a quick chat to Sharky earlier on and uh, he loves supporting this event. Uh, he's got his uh, daughter out there racing uh, this weekend as well, which is uh, extra special for them. At the end of last night, after three heats, leading on points is the defending champion, the 14B of Gemma Holloway. And as they make their way around, uh, she is starting this one on grid four, so she is right up there near the front. We see the red tank down there of Chloe Ingram. Uh, she's one of our uh, regular visitors up from under the shadow of Mount Taranaki in Stratford. Um, so there we see Gemma Holloway in the 14B. She's been one of the regulars in the stock car scene for many, many years now, uh, following in the footsteps of her dad, Tony Palmer. 
And uh, great to have Gemma back here defending her title and doing it well at the moment, sitting on 77 points. Uh, she has a little bit of a buffer. Uh, we go back seven points uh, to Kirsten Kaiser, one of our locals, the 681. And uh, she is starting on grid three, so she's right up there as well at uh, the front of the pack. You can see her, she's just heading down into turn number one and two now. So she's seven points back on 70. Then we start getting uh, into uh, a quite tight race, the 42B of Lauren Swift. Another one starting up near the front of the field. Look up towards the front there, the 42. Uh, she is on 69 points. Then 15A, Alicia Gordon out of Auckland. She's on 68 points. She's starting right down the back in the black one of the black cars. And uh, number 14, uh, sorry, 15A. So they are your top scorers heading into tonight. Not far back from them, Jesse Wilson, Henderson, and 454K, 189R, Miller, Theobald, and also the 85G of Brittany Carpenter. So those are your top runners after three heats last night. 569W is Brittany Ty from Wellington. The 85G, uh, there we go, we, it is a G. We were rubbing an R-ing last night, but there was G or GM. It is definitely a G. Brittany Carpenter in 85. And wrapping up the front five rows, 4B, Courtney Hatton, and the 81R of Brooke Courtney. Three races to come for the ladies. They are all 12 lappers. Three down, three to go to decide our ladies' crown tonight. And it's Lauren Swift who gets the jump off the outside of the front row. Bit of a push going in here. Lexi Hendricks gets in wide. Kirsten Kaiser finally manages to pull herself off that and get back onto the racing line. And up there into third place. Little bit sideways uh, for the 75 of Katie Prescott. Couple left sitting down the back. Jesse Wilkinson, uh, Wilson Henderson not going anywhere. Already on the concrete. Uh, so, Gemma Holloway, race leader. Defending champion alongside Kirsten Kaiser. Now, they were the two uh, who are top two on points. And here they are, leading the race. So the 416s uh, come to a standstill as well. So just circulating. Oh, here we go. Problems at the front. Gemma Holloway with a few issues in the 14. Was she being blocked there by Chloe Ingram or were they just needing to take evasive action to avoid Alan Bisley in the, in the 22K? We've gone red. And that'll come over to get the 22 off. She's okay. She's got the car refired. So race leader is 14. We'll also head down and uh, help out the 116 of Cheyenne Sutton. Brittany Carpenter on the infield. So at the at the point, last point, um, when we got our last round of lap scoring, Brittany Carpenter had moved up into sixth place overall on points. She's sitting on the infield. There's Kendall Reed in the 15. She had a couple of good runs there last night. 16A, Kendall Ashton driving the 16A car up into eighth place in this one. Right, so the tractors did go over to um, check out the uh, 116 of Cheyenne Sutton and She's waved, she must have waved them away. Which is, the referees will make the call obviously. I, the, the cause of the stoppage would have been the 22. Uh, one, one, six, if you're mobile, so Sutton's obviously, oh and I've got it fired up now. One, one, but the officials have ruled she had sat down there for a wee while. Um, she'd only completed one lap. Uh, so she's done one and a quarter laps. She still does need the push off the track anyway. So 14, your race leader, Gemma Holloway. Then it's back to the 681 of Kirsten Kaiser. The 75 of Katie Prescott is a lap down. So how good is it to have these drivers coming from all over the country? We've got uh, the drivers from 
pretty much every track across the North Island represented. From Auckland to Kiki to Hawke's Bay, Stratford, down to Wellington. Christchurch are here, Cromwell represented as well. As we go back racing. So the race leader looking up the inside of the Chloe Ingram tank. That different line and she just runs it wide out there. Had to go throw it in low, Gemma Holloway, but makes the pass nicely. Got a couple of back markers between herself and Kirsten Kaiser now. Just taking things tentatively at the moment, Gemma Holloway. So there we go, two back markers between herself and Kirsten Kaiser in second. Then it's Lauren Swift and Courtney Hatton. So second, third and fourth all kind of running together and now getting caught up with some of the back markers. Around goes the 81. And Katie Prescott's gone around down there too. So let's get this battle here. There's second, third and fourth into turn one and two. Six, eight, one, 42 and four. And they all managed to avoid the spun up car down there. Sasha Penn in the 55, she's still mobile, just trying to find a spot <laughs> to get herself out of there. Now, go, that's it. So Gemma Holloway still ticking away nicely at the front of the field. Seven laps gone, it'll be eight in a moment with four to go. Oh, problems down in turn number three. And the 915 gets driven to the concrete. It's Jesse Wilson Henderson who just lined up the 915. Pulls away this time though, and a couple, oh, Lauren Swift got caught up in all of that in the 42. So the 26, Cheryl Walker all the way from down in central Otago is going to sit this one out on the concrete wall in turn four. Meanwhile, our race leader, she's got a half lap lead. Courtney Hatton, 4B is up into second place. Kirsten Kaiser's actually dropped a couple. White flag is out uh, for Gemma Holloway. She hits down the main straight, then it's back to the number four. And then the 52, Ashley Herbert is up into third place. And the chequered flag falls for Gemma Holloway. She wraps that one up. Oh, a couple of crunches. Hannah Pearson, Miller Theobald. Caught up down there at Miller Theobald, finished, no she hadn't. And she was fourth on points, will she limp the 189 car home? No she can't, yes she can, we're still green. Can she get across the line, she's fourth on points. She's not going to go for the finish. Miller Theobald. Now we've gone orange. She's lost a big opportunity there. She was will make that fifth on points if she crossed the line. She's going to end up with a DNF. We'll probably drop now right off the pace. All right, so confirming uh, your top ten. Missed them there on the uh, screen, but Gemma Holloway, Courtney Hatton, Ashley Herbert, Kirsten Kaiser, and Kendall Ashton, your top five, with uh, Lexi Hendricks uh, the next off the uh, off the grid right uh, Barry let's turn our eyes to the uh, World 240s Barry and uh, you've gone through now that we've got that all uh, sorted out with the final uh, ones in there where you've done a bit of analysis on the uh, track representation uh, in this year's World 240s yeah, 27 drivers uh, out there all together now. Obviously, two uh, representing Great Britain and uh, three representing Great Britain, sorry, two representing Holland. And uh, 
21 Kiwis out there, so one representing Auckland's White Rocker Park, none from the Huntley Track, two from Bay Park, one from Kiki, three from Rotorua, none from Wanganui, none from Stratford, five from uh, Gisborne Track, so that's the biggest individual reputa- uh, representation, two from Hawke's Bay, one from Nelson, one from Christchurch, four from Wellington, two from Palmy North, so uh, yeah, there's a couple of South Islanders in there, you can see might work together, but uh, you'd say the Gisborne guys, and we haven't seen this for a long time, hold the key with the biggest numbers there, Paul. Who, yeah, what, boy, who would have thought that, eh? Yeah. Like, I, I suppose it's it can happen, um, but it's certainly been a long time since you would have realistically been able to say, yeah, Gisborne to have the most qualifiers yes. in a final of a... A major superstar meeting like this. Uh, but on the flip side, and I know during our intro tonight, um, Bianca and I both uh, gave a little bit of needle to Stu. Two cars from Palmerston North. You know, years gone by, they'd be dominating and having half the field. They, they would, yeah. Certainly, uh, yeah, 10, 10 would be an expected number most years. But, yeah, we've picked up on a few that are doing other things, like having a season out of, uh, in the case of William Humphreys and... You know, others have retired. Peter Bingston's racing a super saloon at the moment, not the super stock. So, uh, the, the odd person we've heard from over, over the weekend, like Jamie Hamilton, living in Christchurch representing Gisborne, there's too, too big a task to go down from here back to Christchurch, only a two week turnaround to the team. So, he's not in at all. You would expect if uh, Jamie Hamilton had been here, that it would have been six through with the speed that Hamilton's shown. to do a rascals and the Palmerston North Pumas on track. They're about to do some practice laps. Uh, so but while they're doing the practice laps and before we introduce them, let's head pit side. We've got another update. I sure do. I'm down here with Sam Lane now. Sam Lane, you're not accustomed to uh, stock cars. You've come out of a mini stock and a modified. What it's like to drive one of these? Oh, it's a hell of a lot of fun, that's for sure. It's a completely different ball game compared to the modifieds. Um, I'll see lots more contact, um, purpose contact too, which is quite cool. And the girls out here, they definitely don't don't give it easy, don't make it easy, which I didn't expect. Which is <laughs> that's cool though. It's good fun. And I was talking to you earlier on today, and you're like, Bianca, these aren't fast. I'm missing 200 horsepower. <laughs> yeah, well, these definitely. Uh, do not match up to how fast modifieds go with the horsepower um, and the complexity of running modifieds. But again, modifieds you can't hit. Um, but I'm definitely missing the speed, so I don't think I'll be trading the modified in any time soon. Hey, big shout out to the Dixon Brown racing team who have borrowed you this car yeah. for the weekend. Absolutely, I popped it on Facebook and said, you know, if anyone wants to give me a ride in their car, hit me up. Um, and they were the first in, and they were excited, you know, which is awesome. Don't expect anything in return to. They're awesome family. So thank you very much to them. Otherwise, you know, I wouldn't be out here living this dream. Look at the smile. You're buzzed to go. Hey, mate, let's hope you get a little bit of argy bargy and have some fun in the last two. Yeah, absolutely, you know. Might as well use my bumper. It's there. I don't know when I'll be back, so... And what else are they for? Exactly. Have some fun. Enjoy the rest of the thank night, Sam. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, she is buzzing, and uh, why wouldn't she be? Right. These are the practice laps. You can see the five silver cars. That is the Rotorua Rascals. The five black cars are the Palmerston North Pumas. Before each team's race, well, your first team's race of the night, it's uh, traditional to have a little bit of a practice run. Four laps just to get a feel for the car and a feel for the track before you go into the hard battle that is teams racing. So that's what we're seeing at the moment. All the cars look to be okay. Uh, they're trucking along all right. Maybe some issues for Daniel Burmester in the 172, but the chequered flag falls. So we'll just see what might happen here as they uh, head to the uh, infield and maybe to the pit gate. We'll be watching for some three minute bells uh, possibly cruise to jump the fence and make some last minute adjustments to these race cars so we were hoping to have a catch up with the two team managers so haven't been able to do that tonight uh, but we got uh, Samuel Ashton team manager of the Royal to do a rascals uh, we've got Ian Parfitt and uh, Stu Russell who's also on our commentary team is uh, 
co-managers of the Palmerston North Pumas side. So, let's take a look at how they line up for the Rotorua Rascals. That squad, once again for you, 26R Bryce Carter, 98R Johnny Morley, 144R Stephen Pattle, 733R Riley McDonald, and 735R Jaden Jarvis. You certainly picked a ball, Daniel Burmeister. I thought there would have been uh, more. We've got a couple of others now heading towards the pit gate, though, by the looks of it. Mm. But, yeah, he's certainly the only one that uh, pulled up there initially. And, and the Pumas, 79p is Kyle Rowe. 135p is Jaden Hall. 172, Daniel Burmester. Hamish McLeod in the 667 and Taylor Lamp driving 992. So there you go, those are your two squads. So again, for those who are a little bit unfamiliar, maybe you're here for the first time at Speedway, or maybe you're watching from uh, overseas, teams racing, or any of our racing here in uh, New Zealand, once there's, uh, they've done their practice laps, or these drivers before their race, they, if there is something wrong with the cars, they do have the opportunity for a three minute bell. They can pull up to the pit gate, then the officials will give their crew the opportunity, give them the call, say, yep, over you come. Three minutes is all they've got to fix whatever issues that they may have with their cars. So we've got uh, both Daniel Burmester and Kyle Lamp, uh, sorry, Taylor Lamp down there for the Pumas. Um, Lamp's still just no crew over there with him at the moment. And the 98 of Johnny Morley uh, sitting there for the Rascals. So they're just doing a few little checks in there doesn't seem to be anything too major there's Samuel Ashton leaning in the side there in the high-vis vest the manager for the Royal to do a rascal side so he's I wonder, I wonder Paul where the lamp may have been going to be the reserve driver for this one so he's just uh, sitting up there to see what's happening to Burmeister's this car yeah and it's it's the same here too because Samuel Ashton he's, he's been in there talking to Johnny Morley and now he's just all of a sudden run over to uh, Jaden Jarvis. Yes. Um, so you kind of get that feeling that maybe, just maybe, there's going to be a change to what the original plans were there for the Rascals as well. So a lot of team tactics come into it here. It's, you know, gen break it down simply. Two runners, two of your team, race as hard and fast as you can. The other two uh, will be the menaces on the track, the blockers, who will try and stop the other team's runners. The aim of the game, get one of your cars to finish 12 laps first. Um, but then, you know, any plans that you might have that you do this, you do this, and uh, you do that, well, that can all go out the window by the time you get to the end of the very first corner. And we just had a re reminder, too, from referee uh, Rob McNaughton that uh, the one-way in-car radios that are going to be in use during the World 240s and that tonight are not used during teams racing. Mm -hmm. So uh, the referees will not be talking to the drivers so they manually if they need to move anybody back under a red light that's all done through the old uh, radio system down to the the track crew on the infield and uh, waving people back to be restarting in the proper place yeah so that's something new that's coming over the last few years you, you, you may not be aware of all of our drivers wear earpieces uh, in the super stocks uh, normally and then the stock cars normally and the referees are able to tell them during stoppages you move back or you need to go off the track yeah, not used here. Right, looks as though the Palmerston North Pumas are on pole and it will be the 79 of Kyle Rowe who was there on pole. So, so yes, yeah, just see 992 heading to the infield. So he was just sitting over there to see whether he was going to be called in mm -hmm. the last minute, obviously. And Stephen Paddle sitting it out for the uh, Rascals. Row two is Johnny Morley in 98 on the inside for Rotorua, 667 Hamish McLeod for the Pumas. Row three is Jaden Hall for the Pumas and Jaden Jarvis for the Rascals. And on the back row, Riley McDonald, 733 and 172, Daniel Burmester. It's nice and easy to tell who's racing for who. It is Black versus Silver, Rotorua versus Palmerston North. It is the Rascals versus the Pumas. Two of these races tonight. Teams racing, let's go. So straight off the bat, uh, we had the 26 
of Bryce Carter tried to turn right on the 79, but he just gets dished up into the concrete real hard. So look at this, this could be a change straight off the bat. Riley McDonald from right down the back is now going to have to try and run for all to do, and he gets taken to the wall. So it's Palmerston North running one and two right now with Bryce Carter still sitting in the concrete wall down in turn number one, and Riley McDonald up on the concrete wall down the main straight. Here we go, Carter is underway. Uh, so 79 is your race leader, Kyle Rowe. And here we go, the other two have dislodged themselves. So now Riley McDonald, can he put the blocks on here on the 667? That was with a bit of help with the C, uh, Silver Tank driving in there. Okay, I missed that one. He just gets dished up again by uh, the 667 of Hamish McLeod, who's running in second place. He's having trouble doing a lap, isn't he? He is. <laughs> so here we go, here's uh, Bryce Carter. He's on the picks. Takes a hit. Now this will let Johnny Morley move up into second place now in the 98. Riley McDonald hasn't moved off the, he's trying to, I can see his wheel spinning as Bryce Carter slows up the Kyle Rowe car. So now from a Rotorua point of view, they need to stop the 79, but he's running with plenty of protection here at the moment. 79, Kyle Rowe is your race leader. 98 is in second place. So there's uh, a good half lap between them. And Daniel Burmester in the 179, uh, sorry, the 172, just sitting himself in behind the race leader as Jaden Jarvis for all to do it gets himself turned around back heading in the right direction Johnny Morley goes past so we've got the three palmy cars running 79 is your leader look at this now how smart is this he just pulls aside lets his teammate get in front of him Daniel Burmester will now be the first car that will come up across these block cars and so it's Daniel Burmester's job in 172 to try and keep the two block cars busy so that the 79 can get past them. Meantime, Johnny Morley looks up the inside of the 135. Can he make that pass? Can't afford to muck around too much. In comes Bryce Carter and does a big shot there. So Johnny Morley is away. Here comes Daniel Burmester now and takes the block car out of the way and problems for Johnny Morley who pulls to the grass so he is out as well for the Rascals so not looking good for the Rotorua side eight laps gone oh Johnny Morley is he going to go back out oh he could get into trouble for that one one of the uh, rules of teams racing well all racing if you are about if you're about to get hit you're not allowed to kind of run to the infield to avoid being hit and uh, that kind of looked what, like what Johnny Morley was doing. I kind of said, oh, the car's damaged, so he's pulling off. And, well, now he has stayed on the infield, so it's not a case of uh, seeking sanctuary. One, two, three cars on the track, all Palmerston Pumas. The 735 of Jarvis gets back out there. But I think it's done and dusted, race fans. I think we're going to chalk this one up for Palmerston North. It'll be white flag next time around for the 79. Kyle Rowe, he's led from the get-go. And there's nobody now in front of the 79 to stop him. A few big hits going in, but it all happened early, and it was all Palmerston North Pumas. Applause from the infield. Give them a hand, ladies and gentlemen, both two sides. Put up plenty. And it is the Palmerston North Pumas who will draw first blood tonight. Kyle Rowe with the win. There's no points or anything on this one. It's just purely first across the line. But look at that. P, P, P. Uh, your first three home. Uh, and Jaden Jarvis will be the only other finisher. So there will only be four finishers uh, in that one. They've done the coin toss for both. Obviously, you okay. can hear from Stu Russell, Palmy Pole in the first one, which they just won. Rotorua won the toss for uh, they're taking pole in race two. So we're not far away from the main race. So water truck is uh, water truck is heading onto the track for a bit of water, and the finalists are getting themselves sorted. We'll have a victory lap for the Palmerston North side. And then very shortly, it'll be the gridding up ceremony. And 
Might just try and have a quick catch up with the uh, team managers, or at least one of them after that team's race. So as they head around the venue, ladies and gentlemen, show your applause and appreciation of the Palmerston North Pumas as they win this first up race tonight. And we will see them do battle again uh, in race number 15 this evening. So what a night we are set for. First of the big finals, not too far away. 45 laps to find a new World 240s champion. Barry, you got any kind of... Is it, is, it's just getting so hard to pick a favourite nowadays, isn't it? Oh, it is. You can't even pick the qualifiers anymore. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Those those Gisman guys, just depends on whether they decide whether Asher Reese is the enemy or not. Mm -hmm. I thought Asher, even though he only qualified third in his group last night, I thought he looked incredibly impressive. Certainly how quick he, he made up that ground uh, before the power steering failed in heat one and then still managed to qualify without needing the rep charge. So, um, yeah, I think if I had to pick one, I'd, uh, I'd pick the big black fin as opposed to the big gold fin. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I think the gold fin's certainly going to offer, offer a little bit of opposition uh, for our Kiwi boys. All right, so uh, we are not far away, as I say, from gritting up and the first of our finals tonight. Uh, we're going to take a very quick break and we'll be back with you real soon for live racing action here at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway. Uh, wholesale tyres in Fakatane. Need truck tyres? Wholesale tyres. Good tyres, better prices, great people. Right, so just taking the last of the uh, team cars off the track. I see Paul and Bianca made their way to the infield, so we're not too far away from the, uh, the grand parade of the 27 finalists this year the Technical Welding Services World 240s Championship. And uh, very shortly we'll be handing across to uh, Paul and Bianca on the infield. Just putting the last uh, little bit of water onto the track. And uh, seeing the field gritting up behind us. Heat one of the big one. Yeah, the drivers uh, you get to see them with their helmets off, catch some interviews with some of them before we start the first of the 15 lap heats. Thank you, Barry, for holding the fort there for us for a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome again to TWS Paradise Valley Speedway. But a water has gone on the track. Uh, the man in the water truck, Stan Hickey, twice runner-up of this World 240s event, never quite stood on the uh, top step, came pretty close. Bianca, here we go. This, this, I'm starting to get goosebumps. Oh, as you say that, so am I. This is uh, a bit exciting. We can hear the rumble of the cars that are about to come out and they'll do their half lap and grit up behind us. Here they come. I, I tell you what, shall we just see? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Paradise Valley, are you ready? Yeah. I thought you would be. <laughs> we are here, race number one of the World 240, thanks to Technical Welding Services, the finals field. Are making their way out, and what a lineup it is! It is the uh, 99 of Todd Hemingway who will start on a pole position. In behind him, 127G 
Ethan Rees. So this, what you're seeing come out the gate, ladies and gentlemen, this is the inside row of our finals lineup tonight. Todd Hemingway, then it is Ethan Rees. Then we've got Michael Rumney, one of the local stars in the 7R. 95 is Alex Hill. Look at this lineup as they still keep on coming out the pit gate. The next one out there, your, diff, uh, your 1NZ is Asher Rees. Uh, next out the gate is the triple five. Another one of our overseas drivers, Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. The bright car of <laughs> Jack Myers. You can't miss that. And he is the winner here two years ago. The 93, Mark Dunn, won that Reaper charge last night. In behind him, Quinn Ryan, automatic qualifier last year's Super Stock and Paradise winner. James Clark out of Gisborne in the 29. This lineup is stunning. To find a new world champion, will it be Jacob Buckrell in the 99? Fast car on track, we've got some people who think so. Uh, Dale Stewart is there in the 94. There's three-time winner, Frankie Wayman Jr. in 5-1-5. Then we get to our Holland drivers, Yali Tesla in 4-1-0. 10G, another former champion, Peter Rees, who will start off grid 12. Another former champion behind him. What a stacked field. It is Keegan Levine. Then we go to his brother, Ethan Levine, Jordan Deere, Richard Gaskin, Hayden Hart, Jaden Ward, and Josh Prentice. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise for your finalists of the 2023 World 240s. I think they're ready, Paul. I think they're good to go. <laughs> All right, we will give the drivers a moment to take their spots. Got some issues over here for Hayden Hart. We're going to invite the crew out. And then we are going to head over and talk to the drivers. You've done this a couple of times as well, Bianca. It's a, it's a weird feeling for the drivers, isn't it? Because it's something different. They don't normally do this, do they? Yeah, this is the ultimate. I mean, this is really special for them and the crowd because it just goes to show the uh, the level of drivers, the level of skill needed to win this race and just the appreciation of everybody being here. All right, I think we, we should take a wander over. Yeah. And uh, let's start having a chat to some of the drivers. So what's happening now is the drivers are coming over. We're going to go grab some. Um, they're getting into the gear and they've got their crew coming out to strap them in, make sure they're nice and safe. We want to give them a few extra pulls on those. Yeah, so a few of the cars are still running. We'll, we'll kind of start down the back here. Yeah. We might just uh, jump down here very quickly to uh, Mark Dunn. Yeah. And then uh, I'll, so I'll, I'll start here with day. Mark Dunn. Uh, what? Big night for you last night, World 240s finals, how are you feeling? Yeah, good mate, just uh, relax, uh, can't wait to get out there and just see what we can do. Starting down the back in the opening heat, is that the kind of thing you enjoy? Oh yeah, just, I don't know, I've just got a cruisy approach about it mate and just see what unfolds in front of me, so. You do seem fairly relaxed, which is uh, good, uh, this uh, car here, first year in it, you feeling comfortable? Yeah, no, I've come to grips with it pretty quick, so yeah, no, I'm real happy with it. All right, congratulations on making the finals. Good luck, and uh, give it heaps out there tonight. That is Mark Dunn in the 93. I'm here with Josh Prentice, the 5G. Mate, you're starting right off the back, but you're no stranger starting off here. Let's go, eh? Yeah, no, I'm uh, glad with the grid I got, and uh, always like a back grid for the first one, so we'll see how it unfolds and charge hard. And Wish you all the best. Of course, Shailen's here. She's going to uh, strap you and make sure it's right. You did all the hard mahi last night. She went for a two-hour massage today. What's going on? Oh, no, it's all part of the fun, eh? <laughs> uh, we'll just get into it and see what happens. Listen, we'll let you get into the car. We'll move on to the next one. I don't know where Paul is. He's down here with our great button driver, so we'll let uh, our cameraman follow him on down. All right, uh, I'm over here with Frankie Wayman, Junior, Junior, Frankie JJ, Ted. Welcome back to... New Zealand, uh, how's it being back here for the first time in three years? Yeah, man, it's great to be back. We're really excited for this. Uh, all the lads are, and we've got some good drivers out with us as well, so uh, we're happy. We're ready for it, I think. Exciting night for everybody here in New Zealand. Uh, for yourself, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, we had a good few laps yesterday, playing with the car a bit, trying to get it set up to how I like it, and uh, got somewhere near at the end, made a few more adjustments this morning, so... Uh, We'll just have to see how it goes. Right, give it heaps. It's so good to have you guys back here. Great to catch up and uh, good luck tonight in the World 240s. Thank you very much.
Hey, uh, so next up on the rank is uh, Jaden Ward. Mate, three times in a weekend. What's going on? I think you've got a crush on me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my husband. No, I'm sorry if you're watching, mate. <laughs> Hey, um, you're starting reasonably far off the back, but you don't mind that at all? Nah, first race, off the back, make as much passes as I can, uh, let the carnage happen in front of me, I'll, that's all good, I love it. You know it's going to happen in front of you, right? You're just going to sit back and watch it? Yeah, I'll sit back in that first corner and hopefully 15, 16, 20 odd cars will go out by the wall and I'll go up the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope, well, well I'll be watching, everyone will be watching. Listen, we're going to carry on down the rank, Jaden, good luck here, yeah? go jump in the car, Thank wish you. you all the best. All right, I'm up here with uh, winner of the World 240s a few years ago. In fact, I might just, I'm going to jump around this side, but he's a bit closer to me there. Keegan Levine out of Wellington. Uh, you've been pretty busy doing double duty with some uh, good results over the last few weeks, but this is a biggie, the World 240s. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is um, one of the biggest meetings for us. So, um, yeah, just looking forward to it. What's the plan from this? It's a, a grid that not a lot of people like. Oh, I'd rather have this grid up race one, so at least if my night's going to be ruined, it's going to be ruined in the first race. So um, I'll just hold on and uh, hopefully I come out the other side. That's the way, foot down hard, give it heaps. When you know how to win, so uh, good luck tonight, Keegan Levine, in the 5W. Hey, I'm making my way down to Alex Hill, who we uh, missed out on earlier on in the evening when I was doing my little pit walk. Alex Hill, mate, you're uh, getting strapped in, you're all good to go. I said, sorry, Alex, you're getting strapped in, you're in nice and tight, you're all good to go. Yeah, no, we're good to go, see how she goes, so hopefully we can stay down low and pin our ears back. Now, you're the only uh, Nelson driver coming up here, do you feel like you're a little uh, solo warrior? Yeah, hopefully um, keep my nose clean and, um, yeah, have some luck and sneak through. Good luck, mate, we'll see you at the other end. All right, I think we're going to jump up here, might be the uh, final chat because they're all getting pretty close, we'll see if we can... Uh, have a quick chat. He's right on the at the front, on the outside of the front row. Quinn Ryan, uh, you've did it the easy way, really pre-qualifying. Or is is that maybe not quite a good thing because you're not in form like everybody else from last night? Um, yeah, I guess um, not being able to race with the other boys last night. Um, I mean, it, that is what it is. But um, we're happy with the car, and um, you know, we're we're really looking forward to getting into it. So um, nah, heads in the right space. Well, let's go. You've done a few laps here uh, at Paradise Valley over the years and a few visits this season in this car as well. Uh, how are you feeling with the new machine? Yeah, no, it's uh, coming along really well. It's taken a bit to um, get the setup right and all that sort of thing, but um, no, starting to, starting to get it now, so um, now the team have done a good job. So um, now we're happy. All right, Quinn Ryan, good luck for the World 240s. We're going to grab one more there with Bianca. Yeah, mate, I'm over here with Ethan Levine. Ah, oh, my God, shoot me now. Uh, Ethan Rees. Mate, you're starting off grid three. How are you feeling right now? Oh, pretty excited today. It's always a uh, good meeting, this one, especially comes finals. So get through these first two races and see how we go and mainly get through that first corner and hopefully we're still in there and, yeah, should be on. Any tactics for that first corner? Oh, just sort of put your foot down and go and turn and, you know... Hope for the best, and yeah, not much you can do, really. Well, listen, there's five good cars here. I'm sure that one of you guys are going to make it up onto the podium. We wish you all the luck, Ethan. Stay safe, go hard. Um, Brittany, she's probably out there watching somewhere. She'll be all nervous. I'll go look after her for you. Awesome. Cheers, guys. All right, so there we go. 27 drivers who are all set for the start of the World 240s uh, this year. Three heats of course, of 15 laps to find the winner. What a night it is going to be, and it is uh, my absolute pleasure on behalf of the Rotorua Stock Car Club to welcome to TWS Paradise Valley Speedway, who worship the Mayor of Rotorua, Tania Tapsil. Uh, Tania, welcome to Paradise Valley Speedway. Kia ora Rotorua and kia ora to all the families and friends who have come here to support. This is an amazing event for us. We look forward to it all year and how great that we have our international visitors here racing on this track. Good luck to our three local racers and thank you to everyone that comes down to support these guys. Let's get it going. All right, uh, you've been to a few Speedway meetings over the years. Are you excited? Oh, absolutely. We're stoked. My family's at the back waiting to see that dirt swirl. We're really looking forward to see the results of this first race. All right. Who worship the Mayor of Rotorua, Tania Tapsil, thank you for joining us. She will perform some special mayoral duties in a moment. We are just waiting now for the final drivers to get themselves all strapped in to be a part of this big night here at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway. 
It's a little bit different for the drivers. It's the only time of the year where something like this happens. Traditionally, you've seen it last night. You see it at all of these other meetings, Bianca, where they do this, they go through this ritual behind the scenes, away from everybody. Tonight, it's a little bit very different, doing it in front of the crowd, and, and it must be a little bit unnerving for some of them. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it must do. But, oh, I mean, I did the pit walk earlier on. Everyone was relaxed. When we made our way down here this time, you could definitely feel the nerves from all of the drivers. We've got eyes on us at the moment. They're just saying, get on with it, let's go. Uh, the crowd are ready to go. They're, I mean, how special of them to see this ritual too. So the last of the crews getting themselves all sorted, just one or two, to leave the track here at Paradise Valley Speedway. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is what it comes down to. It started 12 months ago when 26 drivers raced at Superstocks in Paradise. Quinn Ryan was the winner of that, became our automatic qualifier. In the middle part of the year, our borders opened. So planning began to bring our overseas drivers back. Last night's qualifying brings us to this. 27 drivers who are the finalists and battling for the honour to be 2023 World 240s champion. Ladies and gentlemen of Paradise Valley, are you ready? Okay. Now, what we like to do is get things nice and quiet. Nice and quiet. Shh. <laughs> Let's get the hush. We've got four famous words to come. Who worship the mayor of Rotorua, Tania Tapsa, will have the honours. So ladies and gentlemen, nice and quiet and get ready for the roar. Gentlemen, start your Right, so gritting up now, heat one. Technical Welding Services, World 240s for 2023. All the preparation's been done, all the work's been done. The overseas drivers, some of them having the odd little problem with their cars last night. They'll be hoping that that's all fixed. So on the pole we have the 99M Todd Hemingway out of Bay Park, 46B Quinn Ryan outside him, 127G Ethan Rees grid 3, 29G James Clark grid 4, 7R Michael Rumney, 99B Jacob Buckrell, 95N of Alex Hill and the 94R of Dale Stewart, 1GB Swarter with the big gold fin on it. 515 GB, Frankie Wayman Jr. 335R, Ken Hunter, 10G, Pete Rees. I think we're just about uh, ready to go. Then we've got 87G, Brody James, Keegan Levine, 5W, 481 from Holland, Nils Tesla, Ethan Levine, the 46W, 555 GB, Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr., 166A, Hayden Hart, 88P, Jack Myers, 
Jaden Ward is there, Ward. Mark Dunn, Josh Prentice, and Yali Tesla. What a lineup! Who will be World 240s champion for 2023? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, race fans, good evening, good morning. Buckle up tight. Turn one is about to arrive. We are go for the World 240s. And here comes that big push into the corner. We got the first car round. We got a couple down into the concrete. Keegan Levine's caught up down there. As I predicted, maybe into that first corner. Tesla comes roaring through. That sends Jaden Ward out wide. So we got two corner still sitting down in the concrete. It's Todd Hemingway who leads from Quinn Ryan, Ethan Rees, Jacob Buckrell, then Alex Hill. So we got one moving. That's uh, James who gets out of there. On is another one of the Dutchies who was caught up down in the turn one concrete after that initial push. So it's Todd Hemingway who leads. Scoring 28 down. Oh, Ethan Rees runs it a wee bit wide for third place. Tesla, a little bit off the pace. He's got a flat, flat left, uh, flat right front, I think. So he may have to leave the track. Jacob Buckrell moves up there into third place. So it's the 99M who is your race leader. No, it's front end damage for 410 out of uh, Holland. So he pulls to the infield. There's your race leader into turn two. Down the main straight, you just saw Quinn Ryan there, who's running in second place from the front row. Those two. Oh, around goes Jordan Deere. Gets spun up down in turn two. So that's going to drop him back down through the pack. The one GB of Charlie Swarter, right with Frankie Wayman Jr. right on his tail. Jr., FWJ pushes up the inside, makes the pass. Here comes Hayden Hart, the Ripper Charge winner. He's up into 11th place in this one. Out front though, still Todd Hemingway. Six laps gone of this opening heat. Problems for Mick Sorter gets pushed wide as uh, Rees and Myers and Hayden Hart have a coming together. Sorter puts the bumper into Jack Myers. Tries to push him wide. Tesla in amongst it with the race leaders at the moment. The top four have gone past him. Now Ken Hunter, the local man, up into fifth place. Again, full of mini stockers. Look at this. Todd Hemingway, Quinn Ryan, Jacob Buck, Relief and Rees, Ken Hunter. Running hard and fast in this opening heat of three for the World Invitation Superstock Championships 2023. Nine laps gone, it's a 15 lap, so nearly two thirds. Oh, big bumper from Peter Rees into Michael Rumney, and that then sends Dale Stewart wide. He kisses the concrete coming off turn two. Is that a flat right front for the 94? No, he looks to be back on the pace now. That was the battle for ninth, seven, eighth, ninth. And uh, Rees picks up two spots. Here comes Asher now, getting into the game. Puts the bumper into Michael Rumney, which sends Peter Rees into the concrete. Wayman up the inside of uh, Peter Rees. Absolutely got a pace on here at TWS Paradise Valley Speedway. The white flag is out. And the chicken flag falls for Todd Hemingway. Wow. So that has run three laps short. That was supposed to be a 15 lapper. And it's only ended up being a 12. That's the way it goes. Um, but, whoa, there could be some controversy behind the scenes with that one. So, here we go, your top 10. Todd Hemingway takes the win in 99M from Quinn Ryan. So those two on the front row. Ethan Rees comes home in third. 99B, Jacob Buckrell in fourth place. Kenneth Hunter rounds out your top five. Then it was Alex Hill, 95N. The 1NZK of Asher Rees in seventh. Frankie Wayman Jr., uh, 515. 
in eighth place. Peter Rees, 10G in ninth, and Mick Rumney. Michael Rumney wraps up the top 10. Charlie Sorter, 1GB, home in 11th place. 94R, Dale Stewart. Then Jack Myers, 88P. Jaden Ward, 971. Hayden Hart in 166. Then Brad McGee, Josh Prentice, Ethan Levine, Keegan Levine, and Frankie Wayman, JJ Jr. Uh, coming in there in 20th. Mark Dunn, James Clark, Richard Gaskin, Jordan Deere, the two Teslas, and Brody James right down the back of this 27 car field. Wow, hard and fast, plenty into the concrete in the early stages. So we'll ha have a catch up. We've got Stu back on the uh, game now that he's uh, celebrated his Pumas win. Uh, he's going to go and keep us up to date with damage reports and uh, who's in, not too many DNFs out there. We had one, we had two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen drivers tonight get into the 16 second marks. There we see on the super screen our Heat 1 winner. It is Todd Hemingway. As he takes a moment and uh, I think we're going to get set to uh, head down to Bianca for a quick chat with, with Todd as uh, the rest of the crew do their bit and get things sorted there on the, on the engine. Uh, He's happy. Let's okay. I think we're gonna we're gonna head down there now and uh, over to you, Bianca. Yeah, just really quickly, Todd Hemingway. That's got to be a good one to get under your belt. Yeah, no, pretty happy with that. I was a bit nervous. Good one, but um, no, yeah, it paid off. So lucky I got a clean start and just held on. So yeah, no, it was good. The track looked like it's super dry at the end of it. How did you find it? Yeah, it did. It did dry out towards the end, but um, lucky I got this car dialed in for a slick track. So if it stays that way tonight, I'll be pretty happy. When's your next? Uh, where's your next group position? Uh, you got to come from grid 15 and then 26 now, so tough task here to me, but we'll hammer down. Mate, that's a good buffer. First place, lots of points. Well done, mate. Cheers. Hey, if I can quickly jump in, I've got uh, 1GB, Charlie Sorter. Mate, um, on, you went a little bit backwards in that race, to be fair, but hey, it's your first proper run in a New Zealand track on a full field. How did you find that, buddy? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. We're just getting used to it. I think we need to go our elbows out a little bit more and... Use the bumper, you're just getting swallowed up at the start, but you know, it's a little bit different to our race, a lot more side, uh, side uh, contact, so we'll get there eventually. At home, you're a lot used to trying to keep the wheels protected because your wheels stick out further than the, uh, the nerve bars, the side rails, so to speak. But around here, like you say, you've got to get used to being able to have faith in the side rails. Yeah, these boys, they just come barreling in and just use side rails. We haven't got to worry about our right rear, so obviously, we just need to get used to the contact a bit more, and we've got the pace in the car, so. Hopefully we'll be there by heat free. You just quickly, uh, you followed Frankie around quite a bit. That was probably a, a big help for you. Yeah, of course. Oh man, Frank, he's done it for God knows how many years. So just trying to get the laps in with Frank and uh, just have the team out if we need to by the end of it. Beauty, mate. Go well. Cheers, mate. Back to you, boys. Thank you, Stu. <laughs> oh, look at that, sending those wishes back home. Right. Uh, we are now up with the on-site auto electrical third tier competition. But Barry, let's jump straight into it. You've been crunching the numbers. It's all about making passes. Yes, Todd Hemingway won the race, but he should do that from the front. Who made some big moves? Yeah, well, there's only only about three or four really did, actually, surprisingly. Normally do get a lot more in that first heat. Asher Reese started from grid 19, finished seventh, so plus 12. Asher's made more passes than anybody else. Um, Jack Myers and Jaden Ward both were plus 10. 
So coming from uh, very deep in the field, they've like finished 13th and 14th from right down near the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, the 5G is a, a plus nine, that being Josh Prentice. So uh, we had a few big ones. Jordan Dare has gone minus six. Uh, Keegan Levine minus five. So uh, some of those ones that we were expected to do quite well in that first heat have actually gone backwards. So yeah, like Keegan Levine got caught up in that um, first lap incident, which dropped them right to the back. So he's done pretty well to get uh, back up to 19th. We'll come back and analyse that more real soon. This is the third tier competition tonight. The format for this, uh, we have got uh, about 35 or 36 cars, I think it is, in this group. We are running the three-fourths format. So all of the drivers race three races out of the four and again combined points to find a winner at the end uh, just confirming for those who are keeping track of points 28 for a win not 27 28 points for a win in the world 240s right in the starters hands 12 laps and it was elias dykstra who got the move going from the outside initially uh, but then he's been... Oh, we got cars up and all over and everywhere. Dylan Tau, we got two cars climbing up all over the top of uh, one. I'm sure we're going to go red here. It's Dylan Towler and Brett Kelly sitting on top of Aaron Alderton. So there we, go. there we go. We've seen the big turn one incident in the third tier, not the World 240s. We knew it was going to come sooner or later. So there we got the 66, that's the sister car to the one that we just saw win uh, the opening heat. So we'll see if we're going to come to some replays of that. This might just take a while for our crash crews because they could look kind of very, very kind of all intertwined there. Uh, so let's go back to it, Barry. Um, and of course, we are just waiting for any and all updates uh, coming to us from the pits. Uh, so we'll uh, let Bianca and Stu jump in uh, when they need to. And of course, any, as soon as we get the official results for the uh, heat one of the World 240s, we will bring those to you. Yeah, so, yeah, that's Asher Rees being the biggest mover, a plus 12. Does that show just how tough that field is out there? Because quite often we'll see somebody come from a grid 26 up to up 19, 18, 19 places. That, that's right, that 17, 18, 19 places is something we've become accustomed to. And to see a plus 12 and two plus 10s as the biggest move, yeah, quite a shock, Paul. Uh, I mean, we've even got one extra car in the field. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, I, I think it's just the the level of competition out there. Um, the, the two Dutch boys finished 25th in a, for the 418H, and uh, it did not finish for the 410. So not a good start tonight for them. Uh, Brody James likewise with a, a DNF. So just the two DNFs. All right, we've got the replay on the super screen for you uh, from that opening. There we go. There's that tangle uh, right off the inside. Just trying to see who it was. I think it might have been the James car uh, that came from uh, the pole line <laughs> and just kind of set this domino effect in action. Everybody else lucky to get around it and through it. Yeah, uh, they're pretty well hooked together, I think, aren't they? Here they are. So the crew's doing their thing. Um, just one, oh, one thing we do need to mention here. Now, we, we talked earlier about um, a few car changes. Uh, now, this is... I believe it's Simon Joblin uh, racing in the 52, not Scott. Yes. Uh, Simon Joblin racing in the 52. So he's not going anywhere. All right. Okay, so I think we're going to head down uh, pit side, and Stu is with one of our Dutch drivers. Yeah, first time we've got him on the mic this weekend, but we've got Niels Tesla. Mate, uh, your first run with a full Kiwi field out there. Didn't go too well off the start. You must have been a bit nervous to try and back out of that one. Yeah, it was very hard to come back in the race. It was very, I did very good, I think, because yeah, it's really hard to race the same time as him. So, how did you find uh, the traffic and the field and the contact out there compared to back home? Um, so, I, I don't, I don't how did you find the contact compared to back home? Oh yeah, I like the contact over there, yeah, so you can put someone in the fans and yeah, that's really good. A couple of weeks, a, a lot of practice before team champs now, I reckon, after a not so good first heat. No, it was not really good, but yeah, we got some practice for the teams, you know, and it'll be alright, I think. And let some big hits. 
I'll have a talk to your brother after too because I think uh, it'll be good to see you two boys. I know you what you do back home, but I think it'll be quite good to see uh, and show the crowd what you do over here. Yeah, we will see you soon, yeah, and have a talk with my brother and family. See you soon. Good. Do you want to quickly say hello to your family back home? Hello, family. Hello to Julie Gaga. I think uh, so what more is allowed to see. Love it. That was cool, yeah, eh? that's whatever it. he said. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the World Team 40s is all about. And uh, yes, uh, from us here, kia ora to <laughs> everybody else around the world. Uh, boy, yeah, that, it, is, it is tough. It is so tough for these uh, overseas drivers to come along and, and uh, do well here. And that's why it's only been done four times over the years. Um, Frankie Wayman Jr. doing it three times and, you know in, in those three years uh, that he's won it he's come over pretty much every year for the last 24 so he, he's well accustomed to it multiple different replay angles coming at you of this uh, lap one incident of the on-site auto electrical third tier competition hey just what we uh, do have a quick moment I just need to open up my little uh, computer here oh, it's a phone actually isn't it they pretty much are computers i want to say happy birthday to caitlin taylor who is turning 24 today happy birthday caitlin uh, where else would you want to be on your birthday than at the speedway eh happy 24th birthday uh to you from everybody especially josh right all these different angles coming in look at that the car park is chocker out the back, the terraces hey, Paul, are I'm just gonna, full. Paul, Stu? I'm just going to cut in here. Yep. I'm quickly going to grab. It's not a driver because I don't want to uh, try and understand English. Um, <laughs> I'll just quickly grab William Humphreys, who's obviously running these two Dutch cars. Mate, uh, what's happened to the 14 car? Uh, he just clipped the, the big bump coming out on the wall, coming out of turn two, and obviously ripped the wheel back, just snapped the shock hat off. Uh, it's when you shock in it and just the brake line. So let's get that sorted for them and get them back out for the next race. Fox Mini Laps. Hey, uh, What's it like for you? You've uh, competed in this, you've been a part of this for plenty of years and now here you are on the spanners on these two cars, something different for you? Yeah, definitely different. Um, it's good to see it from a different side of the fence. It's definitely fast racing, um, still gives you goosebumps watching, so no, it's good. And you're gonna be running these two cars for the next, uh, I think, three weeks? Yeah, yeah, we'll house them and help them out and yeah, do what we can do and these guys help us out when we go overseas and we just repay the favour. Beauty. Hey William, I'll let you get back to working on the 14 car, we'll throw back, we'll see if we can grab some more yeah. updates. Yeah, we've got Jacob Buckrell finished fourth in that first heat, ready for an interview down in the pits. Yeah, that we do Barry, and uh, Jacob Buckrell mate, firstly congratulations making these finals, you and my dark horse we were talking last night about it before qualifying and you made it through, um, but started sixth in this one, it's always never a good grid to start on that outside front at Rotorua, but you made it up to fourth. Yeah, I was running third there, uh, me and Ethan Rees were battling, had a real good battle. So I kind of let him go and then followed him behind it, you know, try some lines because it's only my second second night here in a super stock. So I just kind of, yeah, trying some stuff and then, yeah, got a good start, good getaway and, um, yeah, I'm pretty wrapped with the race actually. I didn't think I was going to go forward. <laughs> uh, is it fair to say last night, I know obviously you, wanted, you were elbows up and wanting to qualify, but you're a little bit conservative. Whereas tonight it's full bore, you've, you've got a taste of the track, it's full going now, you, especially after that fourth place. Yeah, uh, we came into the weekend just maybe, river charge was kind of our goal, and then, yeah, we started the last race last night, seventh on points, starting at our back grid 19. Uh, we'll see whatever happens, boys, just, we've had a good night so far, a good weekend, and then had a mid start, ended up getting second on track, relegated to fourth for passing on the pole line and second on points in our group, so yeah, it was absolutely stoked. And now, uh, just quickly, while we've got here, what's the boys doing here? Looks like a bit of a maybe a gear set change in a, a new right rear. Uh, I think they just filled up the car, new right rear, which looks beautiful. Um, yeah, have a look under the bonnet, grease it up a little bit, and just see what see what's going on. You don't even know, mate. You've been buggered off, and these guys have been doing all the work. You've only just got back. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, <laughs> nah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> No, nah, good man. Hey, all the best for the next ones. Thanks, we'll quickly just cross over here to the uh, 7R car because it's not quite often that we see the bodies off as well. So I know you're busy, Mick, but what's going on, mate? What's happening here? We don't normally see the body oh, off. Yeah, mate, it looks serious, but it's not that serious. It's just um, making suspension changes and four bar changes, and it's a lot easier to take the body off, and that means taking the wing off. So, yeah, it's not a major. Sweet. Go well then. Keep it at it. We won't, we won't interrupt you. See if we can just cruise down the line here as well, see what's going on. 
good looking. Obviously, uh, we saw the 87G. That was just a right front flat, so I think that's pretty self-explanatory on that one. Yeah, it's a good looking uh, lineup of race cars. We know about that. Yeah, to be fair, there's just a lot of bonnets off, a lot of, uh, I guess you'd say, nut and bolt checks and cooling cars down, fluid checks. In some case of these unpainted chassis, they're just going over with the old CRC and the oil. There's actually not a lot of drivers around as we look through. So uh, don't, actually, don't, don't tell me they're off having team talks already. Well, I tell you what, I see a bit of action <laughs> happening at the 515 car. So we're going to shoot through the dummy grid here. So Frankie Wayman Jr. Um, had a, came on really strong at the end of the race, but uh, only picked up a couple of positions uh, throughout it. Horses leaning on the uh, air cleaner, looking, looking all serious. See if we can grab uh, a word with horse quickly, mate. What's uh, what's going on here? You having a having a chill out time? Yeah, we're just relaxing, mate. Just helping Frankie do what he does, I guess. Sweet. What's going on? What's wrong? Oh, I don't think wrong. We're just checking everything out and just doing a bit of tire sticker, changing that for him, and we're just doing whatever he asks us to do. Try and keep this orange thing going. Yeah, beauty. Hey, go well. We'll throw back to you boys upstairs. We're going to go green. All right. Thank you very much. Got those uh, cars apart now. Finally. They were certainly well locked together um, as they towed those two cars off the track. Had two tractors pulling in different directions. Right, here we go. We are only on the second lap for our race leaders. Philip Gargan, 27. Down on the main straight is your race leader. With Logan Nicholson maybe hot on his tail. And then Mike McCarthy in the triple eight. They are your top three. Onto the pit straight they come. Down into turn one, the local. Bunt Skagen wide, looks up the inside, Logan Nicholson maybe. Onside Auto Electrical, Tier 3 Championship. Oh, sliding off onto the infield is Zach Lenny in the 47. And Adam Groom is crawling the concrete wall around through turn 3 and 4. Uh, sorry, turn 1 and 2. Here's Paul Vasey up the inside of Kalen Mooney doing battle there. There's your leaders. Well, that was second spot. The white car, the number five, is your race leader now. Zach Glennie, he's a lap down, so just sitting in front of Mike McCarthy. There's your leader, number five, off onto the pit straight now. Logan Nicholson, maybe. Groomy still sitting in the concrete wall. That's Adam Groom in the number nine. So five has got the lead. He's pulling away nicely at the moment. A few back markers in the game here as well. Philip Gargan, 27 running in second, then 888. Well, it looks as though it's another na uh, name change. We've got Caleb Ashton uh, driving the 351 tonight. Tries to make his way up the inside of Mike McCarthy. Put the bumper and tried to force the triple eight wide. He's going to make it stick there as well, down into the main straight. Got Caelan Mooney all over his back bumper though. Race leader still doing well down the pit straight. Clocks up eight laps. Well, oh, the 351 just gets it a little bit loose. <laughs> With a touch from uh, the 422 of Dylan Ashton. Elias Dykstra battling for seventh place. White flag is out. Chicken flag is out. Oh, maybe I. Okay, apologies. This is a 10 lapper for tier three. So our Tier 3 Championship thanks to Onsite Auto Electrical. They are the specialists for all your race car auto electrical needs. They'll come to you anywhere in the Waikato Bay of Plenty. With a complete range of auto electrical services. Logan Nicholson maybe picks up the win in 5R. 26V Kalen Mooney home in second. Then early leader Philip Gargan. 
in the 27. 5M is Elias Dykstra in fourth place. 10R Alan McRobbie in fifth. We then went Caleb Ashton, Blake Adamson, Gareth James, Kyle Ashton and Matthew Pickard to round out your top 10. Fastest lap of the race, Elias Dykstra with a 17.1. And there we go, there's those times again, Barry, just down back into the 17s mm. again compared with that top tier. Yeah, it's just going to be interesting as the night carries on. That, that top tier, obviously, the level of intensity grows. But you also get people being a little bit more careful if they're up on points too. They may not be foot hard to the floor the whole way. Yeah. You have to drive with your brain as well as your foot sometimes. So, but yeah, that top tier, I think said he was about 8 or 10 or something in the 16s. Yes. So, uh, certainly showed the pace. Uh, wholesale tyres in Fakatane. Need truck tyres? Wholesale tyres. Good tyres, better prices, great people. It's action for the whole family. With 23 tracks around New Zealand, there is no better way to spend your weekends than at a Speedway New Zealand track. There's something for the whole family. Spree cars, saloons, stock cars, side cars, midgets, and much, much more. Pack up the family and make a trip to adrenaline-filled, action-packed bashes and crashes that only Speedway can deliver. Visit www.speedway.co.nz to find out the track nearest to you. Speedway. It's our summer thing. I'm here with Cheryl Walker. Cheryl Walker, there's a, uh, a lot of work going on in your car and you're not out in this race. What, can you tell us what's happening? Freight train going into three and just straight into the corner and once I got out, I tried to move and I'm moving all right but I end up back on the wall again so I instantly knew that my steering was gone again. Yeah, yeah. And you, you've come a long way from Cromwell. Now tell us, if you can manage to get out in, this, in the last race, you're going to do it? Have a bit of fun? Yeah, mate. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll help some help some ladies out, that's for sure. Um, it's got to be done. But yeah, I'll, I'll try and make it fun for, for the cus well, for the guys and yeah, yeah. and make sure the ladies have a good time. Listen, I love your I love your attitude. I mean you're here, you're having fun, you're a long way from home, so well done Cheryl. Yeah. Unfortunately you didn't make it, but I'm sure you've had a great time anyway. I loved it. I love coming to Rotorua and to be with the girls and to do everything with the girls, it's it's fantastic and all the yarns you get and it's just just phenomenal with the girls. It's yeah, love them. Listen, they're on track now. I'll let you go and watch them, eh? Well done. Cheers, mate. Back to you guys upstairs. Awesome. Thank you very much. So here they come onto the track. Sharky's Engineering, Aotearoa Ladies Crown. Uh, we might have a World 240s update at the moment. Our head referee tonight, Rod McNaughton, is uh, having a quick chat with Barry Brown. So we'll get that update for you ASAP. As the ladies come out, this is race five of six for them. Thanks to Sharky's Engineering who are our major sponsors of this event. And as we saw in that last heat, they're not afraid to mix it up. Defending champ Gemma Holloway looking to go back to back, and uh, which I think I'm just going to have a bit of a recap here. Um, no one has actually gone back to back. Rebecca Barr has won it twice. She won it the first year back in 2018, then she won it in 2021. Uh, so she's never gone, nobody has gone back to back. Can Gemma Holloway do it tonight? Miller Theobald was second in last year's event and she, oh, wow, she was so close. Um, in fact, she has been credited with the finish in that fourth heat. But we're set to go. 12 laps. And it's Alex Jones. She's done plenty of laps here at Paradise Valley, so she will look to lead them away. And hopefully take the win. Got a couple in the concrete wall down in turn two. No. Lexi Hendricks parked the wrong way down, pointing the wrong way down the straight as well. Oh, big cruncher down into turn number three. Whoa, she went in real hard. Uh, who was that? I think that was, we're gonna go red. 
She's pulled off too, so that's the the second DNF tonight uh, for the 22 of Alan Bisley out of Kiki, just over the hill in the Waikato. Uh, it is so it's a stoppage for the 112 of Hannah Pearson, just 17 years old, fresh out of the mini stocks. And uh, in fact, this is the car there. Uh, Rebecca Barr, well it is Rebecca Barr's car. Uh, Rebecca Barr out there in the super stock this weekend. The last few years she's driven both. She's driven the stock car in this ladies stock car championship and driven her super stock tonight though just, uh, well this weekend just focused on the on the super stock side of things. Yeah, 12 races over, over a weekend. It's uh, pretty harsh. Okay, so, so here we go. So we talked about the ear pieces. So uh, Hannah Pearson came off the track, so she must have been thinking that if there's a red light, if you're the cause of the stoppage, you have to come off. She's obviously been told to go back. The stoppage was for Lexi Hendricks. Mm. So Lexi Hendricks has come off. Hannah uh, Pearson had her car fired up and was the referees felt was in a safe position. Uh, so she's been able to uh, continue. We did. I think we saw that earlier on in the race. I did wonder who the stoppage might have been for and who might have been able to continue. As Ashley Herbert does a full 360 down in <laughs> turn four. A lot of style. So race leader still the 28th down the main straight and down into turn four. Looking at some of this action here in turn one and two. And it's the 914 who's uh, leading that group. That is Hazel Brown. Uh, part of that uh, big crew of cars here out of Paradise Valley in the stock cars. So Pearson again involved here, right on her tail. The 681 of Kirsten Kaiser, currently second on points. But I tell you what, Gemma Holloway is just on fire this weekend. Uh, she's moved up into fourth place in this one in the 14B. Started on grid 18 yeah. and up to fourth already. And she's been doing it carefully. You can see her picking her moments of cars tangling in front of her. Yeah. She's backing off and waiting for the gaps, but she's just so quick. Well, of course, uh, a couple of weeks ago, just before New Year's. So this is all the ladies out here. Um, some of them are girlfriends, sisters who have got in the cars, but many of them are regular racers now, racing week in, week out. And between Christmas and New Year, the New Zealand Stock Car Championships was held in Auckland uh, at Waikaraka Park. And from that massive field there, same as what we've got here at the World 240s, you know, 130-odd uh, stock cars. Gemma Holloway was the only female who qualified for the finals at that New Zealand Championship and amongst all the boys. Uh, so we know how good she is and she's showing it here again tonight. Kirsten Kaiser has also moved up into fifth place. So there's Gemma Holloway, round into turn three for the 14. Yeah, again, you can just see that barrier. She's not pushing. She knows she's got the, a bit of an advantage over a lot of these other cars. So she's just picking her moments to make the passes, not doing anything silly. Well, she went into this with a 10-point lead. Uh, on her way, working through to the front of the field from the back. She's passed Kirsten Kaiser on the way through, her closest opponent. So she knows she's uh, if she finishes where she is now, she's going to extend that 10-point lead even further. There's the 912 and 914 running together. Hazel Brown and Caitlin Connolly. So after this, it'll be the final heat for the girls, and that's when it's going to get really interesting. They'll know by then that it's going to really come down to half a dozen drivers, which is normally the case, and then they'll start working out, well, I don't want her to win, <laughs> or I don't want her to win. Lights are red. Oh, we've had somebody uh, in the on the infield who's, who's collided with the on the infield so while they're sorting that I think we're going to head down to the pits 
Uh, and he's a former champion. He's done most stuff. Let's get his thoughts on the opening heat tonight. Bianca is with Peter Rees. I sure am, Peter. It's not nice to see this going on on the track, but listen, we don't want to uh, focus on that. Tell us about your first heat there. Oh, that was quick. Yeah, it's probably a bit quick for us. Um, they accidentally cut the race three laps short, yeah. and we uh, we kind of set for 15 laps, so the cars were just coming on. Oh, yeah, I was in a bit of traffic on grid 12. Um, I, I went forward a couple of spots, but not not what you really need in this. What are they going to do if they are three laps short? That's a lot of controversy. What do you think they're going to do? They can't rerun it, can they? No, nah, rule is just carry on. It's race to the flag. Yeah. It, 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 it doesn't worry us. I mean, next one will be 15 laps. Next one will definitely 15. Yeah. Well, that's what it's advertised, so yeah. yeah. It's just uh, one of those things. Pete, we want to cut away from um, that right now. I I want to congratulate you on having so many Rees chassis out in this final. That must be a huge thrill for you. I can see the smile when I talk about it. I mean, this is this is your um, th this is what we live for. This is you. This is great. This is like your legacy. Well, accidentally, I started building cars 15, 16 years ago, and it's grown to 300 plus cars. So you know, there's a lot of cars here, and uh, it's borderline embarrassing, but. <laughs> But it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I enjoy it. You're such a hum humble gentleman, Pete. We love talking to you. Um, any last words you want to say? Oh, i got to wish Michaela a happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pete, she says. <laughs> oh, no, it's just uh, let's just uh, hope the night goes well and we can celebrate later on. Yeah. Still a lot of racing to go away. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and there wasn't a lot of damage in that first one. So the teams are ready, rearing to go, and we're just keeping an eye on what the track's going to do, and we'll make some adjustments maybe for the second one. Yep. And of course, look, the, everyone's down here watching it, so obviously no damage, no worries with your cars whatsoever. No, I don't think there was a lot of damage in that one. I saw a spring on the back straight, uh, oh. so somebody lost the spring. But look, a couple of DNS, but it was quite a clean race, um, fast race, short race, but hey, uh, we'll see what happens in the next one. Hey, I tell you what, this happened last year. We had a great first race. We had an epic second race. The third race, all hell broke loose. Do you think that's going to happen again? Oh, who knows? Eh? It's, it's, it depends on the mood of the guys, the people that qualify and all that. You know, if you've got mates here or, 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 or you've got, you got um, you know, bumper mates, you, you just never know. Uh, teams is two weeks away, so some people will think of that. Um, there's a great mixture of track codes there. Yeah. So there could be a bit of banter. Um, I, I'm, you know, everyone's going to keep it as safe as possible. Last year, it just kind of went, exploded, yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, and you can't plan that. It could be a tame, a final. It could be, it could be a, a hell of a final. It could be a hell of a second race. Yeah. You just got to wait and watch. Now, I know you're not one to hold a grudge at all. Like I say, you're the gentleman of the sport. But do you feel there's any unfinished business from last year's heat? Oh, no, nah, we keep it on the track. I mean, last year was finished on track, and hey, we all shook hands, we had a beer. It was, it was really, actually, real good last year, and entertaining, as, as you saw. So, if that happens again, let's uh, hope everyone comes out of it and enjoys it, and we celebrate together. Awesome, Pete. L listen, lovely to talk to you. Reeds are going out. You just sit back and watch, relax, enjoy. Cheers. There we go, Peter Reeds, glides to green. And the white flag is out. Gemma Holloway, she was just about to cross the line for the white flag uh, when we went red. Down the back straight she goes. She's got a couple of bat markers behind her. Oh no, sorry, it's Alex Jones. <laughs> That's right. We've been so busy watching Gemma Holloway come through the field. Now we've gone red again. Uh, apologies, Alex Jones. Uh, she was ahead by half a lap. Uh, she just kind of took off from the start. Yeah, we're so busy watching Gemma Holloway come through the field. Uh, so we've had a couple cross the line and must have been on the restart. The 116 of Cheyenne Sutton has not refired. So we'll get her removed off the track. We've got the results from Heat 1. So if you're noting them down, pen and paper at the ready. Open up your programs. Page 23. We will run through points, uh, place and points for the first heat of the TWS World 240s immediately following this race. Uh, we've also got a raffle winner. If you bought a raffle for the TV up at the Fan Van, fundraiser for the Rotorua Rascals, we'll announce that as well. So we'll get into those after this. Here we go. Greens. And 
they come on home. Now we're going to read again. Another one down by the pit gate that hasn't moved this time. Ashley Herbert, is it? So I tell you what, the, <laughs> there's not many people nowadays who are used to driving with an accelerator or a brake and a clutch. No. Most cars nowadays don't. Um, and even if you are used to driving a regular road car with a clutch, it's nothing like what you end up with in these stock cars. Pushing that clutch pedal down is just so, so hard. And getting your movements right uh, when you're dropping the clutch at a restart is hard enough for drivers who do it week in, week out. They're going to call the race. They're going to call the race. They're saying everybody's home and everybody's finished. So lights are uh, orange and uh, we'll clear off. Right. Uh, we get Barry set for the grids, uh, but just very quickly, uh, congratulations to Alex Jones who takes the win, Gemma Holloway in second, Ashley Herbert crossed in third, uh, we'll check out some highlights there for you on the super screen. You're out of your race suit, the car's on the trailer. I know it's bad news, I'll let you tell us what's going on. Um, I recently just come back from a concussion. I haven't raced my car in about two months. Um, so this is my first meeting back. It was always risky me doing it, but I just got put into the wall backwards basically, and yeah, nah, that's, that's me done. But my health comes first, so yeah. Miller, let's be a little bit clear about this. Is that you done for the night or possibly a bit longer? Um, it's probably going to be me done for the season just because it's head injury basically and I don't want to risk it, I'm only young so. You're 20 years old, your health has to come first otherwise what are we going to do if you can't go racing again? Oh, not a lot eh? Uh, Miller, we got a message uh, the other day, you've actually got a lot of family watching you back in Australia, do you want to say hi to them? Yeah I do, um, hello to my little nephews Trey and Flo and my sister Stevie and her partner Trent. Listen, you spend the rest of the season being a 20 year old. I promise we'll catch up this time next year, alright? Yes, yeah, sweet as. Thank you. Alright, take care, Miller. Consolation Superstocks tonight. Bad night at the office uh, for these guys last night. So tonight they get to come out and have a blast and maybe feel a bit better about the weekend with uh, some positive results in this one. A couple have gone around already. One up in the concrete wall. Josh Kahui, I think he's got himself off there now. They reckon green race cars are unlucky, Paul. 
This yeah. is the constellations, and I think half the field's got some green in it. So, yeah, maybe it is right. Green was certainly unlucky for these guys last night. All right, so they continue. It's Gary Hunter in the 93. Who's your race leader? Down over across the start finish line into turn one. And it is Josh Carr who is uh, pulled onto the infield. Jeremy Fleming as well, 68. So the consolation races tonight, just 10 lappers for these guys. having a bit of a tussle with Ants Brown. There's your race leader, Gary Hunter, up behind those two green cars. As you say, Barry, not, not known for their good luck, although it's a green car that's winning this one. A few little puffs of smoke coming out of the uh, 93 by the looks of it. Gary Hunter, part of that winning Rotorua Rebels team as the sixth member two years ago when they won that New Zealand well, it's not officially the New Zealand Superstock Teams <laughs> Champs, but it's, it's how everybody regards it. it certainly is. Yeah. So looking up the inside of Jason Matic out of Stratford. Make the pass there. So it should be white flag next time around for the 93 of Gary Hunter. Matt Jarvis in the 79, he's got a flat inside front, that's okay. Can still circulate on the flat inside tyres, it's only the outside ones where you have to come off. So Gary Hunter takes the win from the 119V of Zach Harris. Scott McEwen is there in third. 4921G, uh, and it's Brown. Then Robbie Maybe rounds out the top five with 33R. Then it was Green and Beasley, Tony Coxhead, Robbie Morris, David Hunter, and Jason Matic rounding out the top 10 uh, heat winner. Gary Hunter with the fastest lap. Uh, we've just had a change in the race program. Nothing major. We are just shuffling up uh, the World 240s Heat 2 by one race uh, so in fact so we've got the second tier out now we were supposed to go second tier third tier world 240s we are now about to have the second tier then the world 240s will be on track after that teams racing has been a part of uh, tonight as well and this is going to be interesting we've got <laughs> one of our commentators interviewing one of our other commentators <laughs> uh, down to you Bianca I'm with the happiest man at uh, Rotorua Speedway Stu Russell now you're taking on place of team manager right now so um, I'm going to put you on a time limit because I'm getting out there you know it um, but tell me how the boys went obviously everything went to plan yeah it did to an extent um, we put in a basic plan before the start of the race and, and gave a, guys, a few of the guys some jobs to do and they seem to uh, execute them pretty well and I don't think Kyle got touched all race which is um, obviously a positive for him. And so what's the plan for the next race, same time? Uh, we're actually down one car, um, Jaden Hall's out for this one so um, he got a fair bit of damage with um, when he got taken out, when he got park shot, um, it's all part of teams racing. Unfortunately, got uh, unfortunately, yeah, it just bent the chassis a bit too much. So he's out. 
Um, so we've only got the four cars left, but that's fine. We'll uh, re-execute another plan and yeah, we'll just go forward from there. Look, they're going out on the track now. You and I have to go get rid of this hat, these hats. It's a bit ridiculous. Wish you all the luck. I'll see if I can go talk to your uh, counterpart pr uh, soon. But go have a go have a go pick a pew, Stu. Yeah, mate. The boys are pumped for the next one. We've hyped them up. Um, we've sent Burmy out now. I think Burmy's going out in the superstock to uh, clock some more laps, and uh, then we'll uh, we'll probably soak him in the uh, in the bath over there and get him chilled out for another team's race. Hey, and just a quick update as well on Alicia Gordon. Uh, she is still in the ambulance. I hear that she's okay, she's laughing, she's okay, but they're just doing her final checks. Maybe we'll go talk to her later on, but she is okay. All right, hey, thanks for the update, uh, team. And on track, uh, it is the Hubbard Contracting Limited Superstocks in Paradise. Uh, so this is, the, well, these are the guys who, and girl, Rebecca Barr, uh, but the guys who raced in the Reaper Charge, so well, it's been a long time, they were out there at 6.30, it is now 9 o'clock. Uh, it's a long time between races for these guys, uh, but they now have, this is their first race of three. Oh, could be a long night. Um, the winner of this championship, automatic qualification to next year's World 240s. So plenty on the line. Thomas Stanaway, we saw him coming up past there. Trent James, Damien Orr. Brett Loveridge taking their spots on that outside row for Superstocks in Paradise. Hope you're enjoying the night, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here at Paradise Valley Speedway. If you're about to go and grab your hot food, don't forget, we've had that slight change in the program. The World 240 is up next for Heat 2. And to those watching the stream around the world, welcome on in to TWS Paradise Valley Speedway. There's your lineup. One of these drivers will be in next year's World 240s. Who will it be? Plenty on the line. Thanks to Hubbard, contracting three 12 lap heats. It was Thomas Stanaway who jumped away to the lead. Trent James went uh, quick through there as well. Brett Nichols gets spun. That drops the Nelsonian right down to the back of the field. Plenty of push and shove. Hemi out wide in the 591. Gets plenty of drive off turn four. Few bouncing off the concrete wall there's oh, another former champion Bryce Steiner regains control of the top gear chassis prior to turn two. Cody McKee trying to barge up the inside of Hemi. Makes it happen, pushes the 591 wide. Out front though, Thomas Stanaway. This is the 87B we know. Ben Milne. Sits there and no, he's dropped back to third with Trent James up into second. Damien or the local up there in fourth. It's Thomas Stanaway. No, Mark Costello clocks the quickest lap. Rebecca Barr's gone around in the turn. Lights will go red. We've got a lot of is that just, hard to tell if that's smoke or steam. I think it's just steam. That is the oh yeah, it is the six W. So here we go. Bang on the way. So the race leader down the main straight. Into turn three. There's a big battle pack going on here for the spots. Kind of fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. See the bumpers going in. There's Loveridge pushing hard in the 16, trying to get up the inside. into the concrete coming off turn four. 
Still Thomas Stanaway. Six laps gone. It is a 12 lapper. So Thomas Stanaway, the first of the drivers here, getting down into the 16s as the pace picks up. 87B is your race leader. From Trent James, Damien Orr, Ben Milne, Dylan Marshall. Sparks coming from the Red Walker of Wayne Hemi. There's your leader, Thomas Stanaway, 87B. Another of these drivers following in the footsteps of the family. But made a huge name for himself over the years, a former 2NZ. Up alongside the former Nelson club mate there. Brett Nichols, oh, one goes around both those two cars, Brett Nichols. And Thomas Stanaway needed to take action to avoid it. White flag drops, one to go. And Thomas Stanaway will take the victory. The 87B takes the win, and he'll be happy with that. Ahead of Trent James, two and a half seconds back, then 81R, Damien Orr, 57V, Dylan Marshall. Ben Milne, 76B in fifth place. Then the 591 of Wayne Hemi, 172, Daniel Burmester. Cody McKee, 72A in eighth, then Brett Loveridge and Zane Dijkstra to wrap up your top 10 and Wayne Hemi the fastest lap of the race is 16.8 so we had Wayne Hemi, Damien Orr and Thomas Stanaway into the 16s and again those are names that you wouldn't go wouldn't be really surprised at being in the uh, finals those three. No that's right Paul and yeah, we can just warn you with this one here yeah, our electronics have let us down on this group unfortunately so what we'll do is uh, We'll get the official results after heat two. We'll look at the top six that we normally look at and uh, then it'll be a case of the old ballpoint pen and paper again. And um, yeah, we'll try and work out who, who the winner was as quickly as we can after uh, heat three because yeah, they've uh, got the huge advantage next year of being the pre-qualifier for the World 240s finals. Anderton Decorators are a long established Canterbury company covering the whole of the South Island who love to support their local community. If you require expert advice from design to application then Shane has an expert team to ensure your next project is hassle free with a professional finish. Floor to ceilings, walls to roof, inside outside, commercial or residential. Let our team take the hassle out of your decorating. Give us a call now on 027 Painting. That's 027 724 6846. Anderton Decorators, we have you covered. 
We Reuse IT should be your first port of call when you need help with your PC, laptop or tablet. Whether it be a fault with your machine or a warrant of fitness checkover, the team understand just how important it is to lessen your downtime. And if your old machine cannot be repaired, We Reuse IT have huge stock of refurbished or new PCs, Macs, tablets, printers, screens and much, much more. Visit them in store today at 135 Cuba Street, Palmerston North or head to their website at www.wereuseit.co.nz well, let's take a look at how they're lining up here. Keegan Levine sits on pole. Nas Tesla out of Holland on uh, the outside of the front row. Then it is Ethan Levine and Brad McGee sitting on row number two. Jordan Deere in the 581 in grid five. Your current New Zealand champion, Asher Rees off grid six. Richard Gaskin is there on grid seven. Frankie Wayman, JJ. Uh, is next on grid eight. Hayden Hart and Jack Myers side by side on row number five. Uh, then it is Jaden Ward on grid 11 and Mark Dunn, the Ripercharge winner last night uh, on grid 12. Josh Prentice and Yali Tesla on the next row. Then heat one winner, there he is, Todd Hemingway sits on grid 15, again alongside Quinn Ryan who starts on grid 16. One, two, seven on grid one, seven. Ethan Rees, uh, Clark is there. Uh, on grid 18, then Rumney and Buckrell round out the top 20 grids. Alex Hill up from Nelson alongside Dale Stewart on 21 and 22. Charlie Sorter, 1GB with the big gold wing, grid 23 alongside Frankie Wayman Jr. So the two palms side by side. Ken Hunter on grid 25. Peter Rees on 26. And it is Brody James right off the bat on grid number 27. There is your lineup. They are all back on track like golf in a major championship across four days they call day three moving day when it comes to a three heat super stock championship this is the one that can make or break it for you you need to back up what you did in the first heat to put yourself in a position to be the new world champion heat well, two your big mover in heat one was Asher Reese. He's off grid six, so he'd be looking to seal this with the win to uh, be sitting pretty going into the last. Paul Hickey and Barry Brown in the commentary box calling heat two of the World 240s. 27 cars on track. The officials are happy. 15 laps. Pretty sure of it. Heat number two, World 240s, and we are go. Here's turn one, here we go, oh we got the crunches this time! Oh, almost up and over, but they've all come out of it okay, look at that! We are racing through, couldn't even tell who it was, Two. we've gone red! We've gone red! Somebody's wing is on the ground, Asher Rees got turned around after the red flag, so this will be an inter after the red lights, this will be an interesting one. Just trying to pick who it is. Uh, for, okay, also one of the uh, one of the Dutchies, uh, 418, uh, the wing has come off, uh, Niles Tesla, here we go, so we've got the replay, look at this, yeah, just getting charged up there into the concrete wall, sitting quite high, and then just got ripped off by uh, the Yasha Rees wing, uh, as he was making his way through, that's Brad McGee sitting the wrong way down the track, look again though, look at all those cars up over the pole line, oh, Jacob Buckrell passing a lot there, that's where he did it last night too, um, they are running hard and fast. There was that big push. We're happy now, though. Race leader is Keegan Levine. They didn't let Af uh, they didn't let Ashery turn around. Big bunts going in. Look down there into the turn. Big hold up through there. Trying to see who that is that's gone around and backwards, but they are getting themselves sorted again. That is Jacob Buckrell. Uh, who's been left uh, high and dry back there. And heat one winner, Todd Hemingway, was one of the ones who got caught up and took him a long time to get restarted. Uh, so that's kind of thrown his spanner in the works now for him. Out front it is for, oh, big wall ride, Jaden Ward. That was Charlie Sorter, I think, who just dove him into the concrete wall down in turn three and four. And a wild ride for Jaden Ward. So race leader, number 5W, Keegan Levine, heads down into turn number 1 and 2. 
He's got a bit of a buffer from Jordan Deere, then Jack Myers and Josh Prentice. Ethan Levine starting to make some moves up through the field as well. Round goes Sorter, gets caught up there, it was Rumney. Oh no, is that Rees? It is Ethan Rees got turned around by Michael Rumney. So Ethan Rees, uh, sorry, Asher Rees is running down in 18th place. On oh, Rumney again, puts the bumper in, but he's gonna get himself caught out here. Turns around another car. Sword has gone around, down in turn three and four. So this is a good little battle here. This is the battle for third and fourth place. The 88 of Jack Myers and 46, Ethan Levine. Here's Rees back on the charge, but he's a lap down. Keegan Levine won't know that, and he'll be, he'll be thinking, oh boy, he's on the tail. Rees is through and puts himself back on the lead lap as he continues to battle here as they miss a car that's caught up down in the concrete wall. Is that Josh Prentice who has come to a stop? Oh, and he gets collected by Richard Gaskin. Coming off turn four, that was a big hit. But it's still the 5W who is your race leader. Lights will go red here. Josh Prentice had sat down in the concrete wall for a couple of, oh, not quite a couple of laps, but he'd been sitting there for a little while, and Richard Gaskin ended up being the driver that did collect him. All right, so we'll let the crews do their thing there. Let's analyse it. There is your race leader, Keegan Levine, uh, in 5W, uh, is the race leader. So outside him, the 1NZ of Asher Rees, the biggest mover in Heat 1, but he is currently sitting down in 19th place and 15th place overall on points. Yeah. Ethan, as it sits at the moment, Ethan Rees is leading on points. Frankie Wayman Jr. is in second, and Quinn Ryan sits in third on points. If it was to finish right now, we're nine laps in. Uh, they're all on their ninth lap. Keegan Levine, race leader, has just started lap 10. Saw Ash went back as far as 23rd. Actually made up some ground again, then got turned around again coming off turn two. So, uh, yeah, this was his grid six star. This was the win. This was the, this was the one here to win. That was the win yep. heat. Okay, here we go. Silver 5W. Down into turn one and two. And like we say, Asher Rees is a lap down. Oh, Keegan just gets it a little bit wrong coming off the turn. Bounces it off the concrete wall. Ethan Levine looked to make the pass on Jack Myers. So we look for Frankie Wayman Jr. He sits in sixth place, puts the bumper into Ash, uh, Ethan Rees, looks to make the pass up the inside. In fact, so there we go. These two are battling for the championship right now. Ethan Rees and Frankie Wayman Jr. They are the top two on points. Wayman moves up the inside and makes the pass. Michael Rumney at the other end of the track gets sent to the wall. So Rumney rides the concrete hard and fast. So we try and find Keegan Levine on the track. Down the main straight into turn number four. Oh, Wayman, big hit on Ethan Levine. And that punts Levine and Jack Myers both out of the road. Frankie Wayman Jr. is on the mission. Myers looks to come back at him and he gets it all wrong in the 88. He's going to lose three or four spots himself. Frankie Wayman Jr. is up to third. He's trying to, we'll find out where he started in this one. Michael, 24. Michael Rumney takes Jack Myers to the wall. White flag is out, one to go. It is still Keegan Levine from Jordan Deere, then Frankie Wayman Jr. Into the final turn. That should be how they finish as they come across the line. Wow. Charlie Sorter brings the big wing home in 10th place. I tell you what, the person to watch in race three, as we take a breath, will be 1NZ. Because as it sits at the moment, Ethan Rees is leading on points, Frankie Wayman Jr. is second, and Peter Rees is third. 
So Ethan uh, Asher is going to be the one to watch. He is uh, down in 12th place. 12. Okay, let's take a look at that race first. Uh, 5W, Keegan Levine takes the win from the 581P of Jordan Deere. Frankie Wayman Jr., 515, three-time winner of the 240s. Home in third, Ethan Rees, 127G in fourth. Peter Rees, 10G in fifth place. Then Ethan Levine uh, behind his brother. Uh, so we've got fathers and sons and brothers in the top six. Jack Myers in seventh place, 88P. 87G, Brody James. Dale Stewart doing it for the locals in ninth place. And then the 1GB of Charlie Sorter uh, home in the top 10. It was then Mark Dunn. Good finish for Yali Tesla. Ended up home in 12th. Quinn Ryan, Jaden Warden, Alex Hill to round out the 15. Asher Rees, as we said, down in 16th. Then Frankie Wayman, Junior Junior in 17th. Jacob Buckrell, good run in the opening heat along with Todd Hemingway. They are down in 18th and 19th. Mick Rumney, Michael Rumney in 20th. Then Brad McGee, Richard Gaskin, Josh Prentice, Hayden Hart and Kenneth Hunter with those two non-finishers, uh, Niels Tesla and James Clark rounding out the 26, uh, 20, 20, so I'm so used to saying rounding out the 26, rounding out our 27 finalists uh, in Heat 2. Oh wow, that started to erupt big time and I think it is shaping up to be a biggie. And we are back with the Onside Auto Electrical third tier. This is heat two of four for the third tier tonight. And these guys are doing 10 laps. So it's Zach Glenny who will lead away in this one. Ran it a wee bit wide though. So Hayden Chapman's managed to get himself up to the front. Couple tangled up down in the turn. Manages to back off. That was Blake Adamson caught up over there. Around goes Brett Kelly. Involved in that big tangle earlier on that took us quite a while to get sorted out. Oh, heat one winner. Just getting a little bit wrong that time. Oh, we got somebody right out of control. Dylan Ashton on the infield. No, he's okay. Oh, look at this, he's returning to the track. He was well out of control. The rules are, if you leave the track on one straight or one corner, that is where you need to return to. Uh, so that's where he went racing back to. But he's got some issues, so he has ended up retiring to the infield. So 247A, Hayden Chapman, your race leader, down through turn three and four. Then it's a back marker, then it's Zach Glenny. So we see Zach Glenny, there's Chapman just disappearing down the bottom of our screen. Back marker, then Zach Glenny. It's 
sorry, just a little bit confused here. We were just uh, getting some incorrect stuff through. We will sort that one out. It looks as though it's the 247 is your race leader, Hayden Chapman. Uh, then behind him now is Alan McRobbie, who has moved up into second place. Apologies for that. There they go. Then Kaylin Mooney sits in third of the orange chassis. Then Zach Lenny in fourth. So there's your battle. Thanks to Auto Onside Auto Electrical. Alan McRobbie, captain of the Rotorua Rebels Super Stock team. Couple in the concrete wall down in the turn. Two laps to go. Heat two of four. So all these drives, a little bit of a different format. There won't be a big last heat battle as such in this one. Because some of the drivers won't even be out there in the last one. They race three out of the four heats, so some of them may do one, two, three. Others may do two, three, four. One, three, four. So the chicken flag falls for Hayden Chapman. So, Hayden Chapman takes that win. And followed by Alan McRobbie, who I think will be our points leader, along with Kaylin Mooney in third place, those two sharing the top points uh, for this championship at the moment. Zach Glennie in fourth place. Scott Tennant getting the hang of the 19, and home in fifth with Adam Joblin and Chad Ace. Then Luke Irvine, Sam Hughes, and Bryce Marks as we have a bit of a sh rain shower here at Paradise Valley Speedway. Not what we want, Dick. going to keep going while we've uh, got this rain delay and uh, Paul and Barry feel free to jump in any time if you've got some updates with this meeting but I thought while we're here we might as well carry on talking to some of our competitors. Well firstly Stu just give us an update is, is it actually raining no, out there at the spinning. moment? Hey I'll grab Keegan Levine while he's here. Keegan um, I don't even know sorry mate I don't know if Bianca already talked to you but uh, so she did she did she? No 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 you're, oh. it's all you bro. Oh it's all me sweet we're on to it right there impromptu. Hey good uh, good win in that second heat though bro. Yeah I needed it off the front row so um, I had a had a pretty average first race, I think I ended up 18th or 19th, so who knows where I'm sitting, but um, yeah, we'll just go from there. Do you want me to tell you where you're sitting? Uh, 38 points, mate, with uh, probably about fifth place, yeah, a little bit off the off the pace, but I'm sure you'll sort, sort something out. Yeah, I got stuck behind a car in the first one and ended up about half a lap down um, in the first corner, so clawed my way back, but uh, obviously just not enough, but who knows? You got a bumper, you don't get stuck behind cars. Yeah, exactly, who knows, there might be some action in the next one. So why'd you get stuck if you got a bumper? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Dutchies, mate. <laughs> oh, you can't go soft on them, man. Hey, they, they went soft on you when you were over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, bring on Heat 3, mate. 
Right. Uh, another thing too, obviously you've got uh, your brother that's uh, qualified with you. It's the first time that both Hub Park boys have qualified together. That's pretty special. I know that you've done the finals yourself when you won it. Um, Ethan pre-qualified one year, but first time you've actually qualified together. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, um, yeah, I mean, anyone would be stoked to go out there and do it with the fam. So um, I think the old man was probably more excited than all of us, but uh, yeah, he loves it and um, yeah, we're just having fun. Hey, you've got any of those uh, big old bus driver stickers down there too? <laughs> I don't know, they're pretty popular at the moment. I don't think he's got any left actually. They're coming over and they're asking for them. Oh, you won't have to do another run at uh, Capital RC. <laughs> yeah, mate. <laughs> Sweet. Hey, we'll let you get back into this water. He hates it. He loves RC cars, Keegan. He's the uh, absolute man at it. Let's see if I can find a few of these drivers. Um, in particular, I want to find Frankie. Frank around, anyway? Horse, is, horse hasn't got his hearing aids on. There he is. Here's Frank having a cup of tea. Hi. You having a copper? Yeah. Too, right, yeah. If yeah. this was Lundy, he'd be sitting in his car still drinking yeah, that cup. He'd be waiting, he'd be waiting, we're all just open and praying we can get on with it, yeah. So. Yeah, because in England, you'd be just getting on with the job, yeah, wouldn't totally, you? We yeah. wouldn't be waiting. Totally different track surface, obviously. Uh, you know, the first time I came over it rain, it was like, yeah. And then obviously, you go out, you can't even stand up on it. So, yeah, yeah you know what I mean? I'd just hope we can get on with it. You've been out and had a gaze at the track? Yeah, it's just, uh, it, it'll come too if it stops raining, it just needs to stop raining, but. Can't do anything. Nobody can do anything about that. The only person that can do anything about that, Sonia, she just needs to put a roof on the place. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Hey, let's talk a bit of business, though. You're sitting in second spot on points. This isn't an unusual situation for you. And But the unusual situation is you've got a raise above you, a raise behind you, and you've got the 1NZ raise well and truly down on points. Yes, that's... Spells a little story, doesn't it? It does. So, hey, you know, they've, uh, they're, they're all in there, aren't they? I was hoping Asher was going to keep going up on points, you know what I mean, to keep him up there a little bit, but he's just dropped off a little bit. Obviously, he's just going to be out there to uh, get his dad and his brother to win, which is exactly how it should be. So, But, hey, at the end of the day, you've got dad and brother, but you've got son yeah, as well. Yeah, um, there's five of us this year. There's so, five. You've yeah. got Charlie, who's there or thereabouts, yeah, so I think he should up. probably press on. Yeah. And you've got these two guys yeah. that are just learning, learning but I'm <laughs> pretty sure they're pretty keen for some practice yeah, of uh, teams racing. Yeah, that's why we're here, you know, we're going to do the teams. They're both very willing drivers, absolutely superb drivers in their own right. So, you know, we'll just uh, see, start them in the third race and see how we get on. So let's be fair, Team GB, does it start in Heat 3? It has to. It has to, you know what I mean? I, I've won it on my own a few times. It's it's got now where you can't do that. You know what I mean? It, it, it's it, there's clubs, there's mates, there's car builders. But obviously, it, you just can't do it on your own. You know, and that and that's how it's always been in New Zealand. So obviously, the cars have got faster. You've got 26, 27 cars out there now that are all on pace. Now, tell me a little bit about these two Tesla boys because I've talked to them managed to get through it. I reckon by the time we get to Team Chance weekend I'm going to nail it. Yep. But you tell me a little bit about them because uh, it is a little bit hard right now to understand them to be fair. Okay. Yeah, there's obviously there's a family of Teslas, there's four boys and a dad, they all race. Uh, they're mad for it. You know, I built them two new shale cars last year. They raced a lot in England season before last and last year. Um, they're just both very good drivers. But you put them in anything, they'll drive it. So because they're actually racing under a Brisker license yes. the last couple of years. Yeah, they have, that's what I said, they, you know what I mean, they, they kept leaving the cars at our place, just flying over and jumping back in them and, you know, the British Championship, they were both right up there. Uh, Yelly was winning it, Tom put him away to, to take it off, you know what I mean, they were yep. actually there, not just to take part, they were there to, to, to win the bloody thing. So yeah, they're both absolute superb drivers in their own right and, you know, they, they've come here to do a job. They certainly have. Let's have a bit of a chat about your success at the moment going over over back home. European champion yeah. for the, well, how many times you've... Uh, I look at your stats and I can't keep up to be no. fair, mate, because you've won that many times. Like 14 national points yeah. series and uh, British titles, national titles, uh, hey, it was, it Euro was, titles. It was a good year. Um, the world final, I was in there, I was leading it. Halfway, car blew up in front of me, obviously mm. on Tar Seal. Went into the fence on the oil, carried Mitch, on and got Mitch fit. was right behind you. Yeah, you know, just one of them. It could have been my year easily. I'd, I'd, I'd done all the hard work, you know, and I got into the lead. Car was on fire. I was quick. But just, just, just racing. Just one of them incidents. But yeah, won the European, third in the British. You know, we had a good year, really good year. Uh, How awkward was the dinner table when? Uh, 
Carl got the European title and then he had to hand you the trophy, mate. Just uh, Carl was absolutely brilliant about it. He really was. You know, they, he never professed to win in it. He, they told him he'd won it, you know what I mean? They, they didn't realise he'd been out for a lap. You know, and obviously when it all got cleared up, you know, for, for me, Phoebe and Frankie to be first, second, third was just something that... You, you can't even dream about stuff like that, I've got to be honest, you know what I mean? It was just like, where did that come from? But it was just one of them races, everything wanted to be, it just fell right, everything was right, I just kept my nose clean, just kept going, you've got to keep going in stock car racing, you know what I mean? You, and, uh, you win some by by fluke, yeah. some you have to work very hard for. You know, I've, I've, I've had them taken off me, I've had them taken off me as much as I, I got that one given to me, so you know what I mean, it, 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 it's six and two threes. How are you enjoying this uh, Rees car? You, have you, I can't remember, I went back through, I can't remember exactly if you've driven a Rees yeah, car before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you definitely haven't driven this new no, style no, before. No, 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 no. I, think, uh, I think it was Benji Sneddon's, I think. Yeah, yeah. similar-ish thing. Yeah, no, that's, that was his. Yeah, 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 well that's his. Yeah, yeah it was. I mean, you driving a Rees Yeah, that was a few years ago, one of the older ones. I also jumped in it last night, so I've been dialing it in a little bit. Uh, the first race, she was stood still a little bit in the middle of the corner, but... Had a few alterations to it for that long. In that race, then it was just proper on it. It was good. If I work with it a bit more, I think it'll be. You know, I was past. I passed Ethan at the end. I was pulled away from Pete, so it must be doing something right. So. Well, I mean, Benji Sneddon won the World 240s in this car, and the engine won the Asher, uh, uh, New Zealand title for Asher Reed. So, the combination. <laughs> that's why you're up there. <laughs> But we always say you can pedal a wheelbarrow and win this thing. Yeah, definitely. But like I said, these days there's, there's 27 cars out there that are right on pace. You know, there's no way of being any different to anybody else nowadays. Years ago, you'd always half a dozen cars that were that were mega quick, and then the rest sort of weren't. Um, but obviously, you know, we just do what we do. Obviously, the, the last race is going to be hard now. But unless I'm kind of up there on points, I'm not going to win it anyway. So I needed to be up there. So. Yeah, <laughs> Frank, we'll let you get back to your uh, your cup of tea. It's no, probably cold now. No, you probably need a new one. But hey, positive. It's it's stop it's raining it's easy, it's and the grader. If Great Paul just out. turns around with the camera, yeah, we saw we saw it driving out you there. You just turn around yeah. there, Paul. I'm just instructing him. There's the grader. We are nearly ready to uh, start a bit of track prep. So Frank, I'll let you get back to it. Thank you. Are you busy? No, oh. no, very well. Yeah. What, are, what, are, what are you doing? Because um, your team manager. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, Your shirts are nicer than mine. Are they? Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. They are. They're embroidered. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. I need to have some words to Bruce and Buck. <laughs> hey, um, but what, what else are you doing at the track apart from just being team manager, Sam? Uh, all of everything, eh? Like, I, whatever Sonia tells me to do, I'll go and do. I run around like a headless chick, eh? And just run around, make sure the track's running right, helping Sonia. You know, she, her and Stan put a lot into the track. I've been here all week helping Stan, setting corporate tents up and everything. It's been good. Now, um, you actually are based in Hamilton though, and you, so you're driving back to Rotorua all the time? No, I'm lucky enough, I have a friend called Stephen Paddle that lets me live on his couch for a week. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing it, doing it, so... Very good, mate. Hey, um, on that note with uh, Sonia, how does she like her cup of tea, if you're doing everything else? I haven't made her a cup of tea yet, she hasn't asked me. <laughs> ah, beauty. Um, while he's here as well, Ian Parfit, my uh, co-manager with the Pumas, Mate, uh, the first race, it seemed to work. Yeah, it did seem to work for us, so hey, we'll give the second one a go and see what happens. Yeah, exactly right. It's good to uh, see Jaden Hall and the team now. Obviously, um, he performed well uh, a couple of seasons ago for the Steelers. We couldn't pick him for the Pumas at the team's invasion uh, for, for reasons, but then he stood out there. We've given him a shot here, and he seems to have gone all right in that first one. Oh, I definitely stood up. He, he, he's, a, he's a good blocker. And he's going to be well and truly in the in the mix for this group now for a while. It's definitely a good depth at Palmy these days now. Yeah, there is. You know, we've probably got the right team. I think that we put out there tonight is probably a good looking team going to Huntley. It is and is. Sam, on the uh, on the Rascals now. Obviously, uh, you didn't get the win, but um, your team's completely new, pretty much. Yeah, so there's one driver pretty much in that squad that's done three or four team races. Everybody else, that was probably their second team race. So um, on this note, we had a 10 o'clock ring in. Uh, Jaden Jarvis from Gisborne, he, we rang him at 10 o'clock. Keegan all had to rush his wife to the hospital. So congratulations to Keegan and Elise on bringing a little boy into this world. All the best. And uh, Keegan, we need you for Huntley, mate. 
I believe it was something like oh, when we were walking across the infield, you see something like six minutes before the team's race, she gave birth. Yeah, so six minutes before we were on that track, she gave birth, and Keegan goes, hold the race, I'm coming. <laughs> now, obviously, uh, going into Huntley, you, you don't have to give your team away, but you're going to have a few changes, or you've got some of these guys that are still going to be lining up in Huntley? Yeah, there's a few guys that will be that are racing tonight that will be going to Huntley. There's a few guys that have got other commitments tonight that can't be here and running super stock, so bring on Huntley. The Rascals are going to win it, and it's coming back to Rotorua. Now, we're a seeded team as well, the Pumas. I actually forgot all about that because we got second in Wellington, which means we've actually got the potential to meet again. Well, if we meet again, I know who's going to win, and it's going to be the Rascals. <laughs> <laughs> Breakfast has never tasted so good at the moment, though, mate. All right, let's see. Uh, we'll let you get back to the track. We'll see who else I can find. Let's get these boys. I'm going to actually walk over there. Stay there. Ethan Levine. Uh, I don't even know where you are on points. Let's have oh, a look. You got points there. Yeah, something like that. Oh, you got a... 18th, that's not very good. You started 16th, and you got a third, you've got grid three to you're going backwards every race, mate. Bro, tell me about it. I've been freight trained every race so far tonight, and I'm not loving it so far. <laughs> Generally, you're the one freight trading every now, so I guess that you just got to get used to it, right? Yeah, I'm pretty used to it now, but shoosh, that last one, I definitely fell that one. Yeah, hey, cool having the uh, the brother. Obviously, we just talked to Keegan, and he said uh, it's pretty special racing with you in a finals field. It always is, but I'm I'm up there, but I'm not really up there, so I don't know. I might go mint some stuff. Have some fun, eh? Anyone in particular? Um, oh, it's always good to get the funny speakers. <laughs> What's your least favourite colour? Um, oh, I don't really like them all, eh? Purple? <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, yeah, that mints the guy, eh? <laughs> hey, no, it's one. Hey, look go well for the Heat 3. I know uh, the camera should always be pointing at you as well with those situations. Oh, it should really be pointing at everyone out there, um, in that final heat. It's probably going to be a bit wet, probably make it a bit more interesting, so I'd say keep an eye on everyone. Hopefully they turn it on. That's the one. Well, we got uh, got him here as well. Might as well get Alex Hill. Come over, mate. Come on. South Island uh, contingent here, 95M. You've you made a little bit of a habit qualifying into these finals these days too, which is always good. Yeah, always try me luck, eh? Um, yeah, just gotta you gotta race up north as much as you can, and yeah, now the now it's starting to pay off after all the years travelling up. So yeah, no, loving it. it. Certainly is. Hey, um, is is it a little bit of hard work? I know there's Christchurch cars, but being the only Nelson car, oh, we got uh, Brett Nichols. I was about to call him his nickname then. Had to be careful. Um, but you got Brett Nichols that sort of tags along with you. But generally, it's just you two. Is it sort of hard work? Yes and no, like yeah it was cool back in the day, there was sort of five, six of us travelling around and now it's just, yeah, now yeah, kind of just do our own thing and yeah, that's that's my aim, just to race us in the, in the North Island as much as we can, gain as much experience as we can and um, yeah, try and win some shit. Ben Smith's on the way as well, though obviously he had an injury which couldn't bring him up here, but uh, those Christchurch guys, like, when it comes really to the crunch, do you sort of get amongst them and say, right, South Island, we're a club? Yeah, yeah, normally, yep, yep, yeah, just, yeah. Try and yeah, I, I try and keep my nose clean and sneak through. But yeah, when it when it push comes to shove, yeah, that South Island usually stick together. So yeah, you quite enjoy this track because you come up here for the triples as well with old uh, AJ and um, and uh, Captain McRobbie as well at times, don't you? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And this year we're teamed up with um, Dale Short this year and yeah, managed to sneak through and win the event. So um, no, I do like the track and it seems that all the Higgins cars seem to go real well here. Like yeah, Dale Lavis won won the New Zealand here and um, yeah. No, they just seem to stick on the pole line well, and yeah, no, that stand it's on, you always put on a really good meeting, and yeah, that's why we're here. Beauty, hey, we'll let you uh, get back to it. I'm going to try and see if we can grab some other drivers. Do you want to talk to them? I, I'm going to throw over to Bianca. Nope. I've had too much talking. <laughs> yeah, we're tired of you now, Stu. Hey, um, well, just wait for the camera. I mean, we've got to get them in. <laughs> um, Jordy, you did really well in that uh, second heat. Coming in second, you reckon if you had a few more laps, you would have caught him? Yeah, the car was fast, and I was catching Keegan for the lead. So, um, yeah, I mean, a couple more laps, who knows? But, yeah, the car's going really good. I mean, it was a pretty to-and-fro race, to be fair. It wasn't like he, he uh, oh, no, not rain, um, beat you by half a lap or anything. But it's a pretty close field out there. Everyone's in the same book. Hey, it's just so quick. Yeah, it's really competitive and it's cool because, I mean, it doesn't matter who you're racing with out there, they're all on pace, so it's always a good battle. So it makes it exciting racing. So, I mean, hopefully it doesn't rain and these guys at home bloody uh, get to see the, the full stream right through. 
I know, right? I mean, I can feel a few little uh, drops of love coming through. We've got wheel packing going on at the minute. How cool is it to see everyone pulling together to try and get you guys to go and do your final race? Yeah, well, I mean, the crowd's still sticking around, which is awesome. They're probably all soaked, so big ups to those guys sticking around. And, um, yeah, it's awesome. You know, Rotor or Club always do everything they can to get the meeting in, so... Yep. So Jordan, you're a business owner, you own Arch Gola in, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, not Kapiti, where are you? Yep, K- Kapiti Porirua, so yeah I've been doing that for a year now, building outdoor Arch Golas and that's been going really well. And so how do you find the time, you know, balancing business and, and driving, working on the car? Oh, being the boss, you know, you can manage to take a Friday off every now and again and um, no, I've got a really good staff member working for me, so yeah, we're running a well-oiled ship. And so, I mean, I wanted an arch goal, or I think we spoke about it. I'm not wind rate. I mean, it's not wind rated for my house here. But tell me, how many people are actually getting them? Because, I mean, they're, they're really quite an addition to a house for value, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're building about four or five of them a week. So, and that's just in the Kapiti Porirua region. So, if you think over the scope of the country, there's probably, you know, 100, 150 going up every, every week. Plug it again. Who is it? Arch goal of Kapiti. There you go. <laughs> hey Jordan, um, you were down there having a, not a team talk, but uh, is there anyone that you will hope to help out if you think you can't make it or they may help you? Yeah, well obviously Jack Myers is um, my only club mate out there, so i hopefully try and get him up on the podium. Would he help you if the roles were over there? Definitely, yeah. We're Panthers teammates and um, he's always the first one to put his hand up to help the club mates out, so that's why I'll go out and try and do my best for him. He's a good guy, eh? Learned from the best, old Blimmin Scott Myers. Yeah, definitely, definitely. There he is there. Scott Meyer. Oh, Jack. Jack. Oh, Jack and... Oh, they're, they're running. My legs aren't big enough, uh, uh, long enough to go and catch them. Listen, Jordy, you go and finish off your talks. I know I pulled you away. We appreciate your time. Who is it again? Arch Cola. <laughs> go, Jordy. Cheers, mate. Um, I mean, we've got a little bit of action coming on now. Let's see if we can find another driver. They were all... Oh, no, here's Stu here. Hey, I just um, had a quick talk to Soak. I'm just putting my ears in. Here, let's grab Sonia. Sonia! Quickly over here. I just want to... <laughs> 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 she hates this. She's happy to talk on the radio over the phone, but she hates this. I just want to hear the bit of the funny story. We are basically going until we go, because you're telling me we don't have a curfew unless it's Sunday. Yeah, um, yeah our resource consent is fairly... Uh, fairly easy to deal with, uh, to work with some um, rather, but um, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna go with it, and uh, we'll see if we can get the the 240s race out, and then we go. We won't go all night, but we'll run a few of the classes and get the the, the ones that need to get their things finished. So we, yeah, we won't we won't run all night or anything like that, but um, we really need to get the World 240s done for the people that have travelled a long way and they've got to go home as well tomorrow. You know, I mean, we can race at one o'clock tomorrow. Everything's set to do that, but. Hey, people have got to go home and drivers want to go home. So if we can get it so we can get that main race in, that's what we're going to try and do. So. Beauty. Sounds good. I'll leave you to it. She doesn't like that. <laughs> she just smacked me on the way past. Uh. <laughs> um, who else are we going to talk to? Oh, Jacko. Jacko has been... Jacko has been summoned. He's sitting there on 38 points. But <laughs> at the end of the day, at the moment, you don't, you don't even really think about that sort of stuff. Oh, well, we're sort of in that, we're in that danger zone, I suppose, because we're sort of far enough back that hopefully people won't worry too much, so we're just, we're just going to get going, and um, oh, we'll see what happens. If we get a bit of attention, we might have to change tack on what we're doing with the race, but just close enough up the front, we're just going to pin our ears and, yeah, hope for the best. At the moment, are you going to look at probably changing tack on the setup of the car? Yeah, well, this sort of throws another dynamic at it that we weren't prepared for, but... Hey, it's, at the end of the day, it's the same for everyone, so we just need to adapt and just get on with it. But like I say, the, the third heat thing, you know, so you be up there on points, you just yeah, need to keep your nose clean and also keep a little bit more of an eye on what's happening behind you because um, there's plenty of people trying to help their mates out there. So. You were just giving the car a big rev up before. What was that all about? Oh, we just had one little issue. We just, yeah, just had the rev limiter coming on a bit soon. So, yeah, we just we think we've got that sorted now. We're just checking that out. Yeah, slowing us down a bit. Beauty. Everything's uh, all good otherwise? Yeah, yep, no. Nah, business as usual, really. We're used to it now, so head down and um, get into it. Let's talk about this uh, slight issue that we've got. And actually, I'll talk to you, Scott, as well about this slight issue we got. There's only 
two Palmy cars in the final. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right, eh? I suppose it's better than none. Yeah, no, yeah, two, two good cars, so, um, you know, they know what to do and get on with it, and uh, we're just trying to get a whole lot more cars out on the track now so we can get the track uh, a bit better and uh, hopefully we can get it right. They, these guys can get straight into it and get that final done. Certainly can. Um, Panthers manager, Panthers selector, I'm guessing that's full steam as soon as this event's finished, you have a, a meeting or something to pretty much pick a couple of teams? Yeah, m Monday afternoon uh, we'll get all the selectors together and go through and uh, we'll, you know, we're basically uh, selected off the back end of this. Obviously we're watching them all season and then um, and uh, providing they go pretty good uh, here and everything and, uh, and got the right attitude, they'll be in a team. Sweet. Have you got something sort of penciled down at the moment? Oh, you know, it's all open until uh, the end of this meeting. You don't know, you know, unfortunately, uh, dare I say, it, if someone gets knocked out or something or uh, they blow an engine, so you just keep it all quite open and uh, we've got some good cars to select from, so, um, yeah, it'll be good. The team's racing pool in general in Palmy across the uh, super stocks and the stock cars. It's taken a bit of a rebuild over the last few years as I've learned in my short tenure. Yeah, no, it has, and, and they go through these phases. Hey, we had uh, a pretty good team there for a number of years, and uh, you know, as as the uh, ones that have been doing it for a long time drop out, and and getting all these new guys in, and and young fellas, and there's a great bunch of guys come out of mini stocks getting into it. So, um, you know, there'll be a good team there in a couple of years. Two good teams there in a couple of years. Beauty. We'll leave you to it, Scott. I'm going to catch up with a few more people, okay. so we can uh, keep the show rolling. Wayne, hear me. Let's talk to Wayne. Oh, we've got, oh, we got Jamie as well. Why not? Talk to both. Right, uh, I know Bianca talked to you yesterday. I mentioned obviously it's uh, it's quite close to teams, but uh, man, you must want to do this event, surely. Oh, uh, yeah, I definitely do want to do it. It's hard to watch, that's for sure. Now, a lot of these QTR chassis, Wayne's running one now, Jamie, um, we see them. Oh, right around the place these days to be fair and even in the stock car ranks obviously uh, Scott Tennant 2NZ I believe that's the first NZ digit on a QTR yeah it is yep that is the first one first major championship too I think for a super stock yeah so, so as a chassis builder obviously uh, pretty pretty uh, confident <laughs> sorry these guys are talking too much about you uh, it's, uh, it's obviously a confident thing that uh, helps people want to buy chassis from you? Yeah it does, yeah it was good to get a result. Um, Scott's been going quite well, he obviously has home track and all that and it sort of tuned the car in quite well, it's good to watch. So yeah it's real good for us. Yeah beauty. Wayne, let's have a chat to you about these chassis because now that you've got one, Jamie's got one, he's the son-in-law now and uh, Jamie, your son has got one. That's a lot of RD going on mate. Yeah a lot of QTRs in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> What is, like, every chassis is, like, Pete's chassis, for example, that the, they come off the lot these days, they're the same, slightly different. What's the key difference between your three chassis? Well, I don't know, I mean, if you look at the racing last night and tonight, all the chassis are going fast. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I like the QTR because we wanted to go to an independent suspension, and we just want to try something a little bit outside the box, and uh, uh, Glenn Leach and, and Jamie have, you know, delivered that, so... Uh, the, a hard thing for us probably is to um, loon the car and dial it in and you know, we rely on Glenn and Jamie to g give us a bit of guidance through that so without them we'll probably struggle a little bit more. So now obviously like you say Jamie has one, your son Jamie has one as well. H how much feedback do you get even out of your boy, out of Jamie Hemi? Well I mean Jamie's a little bit inexperienced with, with the feedback. Um, I don't know I think, I think you know we've got I mean, they've also got, you've got to remember they've got um, a lot of stock cars as well. I mean, you've got um, Sheldon. Sheldon and you know, and those cars. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, we can share some notes. I mean, I think they're busy building cars as well. So, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of QTRs, you know, you know, in the mix as well. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, to be honest, Glenn, Glenn Leach has been great to work with. He's very supportive and we're on the phone with him tonight, you know, helping us make sure that we made the right decisions on our setup. Last night we didn't get it right, um, but tonight the car's going a lot better. What does it sort of suit, more of a slick track or a heavy track? Well, I suit a slick track. I'm a slick track driver, you know. Um, 
I think the cute. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, we have to set our super socks up to like all tracks. Um, you know, like we always get a heavy track. You know, at race one, and they always end up slick race. You know, three. So we've got to get something in the middle. And yeah, we're we're just learning the car, but you know, we still got the Vendetta sitting there over in the corner as well, and that that's a really good car, and it, you know, it was really fast. But um, we, we might have a buy for that now, and and get get rid of that, and uh, just focus on the QTR. Beauty. Wayne, I'll leave you to it. I've been told I've got to throw away for a bit, so uh, we'll, go and, we'll go and chill out for a wee bit. Throw back to you boys upstairs. Awesome, thanks for that Stu. We're going to take a quick break and thank some of our sponsors who help make this event happen and the stream with the crew from the Pits TV. When we come back, we'll give you the latest updates from the track and again analyse what's going to unfold, what we think will unfold in the third and final heat of the TWS World 240s. All these cars and drivers, they are out there doing it. For the rest of us, the Speedway Fano is coming to the party. We're back real soon. The St Nicholas is a familiar sight around Bluff as she steams out to capture Can You Fishing's famous Bluff Kinner. Once caught, the Kinner is brought back to the purpose-built factory in Bluff where it is processed, packed and shipped fresh to you. But that's not all that Can Do Fishing can do for you. Try some of their green bone fish or delicious power products and you will soon see why seafood from the Bluff is world famous. So head to your local fish market or supermarket and ask for Can Do Fishing Kinner, Fish or Power. Can Do Fishing, there's nothing we can't do for you. Hi, Scott here from Expert Cars. Over the last couple of years, I've used Science Solutions for lots of jobs. Building signage, vehicle signage, and even flags. If you need signage done in Invercargill, get in touch with Science Solutions. So he's out here in the Malcolm Nautai car. If you hadn't heard, uh, he is part of the uh, Christchurch team for the Superstock teams racing in Palmerston North in a couple of weeks and he's going to be driving this car of Malcolm Nartai so it's kind of worked in I'm sure Malcolm <laughs> Nartai would have much rather have been out there yes. racing in the finals tonight but because uh, he didn't qualify Scott Tennant's had the opportunity to uh, jump into the car uh, to be a part of it. So the consolation's about to go. I, I think some of the discussions with the drivers said well we want to see what the track is doing uh, because, as opposed to going out there blind not knowing how to set up their race cars for um, for the final. So I'm sure there'll be a bit of looking over the fence for this one and then some quick decisions made. All right, so we'll be able to keep an eye on the, some of the lap times here as well and, and just watch. That's going to be the interesting yeah. bit, isn't it? What the sort of lap times they can run. Bearing in mind, this is the Consolation and Tier 3. So these are guys that haven't had a good, not, uh, good weekend at the office at all. Robbie maybe heads out to the concrete wall in turn four. So it's Tony Coxhead who's leading the way. Chad Ace, well here we go. Keep an eye on the number four because we know he is one of the quick cars in the country. One hard out into the concrete. So they're slow at the moment. They're doing 19s and 20s. But that... Uh, that wet stuff is still just sitting on top at the moment. But I suppose this is it. It's, you get them out there, they're all on the same track, aren't they? They are. They are. Um, and look, you can race. So straight up now, Tony Cox, they're coming, they're down into the 18s now as Tony Cox it spins it up the race leader. And that's opened it up for Grendon Beasley. This is the car. Uh, the 31 that is leading, Grendon Beasley, this is the ex Asher Reeves car which actually set the lap record here at Paradise Valley Speedway as Chad Ace pulls off onto the infield. So it's Grendon Beasley, then Elias Dykstra, and so we're getting cars now down into the 19s. Yeah, it's something uh, and in the suspension again by the looks of it with uh, Chad Ace, so man, he's had a bad weekend with that car. So we've got, uh, oh, so that's Scott Tennant stranded in the, in the, the turn two. And now the, another one of the cars, Luke Irvine, has come to a stop down there as well. Right, taking a look in the pits. And so the tractors will get over there to Scott Tennant. 
19C. Uh, and just taking a look, uh, and our finalists are lining up on the grid. Yeah, Frank would have been keen to carry on. Well, like you said, they do in the rain there, but you think racing on dirt is just the same, but he couldn't no. believe it the first time he came to New Zealand, and like you were saying earlier on tonight, you know, it starts raining a little bit and they stopped the racing, but as soon as he walked out onto the track and felt how slippery it was, yeah. he understood why. Well, that's <laughs> it. You just need to look at how those cars, when they were out there doing the wheel packing, yeah. it's just yeah. so, it's, you're just tiptoeing. So Grendon Beasley, 31, is the race leader. The five of Dykstra right behind him, makes the pass up the inside, but gets caught in behind Tony Coxhead. Coxhead takes a poke at uh, Grendon Beasley. Might not have been intentional, but uh, the 31 got airborne. That just happened a lot with that car. Well, still does, obviously, uh, when Asher was driving it. So Grendon Beasley. Still the race leader. Elias Dykstra and Tony Coxhead now on the infield the laps that we've got now a couple down into the 17s so we're on the pace we are on the pace white flag is out one to go well 17.5 for these guys that have had bad weekends that's a quick time isn't yep, it it is and the chicken flag drops Zach Harris ends up coming through to take the win Brendan Beasley pipped on the last lap. Yeah, and over half the field in the end, down into the 17 second bracket, so. That track is in pretty good nick out there. Yeah, 17.5, I think, the fastest, so. When we're talking with the guys that have been further down the field this weekend, and I think the fastest is, uh, you know, only in the high 16s, isn't it? Yes. So it's not, not far off some of the best pace of the night, considering we've just had a shower of rain. It's uh, a really good time. Take a look at how they do line up. It is one of the Tesla brothers uh, sitting on a pole position for this one. Brody James alongside on grid two. Josh Prentice on the inside of row two. Title contender Peter Rees on grid four. Mark Dunn and Ken Hunter are there on row three. Then it's Jaden Ward at 971. And three-time winner Frankie Weymouth. Can it be four? He starts on grid eight. Jack Myers and Charlie Sorter right in behind, rounding up the front five rows from Hayden Hart and Dale Stewart on grids 11 and 12. Frankie Wayman Jr., junior, junior, 555 on grid 13. From Alex Hill in 14, Richard Gaskin missing from grid 15, but Jacob Buckrell sits on grid 16. One NZ Asher Rees will try and cause chaos from 17. Michael Rumney on 18. Jordan Deere and James Clark there on 19 and 20. We go to Brad McGee and Ethan Rees. Ethan Levine, keep an eye on him. And Quinn Ryan on grid 24. Then it's Tesla, Hemingway and Levine coming all the way from the back. Yeah, there's no empty grid there, Paul. So uh, oh. the rows obviously snuck up. They have. There is no gap on grid 15. All right. Okay. This is it. The rain. We've come through, you brave and hardy souls. Around Paradise Valley, around Aotearoa and the globe, we are about to watch history unfold. 
the 2023 World Invitation Superstock Champion will be decided in the next few minutes. Buckle up, here comes turn one, 15 laps of action, let's go racing! So straight away it's Wayman gets pushed wide, gets caught up in here and takes a big hit straight off the bat. Uh, does Frankie Wayman, now he gets away from James. Out front, it's Hunter who takes the lead. Uh, sorry, Peter Rees is your leader from Kenneth Hunter and Charlie Sorder. Sparks coming from the uh, Wayman car, both front and back in different parts of the race track. All right, we've got Frankie JJ cruising the pole line. He knows who he's after. He's just putting a bit of a gap between them. Oh, it's Ethan Rees is already there. And Ethan Rees is going to drive Frankie Jr. to the wall. Oh, and Frankie JJ doing a good job of holding up Rees. And in comes Ethan, uh, Asher. And oh, that was oh. a cruncher. So the block man taking out the block man. And in comes James Clark to take out uh, the Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. As it sits at the moment, Peter Rees is your champion from Frankie Wayman and Ethan Rees, who are all still up there. We've got one sitting down in the concrete in turn one and two. Ethan, uh, Asher Rees gets back on the racing line. Clark still blocking in Frankie Jr. Charlie Sorda gets driven up the concrete wall. Jaden Ward dealing to him there, but he comes back down. Yeah, so that was the 5G put him in to start with. Peter, uh, Frankie Wayman puts a big shot in, makes the move. Frankie Wayman Jr. still in sixth place, but it's Peter Rees who is leading the race. Asher looks as though he might be pulling to the infield. So the one NZ is gone. James Clark is gone. So a couple of the Gisborne hit cars are out of it. Jack Myers is off. Frankie Wayman is off. Josh Prentice is sitting in the wall. So all the G cars, lights are red. Oh, oh we got one up and over. Not sure who that is that's gone over in there. Lights are red, and actually, I, you know, I think, did the lights go red before that incident? I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Todd Hemingway. I wonder whether the lights have actually gone red for Hemingway, and uh, no. that's just happened at the same time. No, no, so they've gone red for uh, Brody James sitting up in turn one, and Josh Prentice are up there. So I think the reds were for turn one and yes, two. so do I. And then this crash down here, the rollover, has happened after the red lights. Yes, or, or basically as the reds have gone on, and they don't normally react that quick, do they? No. No. Todd Hemingway out walking across the track. Uh, so Josh Prentice, we got the replay, so we will come to that on the super screen in a moment. So Josh Prentice still sitting uh, down in the corner. They haven't touched his car yet. He has sat down there for a little while. But Jack Myers is out, so he was. Here we go. Here's the highlights of the replay. So it was green when it started, red red by the time um, <laughs> it was all over so here we go so looking for the red car of Jordan Deere just kind of gets tapped on oh, in it's Tesla it came in there was it yes I think Keegan yeah. Levine was in there as well yeah. wasn't he just kind of yeah. I think just kind of got sucked into it there's your race leader Peter Rees uh, at the back of this two car on the super screen so okay so oh sorry didn't realize what was uh, going on up in the the far turn it's the Brody James who's being towed off the track uh, so obviously some uh, some damage there a big huge hit uh, by all accounts I think I was saying last night that he's one of those drivers who a lot of people have on his uh, on their front dash yes, yes. Everybody in the room uh, in the know is uh, nodding. Uh, so that's it. He's, he's just plenty out. And uh, now it's coming back. But you don't want to see injuries. You like seeing the big hits and the strategic uh, stuff. But you don't like seeing the injuries. Here we go, race fans. Halfway through. Heat three. Lights are out. Wait for the greens. Let's go. Asher Rees is mobile. JJ, 
And so is Frankie JJ. So Charlie Sorda looked to put a shot on Jaden Warden. He takes him to the wall. Frankie JJ. Oh, he missed Peter Rees, but gets a big shot. Oh, here we go. Lights are red. Okay, now, come on. Hold your places. Stop now, guys. Stop now. Frankie Jr. in the 515 has got some major uh, left front problems. Obviously, we saw when he got sent in at the start of the uh, race, the sparks flying after. Obviously, uh, a fair bit of rubbing going on, probably a brake yep. breaking there. But um, it seems to have come undone in that red light. Okay, um, so Charlie Sorter, he's stuck Jacob Ward up the concrete wall, uh, Jaden Ward up the concrete wall. That's what you want to do at Teams Champs, Charlie. So you're getting sorted, and that's one of the better teams. One of well, uh, I think you'd almost put Jaden Ward if you were selecting yeah. a New Zealand uh, Superstock team. Jaden Ward would be in there. So that's not a bad scalp to take first off for the one uh, GB. So. They're going to give charge. So here we go. If you're wondering what's going on here, the race has been stopped for Jaden Ward's safety. He is out. He's the reason for the stoppage. But what they're going to do here is they give the other car, who's not the cause of the stoppage, Charlie Sorter, they're going to give him the chance to dislodge himself uh, from the other car. If he can extract himself within a few seconds, he will be able to carry on. Otherwise... Uh, he's out of the race as well. So they're just probably uh, explaining that to Charlie. I think, I think they're going to give Jaden the chance to hop out of the car maybe yeah, too. Yeah, I think uh, after what we saw at New Zealand a couple of years ago, they uh, they get the drivers out of the cars these days so they don't interfere with everyone else moving. But this this battle between these two have been going on since Heat 1. Yep. They were nudging each other out of the way. Heat 2, it got a bit more brutal with a bit heavier bump work. And finally in Heat 3, they've decided to sort it out properly. And Charlie, uh, potentially, has come out better off. So we talked about Quinn Ryan and the moves he was going to have to make. Uh, he has now passed Frankie Wayman. He's passed Charlie Sorda, who's obviously sorted, uh, got some problems over there. He's moved up into sixth place and is now uh, two points off the mm. podium. All right, give him all a hand, ladies and gentlemen, Jaden Ward. And look at that, the handshake for Char with Charlie Sorter. He knows what it's all about. He's put in the big hits tonight as well and, uh, and some strategic racing. And uh, he's on the end of some there. So former 1NZ in the stock cars. Backed out and made it look easy to Charlie. Peter Rees just into turn three. Ken Hunter right behind him. Lights are green. Ten. 335-94. Are your leaders? Oh yeah, Frankie Wayman. He certainly got some major issues. And he takes a shot from Ethan Rees and the spin from Ethan. Now who's Ethan got behind him? Keegan Levine. He's gonna try and shunt him wide. So for Frankie Wayman Jr., his night is now done. Quinn Ryan being blocked here by Rumney, Asher Rees back out there. Oh, big shot on uh, Tesla in turn one and two. Who is that? Mark Dunn? It's Mark Dunn who he took out. So here comes oh, Ethan just uh, making his way past Frankie Jr. now. Jr. gets a massive shot from Ethan Levine. Oh, turn number... One and two, both the Poms get taken in. Asher Rees in one go nails Frankie Wayman Jr. and Charlie Schwarter. Yeah, because he'd, uh, uh, he he'd just stopped. got Schwarter. They thought the two big wings are together. Yeah. Then has, Frankie ducked through the middle. There's cars everywhere. Uh, Ethan Levine, after his big shot on Frankie JJ, hasn't moved again. We're going to go red. Charlie Schwarter, that wing is buckled now. <laughs> so Asher Rees got both of them. In the one shot. Yeah, I think that was a case of uh, Frank thought there was a gap in between the two and uh, dived for it. All right, so we've got to change. We have a change while all this is happening. It is a Rees 1 2 right now, but it's swapped around. So Ethan now has a one point advantage over Peter. Uh, Ethan up to seventh place. And Quinn Ryan onto the podium now. So where's uh, Ryan up to up to eight? Actually, I thought he was he'd got higher than that at one stage. Oh, he just got he, blocked again. He didn't did, he? yes. So he's been yes. blocked at the moment by Michael Rumney, um, which you know 
Who's Rumney working with? Is it? Is, is he working with or Frankie Dale Wayman? Stewart. Or Dale, Dale Stewart. Dale Stewart sitting there in, yep. in a spot. Dale Stewart wasn't. He was kind of a little bit down, wasn't he? In the in the earlier part, he was eight equal going into it. Yes. You know the the Rumney slash Wayman connection yep. uh, goes all the way back to uh, the Lyle Rumney win at the 1995 Championships. So Frankie JJ is off. Oh man, they are turning it on tonight. That's the way. Give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Charlie Swarder. Looks like Mark one GB is out as well. Yeah, he's been sent in field. Uh, so yes, yeah, Swarder getting that real welcome and uh, to Kiwi with the Kiwi Racing. Um, they call him the Wild Child, and he's here to dish it out. There he is on the screen. Oh, he's he'll be loving this. This is what it's all about. Um, you know, I, it does really surprise me after all this time, and especially now with the teams racing going on, that nobody's kind of decided, hey, why don't we give this teams racing or... <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's give it. it up for Charlie Sword. He's happy. He's loving it. <laughs> go on, Charlie. <laughs> we saw him. This is exactly what Charlie done when he absolutely put Ryan Harrison away <laughs> at the British... Uh, sorry, at the European, which Frankie went on to win. Let's do it. Two laps to go. Asher Rees backs out of the wall. Keegan Levine comes in and gives the, the Dutchman a big welcome to Aotearoa. So Quinn Ryan has dropped. Frankie Wayman Jr. is back on the podium. White flag is out, one to go. FWJ could still do it. There's nobody there to stop him. Ladies and gentlemen, the chicken flag falls for Peter Rees, but your new World 240s champion will be 127 Ethan Rees. But what about the legend that is Frankie Wayman Jr. brings the car home, loses the big muffler off the side, I think it is. Just gets run over there. Um, and he is going to finish on the podium. Frankie Wayman Jr. will still be third, but hats off to Ethan Rees is your new World 240s champion. And Pete. me for picking him. Yeah, congratulations <laughs> there, Barry. So um, let's. So as the cars die down, there we see the results on the screen. Peter Rees, Kenneth Hunter, Dale Hunter, your top three in the race. But Ethan Rees in that move from grid number 22, 22. up to seven is going to give him a one-point win over his father. If he'd been one more spot back, yes. it would have been a runoff. So Ethan Rees on 73, Peter Rees finishes on 72, and 515 GB, Frankie Wayman Jr. in third place place on 65 points look how close this is though let's look so obviously they're the three. Oh, put your hands together ladies and gentlemen as they make their way around the racetrack the checkered flag with Peter Rees but on the inside it is Ethan Rees your new world champion the one NZ Asher there as well so if you're watching from England Peter in the 10 is the dad the, the two boys are there and that is uh, Ethan who was the new world champion, and his brother is the New Zealand champion. Uh, but how tight was this after Frankie Wayman on 65? We then go Quinn Ryan on 64, Dale Stewart on 63, Alex Hill 62, Keegan Levine 61, Jacob Buckrell 60.
right, I think we're going to we think we're going to go right. there. now. Down to you, Stu. Yep, certainly are. Look at this straight away, Ethan Rees. Congratulations, Woo mate. World 240s champion. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's cool. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> stoked. The dad gets sick, did he? Yeah, you beat him by one point, mate. Yeah, almost a runoff. Nah, it's good. Eh? It's coming <laughs> a bit of a cost though. The motors were hot, but hey, that was what it was. Eh? Nah, yeah, nah, it's cool. You got a couple of weeks to fix that. Don't worry about that, mate. You just won the World 240s. You get to go to England if you want. Yeah, no, it's definitely uh, something to do away, but hey, no, thanks to all the all the boys out there for putting in the mahi and uh, stopping those ponds from getting up there. It's uh, just it's awesome, mate. So thank you, thank all them too. So yeah, it's always good they come over here once a year, and it's always good that they fight back as well, despite they don't race this type over there all year. Yeah, you're right. And look at that Frankie. He got smoked every single lap, and he still carried on going. And I don't know where he finished, but he carried on going and going. And he's a trooper man. But hey, he comes over here, and he gets smoked, and we go there, and we get smoked. So that's how it goes, eh? So it's all part of it. To be fair, you had to do it hard as well. It's not like you had a cruise and blockers and everything. You were taking cars out, putting cars in the wall yourself, and and doing your own blocking along the way. Yeah, uh, yeah. I sort of had to in that position, but uh, no, just a big effort to keg and everyone else. I saw her clearing the way, and Asher and Josh, and uh, yeah. I've lost the words. <laughs> we'll let you soak it in. We'll do the formal presentation soon. Bianca, was she turn over there. She's got Pete. Mate, I've got Pete. I was talking to you earlier about this being your legacy. Now we've got your son. Peter, tell us how it feels. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You, you must know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry, wrong mate. <laughs> um, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Tell us how you're feeling to see him up on the podium like this, you coming in second. I mean, I've got the chills. What are you feeling? Wow, it couldn't be much perfect unless Asher was there, you know? <laughs> Asher put in the hard yards for you though, eh? We've got to go give him a, a couple of beers. Josh Prentice, Brody James over here, James Clark, they all put in the mahi for you guys to come in. Yeah, and that's, that's the difference, you know. We had mates out there, the other guys didn't. The, the track actually come back to, after that rain, a beautiful track, um, fast. Been a vaction by the look of it, so the crowd should be happy. Peter, tell us, when you're sitting there and you've got long, long waits in between racing, what's going through your head? Oh, you have no idea. Your, your head's going 100 miles an hour. Yeah. And, you know, it's quite funny because people come up to you and talk to you, but your mind's not on what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know what's going through my head. You know, get around the first corner, get down the first straight, yeah. get to the finish line, yeah. you know. That first race was short, but man, that race was long. <laughs> Absolutely. Peter, I'm so made up for you, I can't tell you. I have one really important question from Jason. He wants to know what you're cooking on the barbie tomorrow. What, well, in the barbie? Yeah. Oh, nice. We'll stop and we'll get something. <laughs> I think Jason needs to do the shout, eh? He can arrive at yours with the beers and the sausages. Oh, he's had a hard year, but we'll shout it for him. <laughs> Put it there, Peter. I'm so wrapped up for you and Ethan as well. Congratulations. Go and have a big long beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is pretty cool. All right, father and son on the podium, and uh, and and that's it. You, you've heard it from Pete over the years. There's there's not much that he hasn't done, no. um, and nothing makes him happier than losing to one of them. It, and it's the same, you know, Frankie Wayman Jr. in that same situation now over in the UK with uh, with Frankie JJ and and Phoebe doing so well in the F1s. Yeah. I, it was such a great thrill to be uh, down at Whanganui two seasons ago now when they finished up one, two, three on the podium yep. and Pete was in tears. Um, like he, he went out there in a runoff for second place and lost it and he reckoned he lost it on purpose. So he was so he became the first one to speak at the presentations. Barry and they if went I could third, second, first. So um, all right, go yeah, if I can jump, jump in, in there quick. quickly just because I've got Frankie Wayman Jr. Mate we talked in that break and I said you could bring a wheelbarrow home with this championship. <laughs> You pretty much did. Third place. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely stoked. Absolutely made up for Pollock for the sponsors. You know what I mean? It's their car. They did an awesome job. They give me the car to race. That's all. I just drive the thing. But yeah, you know, I had a, a couple of numbers in my head there. I was told not to go past them, so I didn't. I nailed them. Obviously, you know, it, it's, um, it's how it is. But I got a flat left rear, which left me a little bit vulnerable. But yeah, and I was pleased just to get it home and get third. You got absolutely smashed a bit. So yeah. was it the, the rear brakes or something? Oh, there's sparks flying everywhere. But the, yeah, literally. But mate, you managed to haul it through and got there. Yeah, definitely. I'm absolutely superb. I say, I say a massive thanks to uh, Thomas Slater from Pollock Cranes. Absolutely superb race car. You know, I think we've had a really good evening. He's, he's loved every minute of it. And, uh, you know, we'll do it again. Another World 240s podium, and yeah. you've got to be proud of the effort the boys put yeah, in. 100%, yeah, straight away from the get-go, they were at it. You know, and you know, they, I'll have to watch it back on a video. When you're in the race, you, 
you, you just focus, you don't see what's going on. You know, I was a little bit, when I had the flat left rear, I was a little bit vulnerable because I didn't have the, the pace. If I've got pace, then I can take some, you know, they take some stopping, but obviously I didn't have the pace. But, you know, obviously there weren't a lot of cars finished, it must have been a good race to watch, which is why we're here, you know, the crowd want to see some action, so. I feel like we could potentially have our uh, standout teams champs competitor if uh, if Ted keeps up that work yeah, in a couple well, of weeks. You know, he's uh, he's well up for it. He's uh, he's been he's been coming on leaps and bounds at home. We've got some good kit this year. You know, the, the the team it's hard to do. It's very hard for us to do because we don't do anything like this. You know, this year we've potentially got five of the best cars we've ever had, and you know we've got a lot of support over here. A lot of support. You know, the Myers family, the Pollock Cranes, and all the sponsors involved. Brick Samuel Brick from home and everybody, and it's making a massive difference. You know, so if, if we can go out there with five cars that are on pace, that'll put us up there with the best of them. So. It certainly can, Frankie. I'll leave it to it. We'll do the Thank formal you. presentations. I'm quickly, quickly, quickly going to grab this man here. Look down the camera. Stand back a bit, Paul. Shuts the moves, bro. Oh, <laughs> you wanted to do that. You told me you wanted to do that all weekend. Oh, I haven't said that. I don't lie. <laughs> nah. We uh, we just like to put on a show. We do it back in England, so we may as well bring it over the wall and put a show on here for all the fans. Uh, Cheers, Mum and Dad and Harry and my granddad for watching at home. I'm all right, so uh, car's a bit bent up, but we're all good. We'll do it all again in Teams Racing style next week, mate. Bring it on. Back to you guys. Thank you, Stu. Right. Uh, we'll get an update here in a moment with uh, what the plan is. Uh, but we have got Tier 2. There obviously seems to be an issue uh, with, the, with the grid. Oh, because this was a late change. So, so let me tell you, this is the... Uh, Hubbard Contracting Super Stocks in Paradise, originally supposed to be a three heater, uh, but now a two. All right, so yeah, just a little bit of confusion over the uh, which way the grids were supposed to be. Uh, so yeah, it has changed. Originally, it was going to be the three-heat championship, but it has been changed to just a two-heater, so it's a reverse grid. So we look at the front, these two guys, uh, right up the front, we've got Brendan Ashton down there, and is it? I think it might be Zane Dykstra. Um, they, are the, they would have been right down the back uh, from the opening heat. So who made some big moves? In, uh, well, I suppose it doesn't really ma matter because they're right at the front here now. Big moves. You're still you're going to need to do them anyway. They're almost set though, so we'll get straight into it. Uh, just to let you know, race fans, there will be no on-track presentation. No on-track presentation tonight uh, just due to the time. We've got two races to go. So remember, for these guys, the winner of this championship will be in next year's World 240s. We know Ethan Reeves is there, he's the defending champ. He will be there, automatic qualifier, along with the winner of this championship. Bryce Steiner gets spun, spat out down the main straight. Wayne Hemi making some big moves. Sorry, we won't be able to give you the winner of this one straight away, we don't have accumulating points for this group. But Barry's got the good old pen and paper out. <laughs> we'll be ready to work it out for you as soon as we can. Oh, Hemi just got driven to the... Zane Dykstra yes. took Hemi to the wall, and that's cost Hemi six spots. Good move, though, from Dykstra. That's what you need to do. Oh, who's out of control and running out of back onto the track? Is that uh, Matty Wise? maybe something's gone wrong in the Matty Wise car and he, he pulled to the infield but obviously because of that rain the whole car is skidded all the way back out onto the track they all know he's there and so we are just racing hard now boy we're only four laps into it So race leader is Brendan Ashton. That was a cruncher. Max Holloway is cruising the pole line once again in the 81.
So 21, Brendan Ashton is your race leader. Well, again, it's Trent James sitting second on points after the first race. So Holloway, uh, to trying to get it through the river charge, trying to do the same in this. Yep. Lights are red. Lights are red. Well, this will actually give us a moment to kind of uh, maybe analyse here. Thomas Stanaway is currently on ninth. Uh, so... So 38, he, he, he's on he 47, won he won your first heat, so he's currently on 47. Zane Dykstra, he was further back, I think. 19 plus 27. So he's on 47, uh, no, 46. Damien Orr, Damien Orr was a good finisher in the opening heat. Uh, 27 points plus his 20 here, so he's right up there. 56, so where is he? Trent James. He's down, he's only got 18 points in this one, so he's okay. just, just oh, looking at he's still Hemi. right up there. Wayne Hemi. Hemi scored 23 in the first one. And currently on 21, he was up in third place yes. on 26, which would have put him in uh, the points lead. So he could still come back here. Um, Seth McConchie, not a big scorer in that first one. And ben Millen, he's still sitting down in 13th, so... Uh, 57V finished up fourth in the first one. 17 in this one. He's got up to 12. Forty another 17. Yep. So yeah, it's still pretty tight. This uh, it's very tight at the moment. And five laps to run. And we've had is that Brendan Ty down there who hasn't refired. Yep. Oh, we got one over. We've got one on the roof, is there? So Zane Deutsch just turned somebody over by the looks of it. Yep. Brett Loveridge. It is. Uh, who's gone over? Brendan Ty might get a bit of luck here if, uh, <laughs> if he can get it refired <laughs> during the stoppage. Race time 7 to 12, so reminder, ladies and gentlemen, as I quickly mentioned just before the start of this race, uh, there will be no presentation on track tonight. Uh, we've got the ladies' championship race to come uh, to wrap things up. And the Gisborne drivers from every corner of the country. Well, I think, I think James Clark might be from Gisborne. Yes, um, I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's one of those ones to watch, I reckon. He's uh, He's got a pretty bright future. Brett Loveridge is out. Give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Getting turned over there by Zane Dykstra. All right, we're going to go to the replay. Uh, so check it out on the super screen. There you go, Brett. Take a look up there. <laughs> oh, yeah, so just got a little bit loose. Oh, so just got tangled up there. And a good little drag along the track. Yeah, I think this position Dykstra wouldn't want to finish mm. up in because uh, no, because he was he was in uh, he was running well, isn't he? Yes. He finished top ten in the first heat and uh, right right up the front in this one. So he was leading or is is leading the race. Can he get out of here? So we saw Charlie sort of get out. Now we saw these two cars. No, so he's done. Wow, disappointing for Zane Dykstra. Yeah. He was leading the race, and like you say, Barry, alongside nine, 19, 19 points there in the first heat. A win here would have given him a real good chance of making it through to the uh, World 240s for next year. All right, we're going to head down uh, into the pits and we're going to have a catch up with Malcolm Nartai. Mate, Malcolm, how's your, how's your night going? I've seen you up there enjoying your hot dog and your chips in the crowd. Yeah, well, the hot dogs were pretty rubbish and, um, <laughs> um, and the chips weren't much better, but um, I was a wee bit tender from last night getting put on the fence and um, it's great to see um, Jaden get out there in the final and um, really feed it to the Poms. So I'm um, proud of the boys and um, what they've done and um, it was good to see Scott Tennant in my car tonight and... Um, Hit a few laps, ready for team. So yeah, we had a really good night. Malcolm, tell us, did he bring it home safe? No, he had, like no damage from it. No, we didn't have a lot of damage. So um, yeah, we're happy with that. And um, hey, if we had damage, we'd fix it. It's yeah. not the end of the world. Yeah. So um, what a um, great uh, world final. Um, 
I'm not sure who won yet, but I think um, Peter Reeves won and uh, Ethan second. Other way round, Ethan first, Peter second. Who, who was? Ethan first, Peter second. Well, that's a better um, outcome for me because it's great to see the um, young fellas um, yeah. getting through to the final. Cause, um, and I'd like to see Ethan go and race for us in, uh, uh, in uh, England, so it'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we wanted to come down and check on Jaden Ward as well. He took a wild ride on the corner down the back straight there. Yeah. Is he all good? Yeah, I think Jaden's all right. He's just yeah. gone to hide. Um, he was a wee bit disappointed he didn't yeah, finish in the top two or three, but um, he'll be fine. Yeah. He'll be great. He won't, get ready, he'll be at Team Champs ready to um, smoke some people. Wouldn't be Team Champs without him wanting to do that. Malcolm, we're going to leave you to it, mate. We might go and catch up with the cold beer in the club rooms after. Really nice to see you. Hope you enjoyed your weekend up here. I had a great weekend. Thank you very much. Awesome. Cheers, Malcolm. Thanks, guys. Righty ho. The. Oh, sorry, Barry. Yes, you were about to. I think unofficially he was in there, Thomas Stanaway would be your winner with 47 points away they're sitting now Damien Orr is on 46 and uh, Trent James 56 V is 45 and uh, Wayne Hemi on 44 so and they're all kind of in that little battle group together yes uh, 7, 8, 9 and 10 Wayne Hemi Damien Orr Thomas Dunaway and Trent James so I think they're running what 12 laps so yes they uh, are yeah, so we've still got uh, four laps to go here. That could change a lot with only one point between them all. All right, thanks to Hubbard Contracting, our major sponsor of this Tier 2 Championship. A couple of cars getting bunted wide. Seth McConchie's crawling the pole line. Is he after somebody in particular? Conchie's getting into Max Holloway. Two kind of block cars. Maybe that is who he's after. So it's still Randall Tarrant actually now leading the race. Oh, Damien Orr's been spun around. So let's take him out of that equation now. The white flag drops. One to go. For the former 1NZ, Randall Tarrant. And Randy T will bring it home. And takes the win in the 66A. And Hemi drops a couple. So Thomas Stanaway was your points leader. So we'll give Barry a second. He's watching the screen. We'll make sure it doesn't disappear on him. And he's doing it uh, manually at the moment. Give me a wave when you sort it there, Barry. I've just turned your mic off for now. But let's ha take a look at how the top 10 finished. Randall Tarrant takes the win. Brendan Ashton home in second. Mark Costello third. Okay, and 198. Then Cody McKee. Trent James. Ben Milne. Uh, he's looked pretty good tonight too in this uh, second tier championship. Dylan Marshall, Thomas Stanaway in eighth. Is that enough? Ryan Hunt in ninth place. And Wayne Hemi in tenth. So we don't want to get anybody's hopes up too early, so we'll make sure it's uh, all done uh, properly there. Uh, Stu, not too much more to go tonight. The lady's about to uh, be on the track. Yeah. They've been entertaining, eh? Yeah, the ladies down there on the dummy grid, their uh, sixth and final heat. They'll be pretty happy to tick that one off. I thought for a moment there they might have called it at five. Been a big championship already. Mm, but it I is. Mean, hey, if we can fit another one in, we might as well, right? Randy T's firing some donuts. Unfortunately, no second teams race, but that's all right. We've uh, lost a couple of cows, eh? <laughs> Okay, we're just getting the info. We're just getting the info through. All right, so Barry, what do we got? Yeah, un unofficially at this stage, at least 56V, Trent James. Made up a bit of ground in those last couple laps with 51 points. I've got him on. Thomas Stanaway, 49. And I've heard mention of a, a runoff for third, but... Um, yeah, I haven't added up all the points, but I had Trent James on top. And we just uh, heard from Sonia that that's who they've got as okay. well. Okay, that's, that's all we really need. All right. Okay. 
So here's the, the replay of the opening lap. And you can see what how that kind of all unfolded. All right, so here we go. Look at this. There's plenty of push and shove. There's Bryce Steiner who got turned around. And right. there we go. All right, so let's head down and uh, be anchors with Jaden Ward. Jaden Ward, you took a wild ride back there. You're all good, but just checking out that you're okay. Yeah, I'm all good. Just having a um, few plays there with Charlie Sorter, 1GB. Um, awesome stock car racing tonight between me and him, giving each other a lot of front bumper, rear bumper action. And he's a good sport about it, so that's that was awesome night. Bit of tip for tack going on, like you say, it's all in good sport. It was almost like a practice for what's going to happen in two weeks. Yeah, it's going to be like that for the both of us in a couple of weeks' time at Team Champs. And um, by the way he performed tonight, I think he'll do just fine at Team Champs. I mean, it's been a long time in between races for these great bit and drivers, but they've just taken to it. I mean, they're a force to be reckoned with, absolutely. Yeah, well, they're, they're weapon of drivers. They've got really good machinery, so the two combined makes a good package, doesn't it? I mean, it's unreal how they've just come over here and kind of cooked it, really, haven't they? I mean, you, some of our Kiwi drivers would even struggle to jump into a foreign car two days after flying into a foreign track and doing what they did. Yeah, like I say, they're, they're talented drivers. They're, not, they're the best in the world for a reason. Um, I think from memory their cars have got a lot more horsepower than ours so probably them coming over here is actually a little bit easier driving our cars um, but yeah they're, they're, they're legends. <laughs> when are you going to go over and race one of their cars? I've been over in 2019 oh. so I actually know some of these boys so it was good to share some paint with them um, so I'm looking forward to going back one day just need to get on that podium again and get the invite over. Next year's your year. Next year's my year, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Awesome, mate. We'll leave you to it. We're going to go check on Brody James. Hopefully we can get an update on him. He was taken off the track. Um, I know that he's still in the ambulance. We'll try and update you shortly with that. All right, and of course, uh, the winner of the Super Stocks in Paradise, the 56V of Trent James, uh, will be one who we might try and seek out. But this is, uh, so runoff, we'll just get confirmation. Will the runoff actually happen? Okay, so the plan is to have the runoff. Okay. Ah uh, yes, uh, yeah, trophies and yeah. and bits and pieces. So the runoff will happen, um, and that'll be obviously it's going to be a pretty quick turnaround uh, for Ben Milne and Dylan Marshall. A lot of people are leaving. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, wow, what a weekend it has been. We got there. Thank you so much. You're just confirming uh, tier two is was changed to a two race championship. They re just reversed the grids, so that race we've just seen was not their original race two grids. They uh, just went to a reverse grid format, two heats only to decide Superstocks in Paradise. So just uh, confirming that. So Trent James, the winner. Thomas Stanaway, two points behind. Then another couple back to Ben Milne and Dylan Marshall. Right, uh, the girls are out here. Sharkies Engineering Limited, Aotearoa Ladies Crown. Uh, so, uh, boy, let's get into this one now. It's been uh, a massive... We can just got to bring up our points uh, for the ladies. Just thinking, Trent James would have been so disappointed finishing second in the river charge and missing out, and now he's come out and won the second tier. So he missed out competing this year, but he's definitely oh, yeah. in next year already. Like, yeah, you'd be gutted, um, especially coming that close. Yes. But hey, look at the payoff, eh? Yep. Uh, right, here we go. Remember, Gemma Holloway. She's got a 12-point lead. Will she come under attack in this one, the 14B? She starts on grid 20. It's Gemma Holloway from Kirsten Kaiser and Lauren Swift. So down the main straight for the first time in this one. That's it. Like the, these stock cars, isn't it? Isn't it just crazy how how different that pace is um, when you've been watching the fastest super stocks in the country doing their <laughs> thing? Amber Brooks out of Christchurch. This will be a nice way for her to finish off the night uh, if she can do it. Take the win. Problems down there for Cheyenne Sutton out of Stratford. Manages to hook reverse. Gets herself off the racetrack. So Kirsten Vermeulen in second place, chasing down hard. And Gemma Holloway is, where, where is she? Already up into seventh place. Oh, problems. 
problems down here in, in turn number two. Lauren Swift, in, uh, she was in third place or second place, third in the championship. She got spun around. You can see the Rotorua girls starting to mix it up. Will they be uh, looking to help Kirsten Kaiser? But the one car they really need to stop is Gemma Holloway. And she's got a massive lead. She's got a 22 point lead, so she needs to be stopped completely. She could come last in this race and win the and uh, go back to back Gemma Holloway. Kirsten Kaiser though sits in second. Amber Brooks, who is our race leader, she's got herself up onto the podium now. The 471 out of Christchurch. So just trying to sort themselves out. Boy, last year this race erupted. They went nuts. Uh, not quite so much this year, maybe. Mind you, it is good morning. It's 10 past midnight. <laughs> But hey, it was the rain. That was the, the big hold up. Unfortunately, yeah, no second teams race tonight. Uh, but we thank the Palmy Pumas for making their way up. We'll give you that one. Seven down, still Amber Brooks in four, seven, one. Down the pit straight, across the finish line she goes. She's got Alex Jones right on her tail. Jones is a lap down. So it's Brooks, Vermeulen, Pearson, Holloway. So Gemma making her way around turn three and four. Now look at her, she's just sitting behind these cars. She doesn't need to pass them. And there's nobody really out there looking to take her out. Oh, was that Kirsten Kaiser just taken to the wall then? No. Yeah, or may have been. Oh, was it Jesse Henderson who took her there? Yeah, it was. It was uh, Kirsten Kaiser, the local runner. Oh, the race leader. No. So the race leader gets taken out. Gemma Holloway gets taken to the grass. Kind of got caught up in that. She knows she doesn't need to rush it. Uh, so we're going to have a new race leader, are we? This has all been thrown around. Oh, Kirsten Kaiser, she didn't need to, oh, she should have just gone. Well, she's way down in 14th in the race. Uh, so Hannah Pearson. 1-1-2, one, one, comes around the turn. She's got Kirsten Vermeulen right behind her. Oh, she's got some problems. So Pearson drifts wide and Kirsten Vermeulen will take the flag from Courtney Hatton, Gemma Holloway up into third. Kate Prescott in the 75, she's been dishing some stuff out over the last couple of laps. Oh no, and we're going to have a runoff. Yes. Oh no. I just noticed that, but I thought I wouldn't mention it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a, beer, a fridge full of beer that I need to get to. <laughs> the bar the bar license closes at one o'clock, is it? Yeah. Oh. So yeah, last corner um, pass by Kristen Vermeulen to win the race is uh, put a third equal on points. Yeah. With the 471C of Amber so, Brooks. Uh, but Gemma Holloway, uh, just dominant. Um, 158 points. Kirsten Kaiser on 136. And yeah, as it stands, uh, if there's no changes from the referees, Kirsten Vermeulen and Amber Brooks finish in third equal place. So that brings us to an end of the racing. Um, potentially, we have two runoffs. We definitely have one. So we'll take in some and replays. One of the cars that's in the runoff for the, the girls, the 471. Had some major damage. Major damage. Major damage for Amber Brooks. The 471 from Christchurch. Yeah, because she, she was leading for quite a long time and yeah. then uh, came under a bit of an attack, didn't she? Oh, boy. All right, let's... I, don't, I, I think we could probably run out of stuff to talk about uh, about tonight's meeting, but you know, Speedway-wise, Barry, um, what's on your agenda for the rest of the year? You, you, we've got we've got a well, actually for the three of us, don't we? Uh, we've we've still got yes. 
We've still got the New Zealand yeah, Super Stock do. Championships to do. Um, New Zealand Stock Car Teams Championship. Yep. I'm tapping out on that one. You're, yeah, you'll be, you'll I'm be going full yeah. manager that weekend. You're going, yeah, full yeah. Manager. You're going to be out by the first night anyway. He'll come crawling in looking for a part-time commentary <laughs> gig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the Pumas will be out, knocked out after the first night, won't they? It's, they will. Yeah. After they tonight, will. I don't even know what the uh, rascals are turning up. So. <laughs> um, and yeah, then what? Then we've got the New Zealand Modifieds yep. uh, that we're commentating together in, in Huntley. Um, Stu, you've again, like from both the commentary point of view, you've, you've got some bikes next weekend, is it? Uh, no, next weekend I've got the Poms are over in Hawke's Bay at oh, the okay. Speedway, yep. so obviously Team GB yep. uh, are kidding up in Team GB oh, colours, good. racing yep. the Hawke class. Which is so a regular thing that they do. Yep, I'll be over there, that's my uh, re- 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 uh, regular one, and obviously Team Champs. And, um, in the meantime, Bianca has people to actually, interesting people to talk to. <laughs> yeah, as opposed to us just rambling, filling in time. All right, let, let's hit... Uh, let's head down to the pits and uh, how cool is this? Gemma Holloway's gone back to back. So cool. I'm here with Gemma, of course. Back to back, Gemma. It's been a long night of racing. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm pretty pleased. Pretty pleased and pretty tired, I must imagine. It has been a definitely a long day. It means less drinking time now. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> I know. <laughs> Listen, Gemma, two, I mean, back to back, how are we feeling? Tell us honestly, what does this mean to you to, to come back to do this? You know, it's actually pretty, pretty unreal, eh? Like yeah. to win it last year and then come back and do it back to back. It's that was, I guess, ultimately the aim for the weekend is you're going to defend your title. Want to do it back to back, and yeah, just showed cars got it. Yeah, you're not going to let us down. You're going to come back again next year, correct? Um, try for the three feet, you reckon? One, come on, one hundred. You have to. <laughs> Maybe we'll see what next year brings. Gemma, um, I think we've got two runoffs tonight, so the night is not yet over, but I think you can actually be uh, uh, done away with going to celebrate early. You absolutely deserve it. Six hard races. Well done, girlfriend. Yes, let's go celebrate. <laughs> One Monday, let's go. Yeah, it seems to be a regular theme uh, going on at the moment, doesn't it? I, I reckon, yeah, runoffs should be, they should just make it a coin toss as well, eh? Oh, send the guys out yeah. there to run round for a <laughs> yeah. lap or something without the cars. All right, so it looks like Ben Milner's drawn pole. It's a four-lap race, one on one. Hawke's Bay on the east coast, up against Whanganui on the west. Uh, right, here we go. They must move. So there we go. Ben Milne got taken to the infield, so he had to then retreat off the back and hold back. So good start from Dylan Marshall. Oh, Milne, he almost got his uh, bumper inside, looking for the spin. Look at those terraces. They've emptied out, haven't they? Comes in with the bumper underneath our race control and commentary box position. Dylan Marshall just doing well, holding himself in the front there. Needs to just stay ahead, can't let Ben Milne get alongside him and try for the dive spin. Now there's a bit of a gap. Mar- Marshall's going to go for it. Milne chasing. It'll be the white flag this time around. Hear the squeal of the tyres. That's it. Done and dusted now. You'd think Ben Milne had a big, big dive if he could. But it was just too far gone. And that'll wrap things up. Ben Milne will know that we're done. Pulls off. And she could flag third place for Dylan Marshall. All right, so we're just going to have to have a quick break. And uh, in fact, we'll send Stu down and see if he can get a word, see or not whether or not the uh, ladies will be having a runoff. They would have talked to the girls by now and found out whether that's happening.
Again, quite a bit of damage on that car, but we're one step closer to wrapping things up. Of course, the full review of the night's racing, some of those action shots will all be on our website at rotoruaspeedway.co.nz, all the official results uh, across the course of the weekend as well. And what a weekend it's been. And, um, you know, the whole weather thing. What would it what would it have been at the moment, eh, for a big weekend of Speedway without a bit of rain? Dylan Marshall with the chequered flag. Congratulations to him on the podium. And thanks to... Hubbard's contracting for their sponsorship of our second tier uh, Super Stocks in Paradise title in the winner. Um, Trent James. All right, very cool. Uh, and let's actually, we're just going to throw it down to uh, Bianca to wrap things up for the stream as well. Hey guys, I hope you all enjoyed that. That was an amazing weekend worth of racing. We are absolutely shattered. Everybody, the drivers, the crew, we're ready to go home. Huge, huge, massive congratulations to Ethan Rees, to Peter Rees, father and son on the podium. I mean, how great is that? Jim Holloway, two years in a row. I've had the time of my life this weekend. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Everybody's gone home, rightly so. Thanks for sticking with us all through the night, guys. I know it's late. It's nearly half past 12. Go and, <laughs> go and have a drink of water. Go to bed. We hope you enjoyed it. A wrap-up from us. Enjoy. See you later.